tell you what I thought you had to be old to ache in the morning. Oh, you poor old man. Oh, yeah. Still, it's not the first time you couldn't take the pace, is it? You what? What about last night? Oh, your mates go to the casino, you come home crawling to bed. Yeah, well, you should be pleased. Why? Because I came home to you, that's why. Oh, and me thinking it was just because you're a lightweight. <laughs> so, come on, then. Did you have a good time? You never said. Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, what did you get up to? Well, you know, bowling. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Dave tried to get off with this last year was handing out the bowling shoes. <laughs> he never. Yeah, half his age. Talk about Billy Piper. I thought we were going to get locked up. What blokes, eh? What <laughs> they like. Still, good job I've got a good one, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Stefan, he's in the back. Please, please. I don't like this any more than you do. So what are you doing it for, then? You know why. I'm trying to keep Joe out of prison. Anyway, Stefan haven't started all this. Oh, and you're finishing it by lying to him. Gina, you can't keep... Yeah? Hi. Right, I'll go and check the stop, then. Listen, be before you say it, I just want to say I'm... I'm so sorry about last night. I didn't mean to freak out. No. No, look, I'm the one who should be sorry. I just don't understand what happened. I thought we were getting on. Yeah, we were. It's just... Oh, I don't know. It just felt weird, that's all. You know, me and you. It's daft, isn't it? We've been together for so long. Yeah. Well, a lot's happened since. Yeah, no. Look, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to mess you around. It's all right. Really, it's all right. Look, I'm not going to put any kind of pressure on you. You take this as slow as you want. No, no, we don't need to. Yeah, but I don't want you rushed into No, it. no, really. Listen, why don't we go for a drink after? I'll speak to Charlie, you know, see if she can cover my shift. Well, if you think it's a good idea... Yeah, I do. I really want this, Dev. I mean, this could be a fresh start. You know, we can forget everything that's happened before. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I do. When this housing officer bloke comes in, we've got to act dead casual-like. Les, well, we've been through this. I know, I know, but I want to get it right. Like our Sawyer says, it's got to look genuine. Otherwise, we're both out on our day. Right. So he comes in. He sits here. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Then I bring him a nice cup of tea. On a tray. With a biscuit. Then he'll probably start all that chit-chat. Where we met, who asked you out and all that stuff. So, er... Uh... Who did ask you out, me or you? I, I can't remember. I thought we said it was mutual. You know, eyes across a crowded room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's nicer like that, innit? It's like we both knew that we was right for each other. That's right, love. What? Did you just call me love? Well, we've got to look affectionate, haven't we? Well, I suppose so. Right, I'm going to run the back round again. Les, it's spotless. It's got to be, hasn't it? We've got a bit of perfect flaming tenants. Look. You've got to take this serious. I can't lose my home, I can't. You won't. I will if we stop this. This is our one chance, all right? We blow this, you're back at your mum's, and I'm back at Weatherfield Hall Estate. Is it really that bad, there? Put it this way, even the Rottweils are scared to go out. You sound cheerful this morning. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have been. I thought you might be a bit fed up, that's all, having to pay out all that money. Oh, no, swings and roundabouts, so, Sal, eh? I couldn't be a bucky if I got upset every time a punter got lucky, could I? Now, then, talking about lucky punters... Winning streak, mate, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, there's a difference between making the most of it, Vic, and trying to put me out of business. <laughs> now, what are you on about? So you're getting a few inside tips from this jockey. There's no need to tell every man and his dog. Uh, well, I'm not, you see. And anyway, that last tip, Bertie's dream, it wasn't Mickey's. It was mine. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, I'll prove it to you. I'll pick another one. Oh, please do. Make my day. <laughs> Are you serious? Too right. See, Barlow is just like the rest of them. He doesn't believe I can do it on my own. And can you? I'm a winner, mate. Watch and learn. What do you think, Sunita? A few drinks in a row, or should I just take her into town and dazzle her? I don't know. Well, you're a woman, aren't you? What do you think Gina would like? Low-key, upmarket? Dev, stop asking me. I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> Not any of it. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh, come on, what's wrong? I told you nothing. Now, darling, there's obviously something wrong. I don't know why you're asking, cos you're not going to like this. <laughs> like what? Really, it's not what you want to hear. Uh, 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 uh. Like what? Gina's lying to you. <sighs> what do you mean, she's lying to me? As in not telling the truth. She doesn't want to get back with you. 
She's pretending so that you'll drop the charges against Joe. <laughs> She's only doing it to keep him out of prison. Yeah? And how did you work this one out, darling? Women's intuition? She told me. She told you what? Her and Joe planned it. They reckon if she can get close to you, she can persuade you to go to the police and drop the whole thing, and then when you've done that, she'll go back to Joe. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Anyway, if it's the truth, why would she tell you? Why wouldn't she just keep it a secret? Because she's my friend. She needed someone to tell. Dev, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I bet you are. What do you mean by that? I mean, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you were jealous. You are so arrogant. Do you know that? I, uh, listen, uh, I spoke to Shelley and she's given me the afternoon off, so I'm all yours. Well, that's good. Gina, could you come through to the back, please? I need to ask you something. Well, I told her I'd only be a minute. That's OK. That's all I need. Please? What's wrong? Is everything all right? Yeah. Yeah. Mum? Can I borrow a tenner? Uh, excuse me, but haven't you just had a big win? I know, I've spent it, Anna. What, already? I don't believe it. I mean, no job, no house, and yet it just slips through your fingers. Mum, don't worry. If you borrow a tenner, I'll pay you back big time. <gasps> what are you talking about? Vix gives the tip. Look, Trixie, Trixie, two o'clock. Hey, Doc. So can I have it, please? Just hang on a minute, love. Has Vic been in touch with that jockey lately? Not that I know of, no. Oh, Nick Muggins here reckons he's got a new hot tip. Yeah, but this is Vic's own. It's got nothing to do with the jockey. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Well, what difference does it make? Because an inside tip from an expert's one thing, but stabbing the dart from Vikram. Yeah, but he reckons it's a dead cert. Ten to one. Oh, does he? Listen, sweetheart. If I were you, I'd save your money. Or better still, save mine. Ooh. Here they are, out and proud. <laughs> How's it going? You all ready? Just about. Just having a bit of Dutch courage. There you go, lads. Cheers. There you go, babe. Did he just say what I think he said? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? What? Calling me that. Well, you're the one who told me to be more affectionate. Yeah. We're not in a flaming boozer. I love his tea. Oh, sweet, isn't it? Oh, aye. It's all a flaming joke to you, isn't it? Are you still going to be laughing when you're back at your mum's? Les, I keep telling you, we can pull this off. Oh, aye, and you know that, do you? Because once these flaming council busybodies get their teeth in... Les, calm down. There's no point getting yourself into a state. Yeah, Toya's right. And you've nothing to worry about. You make a beautiful cuckoo. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm off home. And so are you. I've only just started my pint. So, come on. Oh. <laughs> Well, we all know where the trousers in that house. <laughs> I just need to be sure. That's all. Before things go too far. Are you having second thoughts? Is that what this is about? No, I'm not. I'm just... Gina, if we're really going to get back together again, we've got to know that it's for the right reasons, yes? What are the right reasons? You tell me. Really, you tell me why you want to come back to me after everything that's happened. Well, because... Because it's worth giving it another go. I haven't been happy since we split up. And I know you haven't. Right, but how do we know we're not going to make the same mistakes twice? Well, we don't. But it's worth trying. Dev, think about it. Think about how good it was between us. Yeah, I know I that, wanted but... to marry you. We were going to spend the rest of our lives together. Have children. Grow old together. We can't just... just throw all that away. And Joe? It was a mistake. I thought he'd help me get over you. Don't make Dev, me. you have got to believe me. No one has ever come close to you, to how I felt about you, well, to how I still feel about you. I love you. I never stopped. I still do. Hey, Les, you want to try these? are really nice. Hey, you can't have them. Them are for the council officer. I'm not going to eat them all, is it? Oh, 
blame me now. I don't believe it. Look what you've done. It's all right. I'll rub it in with my foot. No one will notice. I'll notice. I've worked my fingers to the bone getting this place nice. And what do you do? Just waltz in and spoil it. I don't know why I bother. I really don't. Sorry, I'm a bit early. Mr. Battersby? Uh, yeah, that's right. Belinda Sawyer, Weatherfield Housing Department. Oh, right. Uh, it's just that we weren't expecting a bird, a woman, uh, a lady. Well, I hope I'm not too much of a disappointment. Can I come in? Uh, yeah, you're best to had. Come on then, boys. She's Ten to one on the nose. You won't get a better shot than that. No, I told you, mate. I'm skin. Harry? No, not this time, thank you. I've had my one bet for the week. You see, the thing about this is knowing how to control it. <laughs> yeah, and the thing about luck is knowing when to ride it. And I am telling you, she is a winner. Come on, Jace, tell me you're in. I better not, mate. Me and Mum go spare. <laughs> you're mad. Harry, last chance. Sorry. You're mad. The both of you. And you're going to regret this. Unless you find club then, Vic. Yeah, only because they're gutless. Of course, yes. Ah, no, no, so don't put him on flexi and put his money where his mouth is. What was it, Vic? Hey, Doc? Mm. Two o'clock, Trixie Trixie. Mm. And just how confident are you? That kind. Thank you. Lovely biscuits. Oh, well, uh, they come in a tin. Uh, none of your corner shop rubbish. I see. Right, well, as I've explained, I'm not here to snoop. My brief is to confirm the nature of your living arrangements, and there are a couple of housing issues I'd like to discuss with you. Issues? What sort of issues? Are you talking about eviction? Uh, let's not go jumping ahead, Mr Battersby. Now, according to our records, there have been several infringements of your tenancy agreement. Firstly, there's the question of rent arrears. Hey, I've caught up now. I've paid everything. Then there's the recent incident of antisocial behaviour. You suffered an infestation problem? Hey, you can't go blaming me for them rats. And lastly, there's the question of you illegally subletting to Mr Sutherland here. Now, each of these instances on their own wouldn't normally cause too much concern, but put together, it's clear the council could make a case to ask you to relocate. What, you mean chuck us out like? Our aim would be to find you alternative housing more suitable to your current arrangement. Uh, this is a family house. Now, as a single man, you're not entitled to that much space. But I'm not, am I? I'm not a single man. Didn't you get me letter? I believe we did receive I explained letter. everything. You see, he's not my tenant. No. He's my partner. Let me get this straight. You're saying that you and Mr Sutherland are cohabiting as a same-sex relationship? That's right, yeah. We're very much in love. Come on, Trixie! Come on! You beauty! Look at her. She's done it! She has done it! See, you should have trusted me. I must say I'm surprised. She certainly didn't look like a winner. Yeah, but I knew it, didn't I? Didn't I tell you? Why do you listen to me, Mum? Why? Bang goes today's profit. So how much has he won? A thousand quid. Still, remember what you said this morning? You wouldn't be much of a bookie if you got upset every time a customer won. Yeah, do you know what I said that, Sal? I lied. Hi. Hiya. No, Ben. No, he's down at the soft play group with Norman. I'm just trying to get some revision done. A bit old for GCSEs, aren't you? <laughs> Police exams. I'm hoping to get promotion. So how's Richard? Sorry? I, I just heard at the station that they'd recovered his ex-wife's body. Must be very upsetting. I didn't know you knew about Patricia. Oh, I heard about the initial inquiry when she was first reported missing. Well, it seems I'm the last to know everything. What's it got to do with the police? Richard didn't tell me there'd been an investigation. Oh, well, there hasn't really. It, there's just a general procedure when it comes to missing persons. Just routine stuff. Routine? Well, I suppose it is. Except when it's someone you know. Hey, ma'am. Hi, you love. Um, you haven't seen Les, have you? Oh, I think he's at home. Oh, good. Do you know they've sent that catalogue to him again? I've told him my new address. Oh, well. You can pick it up later, eh? Oh, I can pick it up now. Les and Kirk will already be perving over all them underwear models. I doubt it. Not today. Right, love, anyway, I've got to go see Oh, no, you can't. Uh, well, you can't go on there now. Why not? You just can't. Uh, Les is busy. <sighs> Doing what? Uh, come on, Taya, what's he up to? Nothing. Excuse me, love, cup of tea, please. Yeah, just a sec. Uh, anyway, you shouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. 
I'm nausea. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry, love, all right? Large tea, milky. Yeah, hang on, I'm coming. Mum! Mm. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt anything. Well, you did. Oh, yeah. So how's it going? Does he believe you? Yeah, I think so. He wants me to up later on. See, I knew you could do this. Yeah, but how much longer for? Honestly, Joe, I don't think I can take it anymore. Every time he touches me. I know. I know. But it won't be for long. Believe me, you're doing a great job, G. I won't forget this, all right? It was like we couldn't deny it, what we were feeling. It was sort of like uh, being on a roller coaster of emotion, weren't it? Uh, that's right, and that's when I said to our Jan, I said, I, I can't live a lie anymore. And that's when Mrs. Battersby left the family home. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You see, she couldn't accept the way I was, uh, uh, the way we are. You wouldn't believe how much prejudice there is out there. Excuse us. Oh, uh, Janice, what do you want? Oh, yeah. I've just called round to get my catalogue. Oh, 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 right. Well, well, you wait there. I'll get it. No, oh, yeah. you're all right. I'll get it. Right. There you are. Off you go. No manners, I'll say. Never has that. So, who's this then, Liz? You're going to introduce me? Uh, this is Belinda. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Where did you two meet, then? Sorry? Uh, 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 this is the wife. She's come to pick up some stuff. I think she's finding it hard to let go. Right, you've got your catalogue. Off you go. Yeah, uh, but see you, Janice. All right, all right. I know when I'm not wanted. Nice to meet you, Belinda. Oh! <laughs> hey, look at the happy couple. <laughs> Can't accept into my shoes already, are they? Must be hard to accept that Mr Battersby's found a new partner. Sorry, love. Mr Battersby and Mr Sutherland, it must be difficult for any wife to discover their husband's gay. Gay? Ha! <laughs> Liz isn't gay. I am. I am. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Yeah, well, don't rub it in. Another round, then. If you insist. So, what should we have? Uh, champagne, brandy chasers? Orange juice and a pint and dope is a flash. You know, I reckon he's still ringing that jockey. I mean, he must be. Well, he swears he isn't. Yeah, well, how's he doing it then? I mean, two rank outsiders and they both come first. Uh, winning streak. Another one? Are you trying to get me drunk? No, why would I do that? <laughs> Shelley? Yes, love. Oh, you two look cosy. <laughs> Is there something you want to tell us? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Right, a uh, scotch for me and... Actually, I'm all right. Yeah? <laughs> OK, we'll leave it. Make your mind up. Mm -hmm. Right, so you want to go back to the plant? I'm not sure. Look, there's no pressure, really. I mean, we could talk, we could get something to eat, but whatever you want. No, no, I'd like to. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> hey, where are you two going? I'm just getting the drinks in. Uh, you're all right, we're off. Yeah, and well, what's with you being so flash with the cash? Hey, I got lucky. <laughs> Looks like I'm not the only one. The thing is, Mr Battersby, it doesn't really add up. That's right, eh? I mean, the heart knows no rules. You see, you gave me the impression that your wife was aware of your new relationship. She was. She is. It's just denial. She just won't believe it. And she's not the only one. Well, like I said, I'll write my report and the council will be in touch. Council? What's she on about? She's from the Weatherfield Housing Department. <sighs> Thanks very much, Jan. You've just lost me, me home. There you go. <coughs> no hard feelings, eh, mate? No, cheers, mate, no. Can you believe it, another thousand quid? If he carries on like this, I may as well give him me till, love. I know. He's been flashing it around all day. You know what this means for us, don't you? What? It means we're going to have to kiss goodbye to that fancy holiday. Oh, you're joking. No, I'm sorry, love, but I'll make it up to you, I promise you. Oh, it's all right. It doesn't matter. As long as we've got each other, eh? Yeah. What are you looking at? You. I'm wondering if they're possible. If what are possible? Second chances. So, what? No, I, I'm sorry, I just don't understand. I mean, last night we were... Yeah, well, last night was last night. I'm ready now. What changed your mind? I just... Needed some time to think, that's all. Last night, after I left here, I missed you. And you're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. 
want to be with your dad. Joe. Dev, I don't care about him. I've told you. He can rot, he can rot in prison for all I care. What? What are you looking at me like that for? That's not you talking. Oh, of course it is. No, no, that's 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 him. That's that's what he's told you to say. And I know you remember, I know the things that you, you hold dear, all the things you threw at me with your trust and your honesty and your respect. You never say that about anybody. But I mean it. No, you don't, you don't mean any of it. And you know, for a second, I believed you. I believed that you wanted this. I believed that you wanted me. I do, Dad, please. Oh, please, if you're going to lie to me, Gina, you're going to have to do better than that, because the truth is that you're thinking of him. You haven't stopped thinking of him. That's not true. No, look, you're still lying to me. You called me a liar after how you treated me. You dared to criticise me after you cheated on me and you betrayed me. Yeah. Yes, I did. It was a drunken, one-off fling. It was no malice, no forethought. Just a, a, a mistake. Not like this. So go on. There's the phone. Don't stop now, it! Ring him! Ring your boyfriend and tell him that he's going to jail. What happened to you? What changed you? Do you know you were gonna sleep with me to get what you want? To get what you want? Do you know what that makes you? I wouldn't sleep with you if you were the last one on earth. You know, uh, word has it that Dev and Gina spent last night making up for lost time. Was I? She was your best friend. She didn't tell me everything. Oh, if she did, you'd have trouble keeping track. Well, you're best off asking Dev then, aren't you? Do you know, I got my electricity bill this morning and I can't for the life of me remember anybody coming to read the meter. Well, it was only an estimate, wasn't it? No, no, it's based on a proper reading, that's what I mean. I'll ask Richard how they work it out. Uh, well, Richard's got enough on his plate with Patricia, man. Ooh, hello, love. Hi, Gran. Oh, mm, you're ready for your first day at the salon? Oh, she's been practising. I've just had a head massage. I don't doubt it. And you tell your friends to look out for young David while you're at the garage. Don't need to. Everyone knows who they're dealing with if they touch him. Mm -hmm. And what'll you do? Come to see you first. Better check in with Barlow. See ya. Bye. Bye. So, do you know what you're doing? Uh, sort of. Oh, come on, little Maria. I'd only ever hose down Labradors. I'm sure I can teach you the basics. Oh, and sweetheart, uh, when we're in front of customers, uh, would you call me Audrey? OK. And what's wrong with Gran? Uh, no, I just think it's more professional. Oh, hi, Richard. Hello, Audrey. How are we today? Well, uh, do you want to ask him about the electricity bill? Oh, <laughs> no, no, that's all right. Listen, I'm not going to be forgetting anything now I've got my own girl Friday. Glad to hear it. Well, just row her back to shore by five o'clock. I've got evening surgery. Oh, oh. Bye-bye, uh, Bethany. Be good for you, Nana. Mm. See you later. Bye-bye. Come on, sweetheart. Ooh, my darling. You OK? You're not. You look done in. Well, the sooner I get these funeral arrangements sorted, the sooner I can concentrate on what really matters. You and the kids. I just wish you weren't responsible for everything. What can I say? That's what I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. It's all done now. It's all done now. Dev. Into and I can... Dev. Threw me out. You what? He saw through me. He knew that I was only trying to get you off the oak. Well, what, what do you say to him? Nothing. Nothing? He knows me 
too well. Hang on a sec, what, what did he say about me? Well, he just found out that you'd set him up, so what do you think? Oh, flaming heck, Gina. So I'm still going to jail, am I? You're saying this is my fault? No, 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 forget it. Yeah, well, I wish I could. I have never felt so cheap and dirty in all my life. Come on, I'm sorry. You're not right, yeah? Shall I expect him? See you at dinner time. Yeah, what? Nothing. Mm, what's going on with them two? Never mind them two. What's all this snogging outside cabin, you and Kirk? Oh, he's got all passionate since he pretended to be gay. You know, to prove that he's not really. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> I bet Leslie's sat there, steaming, waiting for me to say I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's his fault for not telling you. Fizz, if he'd have told anybody we are for brain, they'd have stopped him from doing it in first place. Will you stop leaving your trainers on the landing? Oh, way up. Why be tidy now everyone knows we're not gay? Because I nearly came down them stairs like a flaming bobsleigh. Oh, is that from the council? Oh, no. We would like to discuss your transfer to a one-bedroom flat. Give us a look. We've a field all estate. Even the pensioners are in gangs there. Well, where do I go if you're in a one-bedroom flat? Oh, that's right. Don't fret on my account. Sorry. It's not me sick as this. This is my home. It might not be mine, but it's all I've got. But the field hall's not that bad. I've got mates there. Yeah, and I know their dads, and they know me. That's why the council rehoused us here. So how can you make enemies? There's always them that'll take against you in life. I only did what I had to, to provide for my family, for Janice. Transfer? They might as well throw me to the flaming lions. Death not been in touch, has he? Uh, no, why? Um, he hadn't turned in. Oh, we'll survive. He'll be thinking he's indispensable. So, Vic, got any more tips for us? <laughs> yeah, tell your mum, nice one. It's not for me, mum, it's for me. Look, Chase, when I gave it to you on the plate, you didn't think I had the touch. Yeah, well, now I do. Uh, a too little too late. That's fair. Grand in the pocket. Can't argue with it. Nor me. And anything that gets up Peter Barlow's nose is uh, fine by me. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a tip. He hates it when punters make them little pens off the counter. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, what's in it for me? Well, what do you want? I'll get back to you. Cheers, Virgil. I've spoken to Dev. He's working from home. Since when? Well, he wants me to fetch around this month's stock sheets. Oh, can't he drive around and pick them up himself? I've said I will now. Hang on, that means I'm going to be stuck here on my own. I'll be as quick as I can. Remember, you're here to observe and absorb. I have worked on my dad's car before. No, don't worry. I'll keep you busy. Now, I've got one or two calls to make, and we'll go through the safety. Ah, oh, you're OK. I know the rules. Yeah, well, you're my responsibility now, so you listen to him, all right? Tyrone will get you some uh, overalls. Right, well, I hope I don't need to remind you of the dangers of fooling about in a place like this. No. So we won't keep you. Hiya, Aid. Right, I'm Tyrone. I hear you fetching me some overalls, Tyrone. I told Deirdre you needed some paperwork. How do you know I'd be home? I think I know you well enough. I suppose you've heard chapter and verse from Gina. I haven't heard anything. Hmm. Well, you owe yourself the biggest I told you so in history. I'm sorry, Dev. Mm. Please, enjoy. Do you really believe that's why I came round? You weren't answering your phone. What else was I supposed to think? Listen, if I've ever found swinging from the rafters would be over something a damn sight more significant than Gina Gregory. Don't say that. I'm sorry. It's good to see you. My, uh, my husband doesn't normally see clients without an appointment. Hello, Richard. Charlotte. I should have explained. I'm a friend of Richard's ex-wife, Charlotte Morris. Oh, I see. Well, I'm Gail, Richard's wife. The police tell me about Patricia. I doubt you've been able to contact me. I'm based in Australia now. Oh, so, uh, so how, how did the police know to get in touch? Patricia was due to meet me in Sydney. Oh, so you're the friend who reported her missing? I wanted to be here before the funeral, just to make sure there were no loose ends. Mm. 
So I'm sorry I doubted you. Give over, Dad. I'm serious. If you'd backed off like I told you to, you'd still be wondering, hoping you would. Well, at least this way I get to see her for what she really is. Except it's not Gina, is it? It's Joe Carter. Come on, Sunita, I know she's your friend, Did but... you tell her it was me who told you? No. Joining me? No, Tom. Dev, I am sorry. I didn't do it to feel all smug. I just didn't want you to go through what you're going through now. Yeah. You know, if it came from anybody else, I wouldn't believe them. Patricia never mentioned she was planning to meet you. Doesn't surprise me. There was rather a lot of taking sides when Richard and Patricia split up. Hardly matters now. It's just a relief to be with someone who was as close to Patricia as I was. Well, anything I can do. How did she seem the last time you saw her? Fine. Fine. We, we'd settled the business. We both knew where we stood. I suppose you could say we had a healthy respect. So, where was she all that time she was missing? I've talked to Gail about this. I mean, the way I see it, I've got two choices. I, I can either accept her death for what I believe it was, a tragic accident, or I can drive myself mad trying to make sense of it. For the sake of my family, I refuse to do that. And I really advise you to do the same. Look, I won't keep you. This is the hotel where I'm staying at until the funeral. If there are any arrangements I can help with... I... No need. I've dealt with all that. Well, there must be things the family would normally do. You could talk to the funeral director. Oh. I don't think I've got his number to hand. Well, I have. It's here somewhere. His name's Archie Shuttleworth. He's a lovely man. Uh, he's been dealing with me. Now, I don't want to cause confusion. I'm in no fit state to talk to anyone just now. Still on Sydney time. I'm going back to the hotel for a few hours' sleep. Uh, let me give you a lift. No, it's OK. I saw a cab office. Uh, there's no need. I'll take no, it. No, honestly. You've done enough. Thanks, love. Hey, a pint, please. Still doing it then, am I? Sorry. Pretending. On late, we didn't feel dead, so who else are we trying to kid? Hiya. Gee, yeah. Um, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Well, I know things aren't brilliant between you and Joe at the moment, but I just don't want to see you go past the point of no return. I'm sorry? Dev. I just think it's best that you tell him that, you know, you're mates again, else Joe might get the wrong end of the stick. You know what peace is like over me and Dougie. That's assuming that you do want to be with Joe. Yeah. Well, well then, I'm just thinking what's best for the pair of you. Because these things get out, don't they? Sooner or later. You know what I think? I think you're keeping stum because you want to be the only one getting the gravy. Is that right? Yeah. And if it is Vikram, you're my partner. So you bang out of order. Hiya, Vic. You feeling lucky? Do you fancy another drink? Yeah, it's I'll have another orange juice, please, shall we? Oh, man, am I called Jordy? No, I'm a woman, Kirk. That was the other day. <laughs> oh, this is serious. It's official. They're booting Les out of the house. Oh, no. How's he taking it? He's in bits. They're sending him to Weatherfield Hall Estate. I best go around. No, and I haven't told you that. He doesn't want your mum having the satisfaction. I say. You're going to give him a one-bedroom flat? What am I going to do for a bedroom? Oh, don't look at me. All oh, right. Oh, you soft cat. Of you can squeeze in with me. <laughs> Are you going to tell me what all that was about? Sorry? Richard, you could hardly look each other in the eye. Is there something you're not telling me? No. No, it was just like she said, you know. Things got very unpleasant when Patricia and I split up. Well, what's it got to do with her? Look, whenever we had a row, Patricia used to go straight round her house. They were pals from years back. So I was the villain twice over. You know, I, I, I tried to ring and it'd be, Patricia doesn't want to talk. So she was protecting a friend? Well, I don't blame her for that, but it's not a time in my life I wish to revisit. Well, I don't think she does either. So please, don't get any more stressed up than you already are. Uh, no worries. See you after all then, mate. All right, see ya. Good night, taking deal with calls. You're in the bog. Name, number? Make, model, regier. Sounds like the shocks. I reckon he's after a JKX 69 slash 4. Mm. I'm not letting him in stock. I know. I didn't tell him because he might go somewhere that has. Do you want me to ring the suppliers? I think I can manage that. Off you go. No problem. What? You shouldn't be answering the phone. Why not? 
You've only been here five minutes. How long have you been here? Long enough. You can be down farm with Lane, the big dealerships. Oh, sending parcels to Germany. Some of them lads don't even see an engine. Computer diagnostics. Jurassic Park, this is. You what? How much are you on? What's that going to do with you? Just don't let me drive past in two years and see you're still here. Just pass us that spanner, and that thing is a hazard. Could rip half your face off. There you go, Kev. Knock us up when it's done, will you, mate? I'm off for a kid. OK. Cheers. See you, mate. See ya. Liza, I've heard. Have you now? This can't be it. You've got the right to appeal, you know. I'll tell you what doesn't appeal. My sort with them big wigs, a bloke with no family. Les. I'm tired of fighting, pal. As far as I go, it's good night, Vienna. Uh, do you know of a good florist round here? Well, that's something Charlotte could chase up. Girl, I thought we discussed this. Yeah, I know. But she's come halfway round the world. We could at least give her the opportunity. Might help her grieve, if nothing else. Well, I, I don't think it's fair to lumber her. She's the nearest thing to family Patricia's got. I don't understand why you're being so reluctant. I'm not. There's very little left to do. There's always one more phone call, something else to be decided, some of it very personal. I mean, I'd feel happier if Charlotte did it rather than you. So he summoned her and she vanished. Said something about some so-called urgent paperwork. And I've been on my own since dinner time. Sorry, Ken, sorry to rant. You were saying... Well, Kevin says he's already shown oh, initiative. you've decided to come back, then? Deirdre, I can only apologise unreservedly. No, no, I'm honoured that you managed to tear yourself away from whatever was so important. Uh, a bit of warning might have helped. So, is there going to be an explanation? Um, admin. A lot of admin that Sunita very kindly helped with. And here's me thinking I'm the manager. Right, I'll see you later. Uh, no, Ken. Ken, I want you and Deirdre to go home and enjoy the rest of the afternoon together. Right. What the hell is going on? Hey, Deirdre, please. No, no, I want to know. What is going to be discussed that I'm not supposed to hear? Nothing. Just take it in the spirit that it's intended. Go home, relax. This one's on me. Oh, thank you. You're out of pound coins. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll have a pint. Cheers, mate. Right, two pints, please, Shelley. OK, love. Now, this favour. Go on. I need some holiday leave. Short notice. How oh, short? Sure. Uh, tonight. <laughs> no, no, look, I'm going to go and stay with Sam in Ibiza, you know, put my winnings to good use. No chance. Not unless you give us a tip. <sighs> yeah, all right. Maxwell Pride. <laughs> Aintree. Jason, mate, if you're waiting for the god of the turf to shine down on you, don't bother. he have been too busy buying thongs for Ibiza. Maxwell Pride? Favourite, I do read the papers sunshine. You what? Scrap that pint, Shelley. Oh, I'll pour it back in the barrel then. <laughs> Jason, listen, a mug throws his money after everything. Now, a player knows when not to bet. And when I get back, it won't be which horse, which race. It'll be how much success can I handle. Hi, Vic. Don't bother. Well, I never thought I'd hear myself say it, but I wish I had a bit more fight in him. He's losing his own, that's well, bud. Can we get a widescreen teller? You're only staying the odd night, Kirk. Do you think I should apologise? How, though? Well, I'll just tell him straight. <laughs> tell him straight! Shh. Kirk, keep it down. He's in a right mood. Eh? Right, well, I'm just going to go for it. Anyway, you. You knew all along, didn't you, what they were planning? Look, if we, it would have been a lot worse if we hadn't been involved, wouldn't it? Hey, she's right. He asked me how long it would take me to grow a tash. Oh. And he only shaves on a Sunday. Get off. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's funny? No, it was. What's the matter with you to have? What is it? A keepsake. Oh, that's that letter I was on about. Well, you know, you, you should have told me. I mean, I'm sorry that I put my foot in it, right? If you want something to laugh at, how about this? With my body, I the honour. Les. Oh, here's another side splitter, this. Oh, I know we can be friends, Les. Listen, you. You listen to me very carefully. I am not responsible for you anymore. Yeah, you've washed your hands like your mates at the town hall. You have had it easy. Do you know my first day at the salon? This girl says, sweep up all the hair and take it to the doll factory. Three buses later, I realised I didn't have. <laughs> Say one, Paul Flat, would you? They don't do blue installs. 
You'll soon get the edges knocked off you, young fella, my lad, working here. Well, Kevin's made up. I've brought in loads of work for him. Oh, yes, well, Sarah's been on the appointments book all day, haven't you, love? Nice and bright and early in the morning. All right. Bye-bye. I reckon you did Candice a favour. Why? That must be dead exciting. Coops up with your gran and all her wrinkly mates. Well, she says she's going to share tips with me. What do you get except these? Mm. Sexy. Oh, minging. Hey, it's what I'm doing on that counts. I'm serious. They're well impressed. Oi, Westlife. Cheers for the brew. Not bad, that, mate. Gina. Hey, do you want to go out? Who can we? Come on, there's more places around here to go, you know? What, and do what? Sit and talk about last night? Well, yeah, sort of, cos... Well, I haven't told you how grateful I am. Yeah, we'll make the most of it, cos I don't think I can take much more of this. Oh, come on. I have been stood in the rovers all day, terrified of Dev walking in. I've been avoiding Sunita and Deirdre, and, and I can't talk to Shelley. Yeah, I know. No, you don't. You can't, Jo. I feel lousy. Lousy and, and used. I, and I know it's not your fault, but I've had enough. Look, if you want me to walk, I'll go, if that's what you want. No, I don't. All right, so last night didn't work out, but, you know, I think it's somewhat better. OK, it's just a possibility. But without your help, I'm going back inside, and that is a certainty. So, are you with me or what? Of course I am. All right. So, down it is. We'll get a count here. Yeah, I saw them out there and all. Perfect couple. Dev, get over it. Oh, I have. You know why? Because she's finally with someone who's going to treat her the way she deserves. Yeah, you say that, but I know... What don't you believe? Any of it. Dev, I've been with you all day. I've listened to you all day. Gina lies, Gina cheats. If you think you're over it, you are fooling yourself. Right. It's the last time I'm going to mention her. You don't have to say that. You're putting a boyfriend in prison. Why else would you do that if you didn't want it for yourself? No, you don't understand. So explain it to me. You're out to get Joe. Why? For succeeding where you failed. This has got nothing to do with that. So, you're going to try and punish Gina? Separation from Joe Carter. More favour than punishment, don't you think? Why would you want to do her a favour if you hate her so much? <sighs> if you want to punish her, why don't you just drop the charges and leave them to it? Maybe you're right. I know I am. Carter stays out of jail, she can rot with him. OK. OK. I'm going to withdraw my statement. Shh. Shoes off, feet up. What have I done to deserve me? Don't question it, girl. David in bed? And Sarah. Really? She's shattered, bless her. Your mother doesn't give away tips for nothing. Well, I suppose we were tempting fate. Was it too much to ask? <laughs> Apparently so. Hello, Charlotte. Um, come in. I'm terribly sorry to call so late. How can I help? Uh, we're having some wine. Would you like to join us? No. I've had a few hours sleep and my mind's a bit clearer. There's something I'd like to do before the funeral. Go on. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to see Patricia for myself. Why? Well, I'm aware it's a lot to ask. I didn't see my dad after he died, and it made it very hard to deal with his death. I, I, I really wouldn't wish it on anyone. Uh, and anyway, uh, only next of kin are allowed. We've already talked about this. I'm sure Archie would understand. I've made up my mind. I really would like to see her one more time. Mum and Dad's wedding anniversary. Shift up a bit. Why? I need me socks. Fizz? What? I'll have to go. What? What did you say? Why have got that radio on so loud? I'll give you three guesses. Oh, uh, sorry about that. I told her to keep it down. You didn't. Anyway, I've just remembered. It's my mum's anniversary. I'll have to get her some flowers. You never got me flowers. I bought you a kebab last night. Yeah, it's not the same. You said it was lovely, that kebab. Yeah, it was. Well, it didn't smell lovely. This place stunk this morning. I had to open all windows. No, that'll be his socks. Your feet are rancid, aren't they, babe? Hey, there's <laughs> not wrong with my feet. You can't be the smell of a good kebab. Oh, don't. All this talk of food's making me hungry. Hey, should we go down to cafe and get one of our specials? I haven't got enough, especially if I've got to get these flowers. Well, I'll dip into my rent money. 
Audrey rang this morning. What about the rent? Yeah, she's coming to pick it up this afternoon. Oh, better make ourselves scarce then. She's late. Only by a couple of minutes. She'll be here. Maybe she's having second thoughts. Look, if you can't face going through this again... If Charlotte's determined to go, then I'll have to go. Just take her to the hospital. Let her view the body on her own. You don't have to look at it. I've done it once. I can do it again. Are you sure? Yeah. But let's hope I don't have to. That she's come to her senses. She just wants to see a friend. It won't be a friend. It isn't Patricia. What do you mean? It's not like looking at Patricia. It's just a body on a slab. It's been in a canal for days. It's hardly recognisable, Gail. If she thinks by seeing it it's going to put her mind at rest, then she's wrong. Well, when she gets here, we'll have one last try at persuading her not to go, eh? Everything OK? Oh, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. What's up? I've been in a police station all morning. Have you got any cornflour? Yeah, shelf, middle shelf right in front of you. Oh. <laughs> what happened? I've been making a statement. Yeah. Retracting my allegations against Carter, just like you told me to do. You've done the right thing, Dave. And they thought he'd intimidated me. The police actually thought that I was scared. Me, scared of him. Can you believe that? It doesn't matter what they think. We know the real reason. That's the main thing. I'm really proud of you, Dev. Yeah? Well, thanks a million. Hey, Gina will be too when she finds out. She's welcome to him. Carter and her, they deserve each other. But when he hurts her, when he breaks her heart, she better not come crying to me. And you'll be there for her if she does. No! I won't. You all right? Yeah. You haven't got a bunch of flowers for £2.21 or less, have you? No, not really. What's my mum and dad's wedding anniversary? You couldn't do us a special offer, could you? So, according to my brief, I need an independent witness that's going to back us up. He, they must have interviewed everyone who was there by now, yeah, though. exactly. Yeah, and they still haven't charged you. But it's still hanging over me. Any time now, the cops could come calling, and that's me, finished, licence revoked, and back to jail. So, what are you going to do? Well, what can I do? Unless I can think of some way of persuading Dev to drop it. You think I've let you down, don't you? No. Uh, any chance of getting served, please, Gina? Pint it. Yeah. Oh, and can you uh, do shallow white wine? She's just coming along. You all right, Liz? Staring eviction in the face, mate. Still, can't complain. What you get up to in your own room, it's your own business, Fizz, but if you could maybe do it a bit quieter, then that'd be really good. Yeah, but you don't mind him staying over every now and again, do you? Now and again, it's fine, but... Well, sometimes it's nice when it's just the two of us, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and it is really only a two-person flat. Oh, I know, yeah. So he's a bit of a crowd in that place. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've said that, cos if him and Les get evicted... But... Right. I won't let Kurt move in if you don't let Les move in. Done. Yeah. Well, that was a good time, <laughs> wasn't it? Thank you. Thank you. you can't give them to your mum on a wedding anniversary. Why not? Well, they're an insult. Well, we had £2.21. <laughs> right, I'll lend you 20 quid out my rent money. You can get something decent. Oh, cheers. Mm. You might as well have them now, then. Are you ready to go? I think you're making a big mistake here, Charlotte. Sorry. It's a Catholic thing. If you go and see this body, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. It might not be very pleasant, you know. I'm not expecting it to be pleasant. Maybe you're better to remember her as she was. I've come all the way from Australia. I need to do this for my own peace of mind. But have a quick snifter, eh? <laughs> I owe you one after the work you put in this morning. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Look, I've got to keep a clear head. It's got a load of paperwork this afternoon. All right. Well, uh, if you change your mind, you know where I am. All right. Bye, love. Tell her, love.
Find the best bit of place, Jane, I love. What's happened? Yeah, just changing my mind. I'll tell you what, I'll have another one. How come? Because it might be my last. There's a cop car out there now. And what's up with Joe? Oh, come on, you know what they like. Don't worry about it, love. It's your day off. I know, but I still feel responsible. You don't look that happy to me. Shell, look, relax, will you? It's your day off, it's Sunday. We've got a uh, chicken on a low light, we've got drinks in front of us. Now you tell me what could be more perfect than that, eh? I know. I'm a very, very lucky woman. Yeah, you're not be saying that when you're doing the pops. <laughs> I was telling Sunita before how lucky I was. <laughs> I thought you were ages getting that cornflower. Yeah, and I've invited her around tomorrow night to, to see for herself what a good cook you are. You don't mind, do you? Don't start, Les. One question, and I'm out of here. What is it? You know what that state's like. Do you really want me living there? No. Suppose I wrote a letter to the council. Saying you'd move back in. No, you'll not get me back in that house, Les. I know. But if the council think we're a couple again, they might not evict me. So if it just happens, I write this letter. Well, as long as there's no comebacks on me, I don't care what you do. Cheers, Jan. This conversation never happened. Hello. Shuttleworth Independent Funeral Services. How can I help? Oh, <laughs> hello, Richard. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, it's about Patricia. Oh, uh, 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 is she ready to be picked up from the mortuary? No, it's, it's just that I've got a friend of hers here who'd like to view the body. Oh, that shouldn't be any problem. Uh, it, it is a problem. Um, I was hoping that you were going to explain to her that it might not be such a good idea. I, I told her that it, it was a very traumatic experience. Richard, what were a, a traumatic experience for you could be a help to other people. Look, if she wants to view her friend, well, my advice is to let her do it. I, I'm only in the Rovers. Do you want me to come over? Uh, it's OK. I'll, I'll deal with it myself. Uh, thanks, Archie. So, we going? Looks like. Just give me a moment. Let her go on her own. You don't have to do it again. I do. Do you want me to come? No. Shall I do dinner for Charlotte? I don't think she'll feel much like eating after this. All right, I'm coming. Shall I get it? No, it's OK. Bound to be for Sarah. Ready? My car or yours? Yours, I think. Richard? It's the police, for you. Mr Hillman? Yes? Sorry to bother you. W what do you want? It's about the body you identified for us. We've checked the dental records, and it seems there's no way it can be your ex-wife. <laughs> Could I do such a thing? It's easier than you might think. Well, nobody likes spending too much time looking at corpses. A brief glance with tears in your eyes and a lot of stress. She'd been in the water for days. Same age, same build and similar hair. Couldn't be a mistake, could it? No. I'm sorry you've had to go through this. Yeah, yeah, sorry you should be. It can't have been easy. She's come all the way from Australia. It wasn't their fault. 
Well, I mean, if they can tell from the teeth, I mean, why didn't they do that first before they came here bothering us? We can't tell who she is from the teeth. But once we've got a name, then we can check it against that person's dental records. Sorry. Is there anything else we can do? You could try finding her. She's been missing for five months. We'll do our best. Look, uh, can you go now, please? It's been a lot to take in. Of course. Um, I'll see you out. Well, I suppose this means you could still be alive. Well, do as I get a minute, I'll nip over to Councillor Watts with a mm. petition. Well, go now if you want. I can all the force. Oh, lovely, that ride. Right. Oh, oh, thank you. Sorry, uh, you are working. Oh, no. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm glad I found you, because I've been trying to get into the flat. Oh, no, I've there goes me rent money. Well, let's go with her, quick. Of of She's got the radio blaring full blast. I've tried ringing the bell, but she doesn't answer. <laughs> She's avoiding me, no doubt. Uh, Faze, you haven't paid for your meal. Oh, <laughs> No, oh, sorry, Ryan. Uh, 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 what are you doing here? Having me Sunday dinner? How long has she been here? Oh, uh, 15 minutes. What about you? All the same. Oh, dearie me, you've left your radio on full blast over there. I can hardly hear myself think. No, no, sorry you turned it off before we left. Uh, excuse me, I don't think so. No, I'm sorry, hold you, but I did. Uh, no, you didn't. Honestly. Uh, uh, All right, look, pay for your meals and then both come back with me and I'll prove that you didn't. Uh, and you can pay me your rent when we get there and all. You don't have to dash off, you know. You can stay for your dinner if you like. No, I, I need some time on my own to think. Well, tomorrow then. It's the least we can do after we've dragged you halfway around the world in a wild goose chase. Well, I suppose it'd give us the chance to talk about what to do next. What do you mean? Do next? Well, now I'm here, I feel I should do something to try and find her. What time do you want me, Gail? Seven. All right. See you tomorrow. Archer's in the robe, isn't it? Better go over there and tell him we won't be needing his services anymore. You look like you could do with a stiff drink. I could. You want me to come? No. You start then, and I'll be back in half an hour. Okay. Hiya. When did you get back? Oh, about ten minutes ago. Is Nick with you? Haven't you heard? Heard what? I thought you'd been straight on the phone to Gail. Why? I've left him, Richard. Well, you've been here at all over down Inkerman Street before. Are you sure? I'm positive. Hey, maybe it's a ghost. Oh. <laughs> right, are you coming up? No, I'll go to the pub. Hey, that money I've lent you is for your mum and dad's flowers, not dirty beer. I know, I'm only having one. Uh, maybe they're playing a quieter record at the moment. Well, come on, then. I can't believe two girls living over a hairdresser could completely run out of shampoo and conditioner. Oh, no, there is some. There's plenty, in fact. But would you trust shampoo that came in a two-litre bottle? No. <laughs> it's Fizz's influence, I bet. Right. See? Told you. Not a sound. <laughs> could anybody else have been in here? No. Is this on a timer? No. So you've been imagining it, Audrey? It's all in your head. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, I must have made a mistake. I've got it wrong. <laughs> she forgot about the rent. Silly old bat. machine. There's another example. Why fruit? Why? Because fruit is wholesome. Fruit is nutritious. It's good for you. Well, yes, Roy. I understand what you're trying yes, to say. Yes, but... well, it's not just the wheels that spin. It's the people behind them. Right, well, thank you for giving me this. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, well, I hope it proves to be some use. <laughs> you stupid man! Are you all right, Audrey? Yes, why shouldn't I be? <laughs> Oh, 
drink? What's happened? I need a drink, a brandy or something. Are you all right? No, I don't think I am. Well, look, come and sit down. Richard, would you do the honours? Of course. Of come course. on. Do you know any good flower shops? Oh, uh, oh, Peter does, don't you? No, I don't. He bought me some gorgeous lilies a couple of weeks ago. Where from? Oh, I don't know. I forgot. I can't remember. Hey, you still got the business card in your wallet. I reckon he's planning on becoming a regular customer. Yeah, hang on. <clears throat> what you don't going in my wallet? Well, you asked me to. To get the money for the cornflower. Did it deliver? I think it would be dead cool if I got them delivered to the door. My mum would be well chuffed. I don't have to bother going round then, either. <laughs> well, come on, then. Take the card out. When we said goodbye before, did you hear anything coming from the flat above the shop? No. No music? No. Oh, I heard music. Well, well, my ears aren't as good as they used to be. And that flat's been empty all along, so I must have imagined it. I'm not just forgetting things now, Archie. I'm imagining them and all. Oh, no, don't be daft. <laughs> I'm already daft. I'm wearing dafter. Now, oh, come on, Audrey. What's all this about? Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. I don't want to talk about it, right? Hey, maybe this place really is haunted. <laughs> yeah, haunted by the smell of your fella's socks. Hey, that could be what Audrey heard. <laughs> Kirk's socks? Yeah. Like you say, they don't half hum. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> Hiya. Oh, oh, what are you doing here? Is everything all right? Yeah, couldn't be better. Do you miss me? Yeah. <laughs> me too. <gasps> well, how long are you back for? For good. <laughs> What, did you just take your key with you? Well, maybe deep down I always knew I'd be back. <laughs> oh, that explains Audrey's ghost, then. Right. I'm going to go and have a word with him. Joel, please don't punch him again. Just give us a shot, whatever he's drinking, and I'll take it over to him, all right? Will you ring for us? Bring yourself. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't know what to ask for. He only wants to say how much he loves her. You can understand that, can't you, love? Yeah, of course I can understand that. Well, so we can go up and order a bouquet for him. Come on. Yeah, yeah. come here. Peace offering. Keep it. All right, then I'll make you another Get lost. offering. You drop the charges against me and I'll drop Gina like you wanted in the first place. Only this time no messing about, all right? Track your statement, and she's all yours. You made me sick. You want her. You know you do. Drop the charges, and you can have her. She loves you. <laughs> Listen, love's all well and good, mate. But believe me, it's now compared to freedom. <laughs> now, I like Gina a lot. But there ain't a woman alive I'd go to jail for. Including your own mother, yeah? You gonna do it or what? <laughs> Uh, what message do you want on the, on the card? Uh, happy anniversary, Mum and Dad, from your loving son. Happy anniversary, uh, Mum and Dad. Yeah, from your loving son. Uh, no, no, it's just for a friend. Can you just hold the line a sec, please? Shell, why don't you go and get another round? Yeah? Get, get Kirk a drink as well. Same again? Yeah, point for me. I'll give you an hand. All right, Have you not guessed who it is yet? Well, do you not recognise the voice? Would it help if I did a bit of uh, grunting and groaning? Yeah, that's right. Well, no, look, I weren't going to ring you, but um, I sort of got pushed into it. But anyway, listen, now I have. Which night next week are you free? She was lying there right in front of him. I was very stressed at the time. Now, now, trust me, there's a good reason for telling Audrey this. She was lying in front of him, flat out, stone cold dead, and he mistook her for his ex-wife. That must have been awful. It was. Yeah. No, but my point is, we all make mistakes. It doesn't mean we're going senile. What do you mean, senile? Well, now, Richard here is family. If you've got worries, I think you should share them with him. Well, what are you worried about, Audrey? Well, you know, I'm always joking about, you know, losing things and forgetting things, like the keys. My senior moments, I call them. <laughs> it's, um, it's just that it's happening more and more lately. And now, 
started to imagine things. Well, what things? Well, I thought I heard someone in the flat above the shop. Well, when was this? Oh, 20 minutes ago, you know, I heard footsteps and uh, very loud music, but... Well, there was nobody in there. I mean, Toya and Fizz have been in the cafe all the time, so... I must have imagined it, mustn't I? And I mean, with everything else that's been happening lately. Oh, there'll be a perfectly rational explanation for it. The, well, the Richard, probably. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So, come on, what is this explanation? I don't know. Exactly. You know, I'm getting really scared, Richard. I think I'm losing my mind. Thank you, please, now. Don't say a word to Gail, will you? Because she's the poor maker that's going to have to look after him. Hey, hey. Oh, Trey, come on, come on. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I'm sure it won't come to that. Do you want me to drop Bethany off? You better get a move on. Why is it I can never find both of her shoes at the same time? Uh, try the hall. I was thinking... We should try and get rid of the kids tonight. Why? Well, with Charlotte coming round, they might get in the way a bit. Right, well, I've found it. I'll just be a minute, Richard. Sarah, do you mind making yourself scarce tonight? What for? No. Well, with a friend of Richard's coming round. She's not a friend. Well, whatever. We might need a bit of privacy. Oh, uh, and you want me to go out? I, I never really got on with her. I mean, to tell you the truth, I've been thinking we ought to cancel it. It's too late for that now. Look, if I get your grand to look after David and Bethany, can you go out for a couple of hours? You're asking me if I mind going out tonight? <laughs> yeah, well, I know it's a big sacrifice. Mm, well, if you really insist, then I might be able to manage it. <laughs> yeah. I don't see why we have to put ourselves to all this inconvenience. Oh, no, it's no trouble, Richard. Patricia disappears. Charlotte comes from Australia to view the body, and it's not her at all. I mean, she's been through a hell of a lot this last few days. I know, but, you know, it's over now. She'll still have a lot she wants to get off her chest. And the kids out of the way, we can do it promptly. Well, I think you're right. I'm not so sure. Coming to work is the best thing you can do. Would you trust your hair to a woman who's losing her marbles? <laughs> you're not losing your marbles. I mean, how my customers safe? Is anybody safe in my oh, hands? You're perfectly fine, Audrey. You should just behave as normal. Yeah, well, I feel fine. I feel totally in control. And then one of these incidents happens and... Oh, I just don't know anymore. Oh, look, yesterday were just a mistake. That's... Forget about it. Well, that's easier said than done. Exactly. Now, if you really were in the throes of dementia, you'd have forgotten about it already. Right? <laughs> it's catch-22. If you think you're going mad, you can't be going mad. Well, I hope you're right. I am. You'll sail through today. Don't bother. And I'll meet you in the rovers after work. OK. What time did we say? 5.30-ish. Ish. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks, Archer. You try to buy me a drink. He knows you've dropped the charges, then. Not last night he didn't. The police obviously haven't got around telling him yet. So you told him? No. Why not? Before I could say anything, he was insulting me with an offer that I couldn't refuse, or so he thought. What kind of offer? <laughs> Please. He said that if I dropped the charges against him, that he'd really dump Gina. But you refused? Not exactly. You agreed? No, I didn't give him the satisfaction of an answer. But if he finds out the charges have been dropped, he's going to think you've gone along with it. Yeah, maybe. You should have told him the truth last night. I couldn't bear to speak to him last night. You want him to finish with Gina, don't you? Danny, I couldn't care less anymore. You want him to hurt her. Sunita, Because it's... deep down you think she's going to come running back to you. Why don't you mind your own business and get back to work? What's going on? And you too. We too what? Get back to work. Are you hiding something from me? We're friends, aren't we? Why should I be hiding anything from you? I mean... I could probably get my job back at the salon, but mm. I think it's best to avoid Audrey for the next couple of days. Like, get used to the idea of me dumping her grandson <laughs> first. Yeah, right. So you chat your job in, you travel halfway around the world to be with him, and then you dump him after six weeks. What are you like? No, it was, it was good at first. 
I took a week off when we first got out there and it was great. We did all the touristy things together. Not still I can all do romance. <laughs> hey, I've got a bit of a romance going at the moment. Mm, great. But then he had to go back to work, didn't he? Mm. So I was just left in the flat all day on my own. Didn't even know anyone. I just used to sit there watching telly, waiting for Nick to get back. Mm. I started to think I'm too young for all this. And then on Friday, when I was wondering what to do for his tea, I couldn't be bothered cooking, so I was looking for the number of the pizza place. And while I was looking for that, I came across the number of the airport. And I'm sat there looking at this number, thinking, all my mates and all my family are back in Manchester. And we've already had pizza this week. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I booked a flight. What, what did you do? <laughs> I don't know, went for a Chinese, I think. <laughs> right, I'm going to get off to work then. All right, see you. Bye. Well, I hate to say I told you so. Yeah, but you told me so, I know. No, it's great to have you back. Mm, it's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no ambitions, that's your trouble, <laughs> says the T-boy. Well, it's all very well working on a car like this, but you'll never drive one, will you? I've drove much better than this in my time. In your dreams. Listen, when I was younger, I was a bit of a lad, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. Well, you think you're a rebel because you've got an eyebrow like a curtain rail. I could teach you a thing or two. Like what? Like, bet you don't know how to hot wire cars. Hiya, how's it going? Good. Mm, so have you learned anything? Yeah, loads. Do you know what MOT stands for? Um, motoring something or other. Mugger tea. Check us to with you. We'll be testing you on it at the end of the week. Yeah, well, at least you don't have to do drinks for the customers. I've never got a kettle out of hand. I'll tell you what I have learned, though. That Tyrone's a bit of a dark horse. Oh, yeah, how do you mean? Well, he's just been telling me he used to wire cars. All right. Listen, I'm not doing anything tonight, so uh, do you fancy doing something? Yeah, so. Better off without her. I know. My form tutor had a word me on Friday. Oh, so why am I only just hearing about it now? No reason. Well, go on, what did he say? He reckons I'm Oxbridge material. Oxbridge? He thinks I should apply. It's only his opinion, means not really. Uh <laughs> Do you not realise? I mean, he must have meant Oxford. It means he thinks you're good enough to go to Oxford, Oxford University. No, Oxbridge. Either Oxford or Cambridge. Or Cambridge. I mean, or. Yeah. Both. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come here! Oh, <laughs> get off. <laughs> Working a bit early, aren't we, love? Yeah, Shelley's got a stock taking. There you go, fella. Keep the change, all right? Mate. So what should we do tonight, then? I'm not really in the mood, love. Oh, come on. It's my night off. I may as well make the most of it. Why? Because there might not be much left. Oh, don't be like that, Joe. Look, I know you're worried about going back inside, but, but it'll be all right in the end. How, Gina? What do you think's going to happen to make it all all right? Well, I don't know, but... Why do you think the police rang me this morning? <laughs> well, phone them back and you'll find out. <laughs> I'm not going to make it easy for them. If they want to find me, they can come and get me. Right. Got stuff to do. It'll cost an arm and a leg, you know. There's living expenses, tuition fees. Hey, you just concentrate on the exam. Don't let me worry about the money. I mean, you are the first person in this family to be able to do joined up writing, never mind the Oxbridge material. And I swear to you, I will break my back to make sure that you get every penny you need, okay? Yeah, thanks, man. Oh, I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> hey, look, don't be telling everyone about it. Okay. I'm not one of those irritating mothers who only subject of conversation is how well their boys are doing. Good. My lips are sealed. Anyway, I'll see you this evening. Genius. <laughs> see ya. Oh, see, just the man. All right. From now on, any spare shifts thrown my way. Don't care what they are, but I need the money. What for? Well, um, between you and me, our Todd. He's, um, Oxbridge material. Mm. I'm told you want to see me. Yeah. Uh, why don't we go somewhere a bit more private, eh? Yeah, come through. You don't think they're going to start fighting again, do you? I hope not. What I said last night, I meant it. I know. Well? I'm still waiting for an answer. Now, if I dump Gina, will you drop the charges? Do it so I can see it. What do you mean? Do it tonight. I'll be in a Rovers, 
do it then, in front of everyone. Why does it matter how I do it? I want to watch. You want to see her publicly humiliated? I thought you liked her. Listen, she was ready to prostitute herself to save you. Now you say that you're willing to sacrifice her to save yourself. I don't like or trust either of you. And why does it have to be in public? Because I don't believe a word either of you say. But if you do it tonight, and you mean it, and she knows you mean it, you'll break her heart and she can't pretend that. And if I'm watching, if it's genuine, I'll be able to tell. And if I do it? You don't go to jail. You're sick. Do you know that? It's your idea, Joe. You take it or leave it. All right. OK. I'll take it. Good. Just this, Charlotte's had a bit of a traumatic experience and, um, well, it's not unlike what I went through when Nick went missing, so I thought if I invited her around, it might help a bit. Yeah, yeah, of course. But why do you want me to look after the kids? Well, can they talk about corpses and missing people in front of them, can No, they? no, I suppose not. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. So, can you do it? Um, I'm not sure I can, actually. I've, I've arranged to go out now. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can. Why? Is everything all right? Yes, yes, it's fine. It, I was supposed to do my books yesterday afternoon and I, I got a bit distracted, so I've really got to do them tonight, Gail. I'm sorry. No, it's OK. Not to worry. Oh, see you, Sarah. Bye-bye. I invited Tanita round for a meal at ours tonight, but um, when I looked at the roster... Half eight hours in this morning. I know, and I know I was off yesterday, so if you can't make it, it doesn't matter, honestly. Don't worry about it. Tell you, Trish, Shell, I can do it. You sure? Yeah, well, I was supposed to be going out with Joe tonight, but he's got that much on his mind, he didn't fancy it. Well, so you cover for me? Yeah, if you want. Oh, thanks, love. You're a star. I owe you one. Yeah, and don't you forget it. Yes, look. It's like you were saying yesterday, it's not really a three-person flat, is it? No, but Maria was there before either of us two, don't forget. Yeah, no. And she's a good laugh. Yeah, as long as she doesn't try and take over, that's all. Oh, it'll be all right. Don't worry. Hiya. Hi. So what are we doing tonight, then, girls? We're going into town? Oh, I might have a problem. My grand's letting down with the babysitting. Yeah, well, I'm up for it. No, I'm up for it. I just need to sort something else out, that's all. Oh, cool. And I'll sort out the transport. Oh, hi, Hello, Richard. Oh, hi, Richard. Richard. How are you after yesterday's little ordeal? <laughs> well, seem to get through the day. I knew she would. I've just been saying to Archie that I'm sorry. I've had to say no to looking after Bethany and David later. Oh, really? Yeah, I feel so guilty. I couldn't tell Gail. I just, well, I don't trust myself with them at the minute. I told her she's worrying over now. No, 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 not at all. Your peace of mind is my main concern, Audrey. I mean, Gail can rearrange this dinner party for another time. Oh, really? Oh, you're not too disappointed, though? No, no, not at all. I never could stand Charlotte, to tell you the truth. Oh. <laughs> You're doing me a favour. <laughs> hey, you go and sit down, I'll get the drinks. Oh. Oh, cheers, Richard. You see, it's the Ox from Oxford and the Bridge from Cambridge. It means it could be an either-or, he might have a choice. You must be very proud of him. Oh, I'm floating on air, oh, there's a long way to go yet. Yeah. I've already swapped my shift with Shelley now, I'm supposed to be working. Well, couldn't you unswap it? If you expect me to change my plans every time you change your mind, you've got nothing coming. Go on, please. Where are you taking me? Um, I thought we could stay here. You can get knotted. Oh, come on. I like it here. Well, I may as well be earning them. I'm going to be stuck in here all night. OK. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, I might come in tonight anyway. Well, we can have a chat while you're working. Suit yourself. Hi. Oh, all right, just in time. What do you want? Uh, orange juice, please, but I have to be quick. I've got dinner on. Orange juice, please, Gina. I uh, had a word with your mum. Looks like we'll have to postpone Charlotte tonight, then, eh? Oh, no, no, it's all right. I fixed it. Martin's taking David and Bethany and Sarah's off out. Oh, that's good. And Charlotte rang this morning, said she'd still like to come. She's looking forward to it. Oh, thanks, honey. Which do you prefer, white or red? Sorry? White or red? Or should we have a bit of both? Right, I'm doing pork and ratatouille sauce. Is that all right for you? One of your specialities. You'll love it. Yeah, so what time do you get off? Cos I'm thinking of cooking for about half past eight. You've forgotten all about it, haven't you? Oh, I'm sorry. I've had a lot of things on my mind. You can still come, though, can't you? Look, I don't think I'd be very good company tonight. You all right? Yeah. So, 
What's on your mind? Nothing. Come on, you can tell me. Look, if you two want to have a girly night in tonight, you can. I'll do the cooking, right? And then I'll make myself scarce for you. Is he a hero or what? I couldn't let you do that. Yeah, of course you can. I'll go and watch the match. Not that much of a hero, then. <laughs> no, really, it's OK. What else are you going to do, eh? Sit in the flat on your own or go to the Rovers? OK. Good girl. Hey. Uh, look, I've got a lot on tomorrow, so let's try and avoid this going too late, shall we? Uh, let's feed her, give her a good listening to, and then get rid of her. <laughs> I know you and Patricia didn't see eye to eye, but Charlotte's her friend. She's genuinely worried about her. You can't just chuck her out. Hey, what are you wearing that for? Well, why not? I want to look my best. Well, it's not, it's not the Queen coming round to tea, you know. It's Charlotte Morris. What have you got against her? I, don't, I just don't see why we're going to all this trouble. That'll be her, so go and let her in. I think you should take that off. Don't you like it? Uh, I've gone off it to tell you the truth. I don't think it goes with that outfit. Well, I love it, so it's staying exactly where it is. Now, go and answer the door. I thought you said you'd organise the transport. I am. Oh, I swear, is it? It'll be here. So where are we going, then? Well, a few of the girls from Fresh goes and meet up at JR's, so we could go there. Only thing is, I don't think you'd get in, Sarah. You look too young. Well, there's not much point going, then, is there? Get in, girls. Is this for us? We're not just talking about going to one of the best universities in the country here, man. We're probably talking about one of the best universities in the world. Where are we going? Riley's. Yeah, and don't tell my mum. Well, I was young once myself, you know. Might give out on that. I really appreciate this. Since I moved out to Oz, I've kind of lost touch with people back here. Richard? Oh, enough for me, thanks. Sure? Uh, no, I'd rather keep a clear head so I can drive Charlotte back to her hotel. You know, when she's ready to go. I would have been a bit of a loose end tonight. Well, it's the least we can do after all you've been through. Uh, so you really like living in Australia, then, do you? Oh, I love it. You know, something happened to me similar, actually. My son, Nick, he disappeared. No note, nothing. And then the police found a body. I don't think we want to talk about that, though, do we? It wasn't him. No. But you had to identify it. I think it's the worst thing I've ever had to do. Mm. I mean, you're praying that it's not him, but then you think, well, if it is him, at least the nightmare's over. I think not knowing's the worst part. Absolutely. It's the things you imagine. I know. That's why I'm determined to find out what's happened to Patricia. Good news about Todd, isn't it? What news is that? His university. He's going to Oxbridge, isn't he? Says who? Your mum. She was telling us all about it before. Oh, take no notice. No, she was adamant. He's going to Oxford or Cambridge. Oh, can he not make his mind up? Oh, it's a very important decision. He has to make sure he makes the right choice. According to Eileen, it will all depend on what course he wants to do. Oxford is good for some things, and Cambridge is good for something else. Right, so she's been boring you all this, hasn't she? Oh, you can't blame her for going on a bit. So she has. <laughs> well, she was thrilled. She said she was walking on air. She was that proud of him. Aww. And she's already started saving up so she can pay for it. Mm, that must be why she went home early, then. Hey, you best watch out. She'll have you on bread and water. I'm sure she's just as proud of you, you know. She said that, did she? Well, she didn't have to. So I'll tell you that I know, then. All mothers are proud of their sons. You should be proud of your brother. Look, if he's clever enough to get into Oxford or Cambridge, you should be pleased for him. What makes you so sure he's clever enough? His teacher said. One teacher. Well, his form teacher. So one teacher takes a shine to him, and suddenly, golden boy's in the boat race. Can I talk to you for a minute, please? Well, I'm a barmaid. I'm paid to talk to customers whether I like it or not. At 8.30 tonight, Joe Carter's going to come in here, and he's going to finish with you. Oh, really? Really? You've been reading my horoscope, then, have you? He did a deal with me. Dev, I am not interested. He said that if I drop the charges against him, he'd drop you. Yeah, whatever. Because that's the kind of guy he is. Everything he does, he does for himself. Well, not like you, then, eh? No, not like me. Dev, you are not going to split us up. It was his idea, honey, not mine. Yeah, right. But what he doesn't know is, I've already dropped the charges. Really? Yeah, he's in the clear. Free as a bird. Now, when he comes in here tonight, which he will do, you can tell him that. Tell him that I've retracted my statement, then you can both go out and celebrate. Get drunk, make love, have a good time. Yeah, well, thanks. I might just do that. But if you do that, you'll never know the truth. 
Now, on the other hand, you could say nothing and wait to see what he does. Now, if he doesn't dump you, you know he loves you. If he dumps you but he's honest about it, at least he comes out with some credit. But I'm guessing that he'll drop you like a hot brick in front of the whole pub because he doesn't give a damn. So the ball's in your court, Gina. I'll leave you to think about it. And I'll see you at half eight. Right, well, I should give that another 20 minutes or so, love, and then it should be ready. I feel like I'm kicking you out of your own home. Oh, he's made up. He's going to watch the match. Don't worry about him. Right, what time do you want me back, then? Oh, about three bottles past midnight. All right, OK, well, save me some leftovers. OK, darling. See ya. See ya. See you, Peter, and thanks. That's all right. No problem. Have a good night. See ya. See ya. He's a lovely fellow, isn't he? Oh. Dead jealous, you know. Hey, your time will come. I wish. I just don't think the police are taking it seriously enough. Yeah, but people must go missing all the time. I mean, it doesn't always mean that something bad's happened. And it's not like she's a teenager. <laughs> Do you remember the Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin? Now, that was a good programme, that was. <laughs> Do you remember that hip-hop? Do you hip really think there's nothing wrong? Look, wh wherever Patricia is, I I'm sure she's OK. So why hasn't she been in touch? I don't know. I think she's dead, Richard. I thought Nick was dead at the time. I'm really worried. Turned out he was in Bournemouth. It's been too long. Something's happened to her. I know it has. And if the police refuse to do anything about it, then it's up to us. What can we do? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Could hire a private detective. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to cancel my flight back home. Oh, now, hold on. There's no Then I'm going to... to start looking into it myself. Find all her old friends, see if anyone's heard from her. you made up your mind about this, haven't you? Absolutely. Well, if there's anything we can do to help, we'd be pleased to. Wouldn't we, Richard? Yeah. Hiya. Hi. You decided to come in, then? Yeah. Uh, pint of bitter, please. You'll have to wait. I've got to serve Jason first. Yeah. Hey. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, just passing. You should have rang. Well, I thought you said you liked a bit of spontaneity. I do. That's why I've spontaneously decided to go out with someone else tonight. You didn't? No, I didn't. <laughs> you better come in. You know, if we're looking for old friends of Patricia's, we might get some useful contacts from that old address book of yours. I I'm not sure where it is. It's on top of the wardrobe in our bedroom. I'll get it when I've done the dishes. Charlotte, can you pass me a plate, please? Where did you get that bracelet? Oh, Richard bought it me. Do you like it? Let's have a look. He didn't want me to wear it tonight. <laughs> I didn't say that. Says he's gone off it. But I like it. What do you think? It's Patricia's. What? It's Patricia's bracelet. Uh, she had one very similar. Not similar. That is Patricia's bracelet. I'd know it anywhere. Are you sure? There's something funny going on here. Your ex-wife disappears off the face of the earth and suddenly your new wife's wearing her old jewellery. How do you explain that? What have you been up to, Richard? <laughs> Now, let me get this right. What exactly are you accusing me of? I'm asking you a question. It didn't sound like a question. It sounded like an accusation. There's no need to be defensive. I think there's every need. You come into our house as our guest and with no evidence whatsoever, apart from your overactive imagination, you start throwing wild accusations around. Richard, all she asked about was the bracelet. Yes. And she implied that I had something to do with Patricia's disappearance. Then let me ask you a question. Is this Patricia's bracelet? No. <laughs> it belonged to my grandmother. Your grandmother? She left it to me in her will. <laughs> with instructions that I was to give it to my wife. And when she died, I was only 14. 
and having a wife at all seemed a long way away. So the inscription was never meant for me? I gave the bracelet to Marion on our wedding day. After she died, Patricia saw it, liked it, and started wearing it. I, I had it engraved for her. She knew Marion had had it before, but it didn't seem to bother her. I wasn't entirely comfortable with it, but I was happy to see someone wearing it. When I got it back, I was going to sell it. I never intended to give it to you, Gail. Even I could see that giving the same present to three wives was a bit tacky. But you found it and assumed it was a present for you. And I chickened out. I didn't want to dredge up my messy past yet again. So I let you believe that it was for you. I'm sorry. I should have told you the truth straight away. How did you get it back off Patricia? What? Patricia loved that bracelet. She was wearing it long after you split up. What made her give it back to you? She didn't. We had a row and she threw it in my face. And right now I feel like doing the same thing. Doing another deal with him, eh? Well, yeah. Sort of. Right, see? Hey, Steve, listen. What, you think I want to stick around after what happened? Listen, just stay put, will you? You couldn't get involved even if you wanted to. This is strictly between me and him and Gina. Do you want another? Mm. No, it should be off, actually. Off? Well, off where? I thought we were having a drink. Oh, no, me and Ian. Who's Ian? This bloke I met at the airport. He works in the cafe. It's a right laugh. What, you're going out with a bloke tonight? Yeah. You know what they say? You fall off the arse, you get straight back on. See you later. Yeah. What time is it, Fred? Just after half eight. How much after? Five minutes of my watch. I can't see it. You can't see what? Patricia throwing that bracelet at you. She loved it to bits. Everybody knew that. And you throw rings, wedding rings, engagement rings. You don't throw bracelets. Well, maybe she liked to be different. She must have been very angry with you. What did you do? What did you say could make us so angry? I don't remember. People row, they get angry, they throw things. What, and then mysteriously disappear? Patricia's been missing for months. I think you know more about this than you're letting on. Now, hang on a minute. Are you saying Richard knows where Patricia is? He pulled the wool over your eyes easily enough. How many more secrets has he got locked away in his closet? He was trying to protect my feelings. You believe what you want to believe. I'm more concerned about Patricia. Where is she, Richard? Where is she? I don't know where One she minute. is. She's telling me how much she's looking forward to coming out to Australia. The next, she vanishes. And the only thing between was you and a row you can't remember that got us so angry she'd throw one of our most treasured possessions at you. I think it's time you gave us some answers. I think you should go. What? Before I get angry and start throwing things? Maybe you'd like me to disappear as well. Right now? Yes, I would. Well, let's ask your current wife, shall we? Gail, do you want me to go? Or do you want your husband to start telling the truth? Is there something else you haven't told me? You're not seriously going to listen to this woman, are you? All she wants to do is cause trouble. What happened the last time you saw Patricia? Yes, Richard, what happened? And this time, we'd like the truth. You want the truth? Yes, I do. Right. You were right, Gail. There is something else I haven't told you. And I hope when you hear what it is, you'll understand why. While I was still married to Patricia, Charlotte made a pass at me. What? <laughs> What's this got to do with anything? Actually, it was less of a pass. It was more of a stalking thing, wasn't it? She'd call me all the time on the phone. At work. Even at home, when Patricia was there. 
She'd write me secret letters, use an excuse to get me on my own. It was a long time ago. I'm oh, pleased you still remember. Nothing happened. Tell her. It was a stupid crush. It passed. Why bring it up now? Because that's what Patricia and I argued about. She didn't believe me at first. That her best friend had tried to seduce her husband. Then she remembered the unsigned letters and the phone calls. And soon it all fell into place. Her oldest friend. The one that she was flying out to Australia to start a new life with. Had betrayed her. Now, I don't know where Patricia is. Probably starting her new life somewhere else. But the reason she chose to disappear was because of you. Sorry I'm late. Not missed anything, I hope. Well, I want the phone to me in the first place. Brandy, please. It's ten to nine. So? So he said he'd do it at half past. He won't do it at all if I'm not here. You're wrong. Have you told him I've dropped the charges? No. Why not? Hmm? He thinks he's going back to prison if he doesn't finish with his girlfriend. Do you really think he'd choose to go back inside? The only reason I haven't told him is so that I can prove that he's a more decent man than you are. Best of luck. Right, do you want another? No, no, I'd better go. I'll get him in anyway. Gina? Um, Fred, can you get these? I'm going on my break. I'm sorry. What for? I can't actually see you've done anything wrong. I should have told you all about this before. I wish you had. You could have saved me from a distinctly unpleasant evening. Keeps happening, doesn't it? Things keep cropping up I know nothing about and the truth has to be dragged out of you. Do you mind if I call a taxi? I think I'd like to go back to the hotel. Help yourself. You've not had a drink. You do it, like you said. Why well, should I, after all the trouble she's got? Just do it, eh? Why don't you come? No. I want some time on my own. Go on. You ready? Yep. Come on, then. See you later. Yeah. Right, I should take a quick shower. What, to wash away the smell of me? Well, yeah, I suppose. Oh, thanks very much. Hey, uh, look, Lucy, I'm sorry about turning up unannounced. That's no, okay. And I was going to ring you then, I thought, I thought, no, well, you might like the surprise. It was a nice surprise. Good. So, um, who are you supposed to be going out with tonight then? Oh, no one you know. Are you winding me up? Yeah, of course yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> me, I got no friends. I just work hard in the shop all day and then I. I spend my lonely evenings in here, waiting for you to call. I never know what's going off in your head. Good. There's not many women like you, you know that. Yeah, have you had a lot of women, have you? No, I didn't mean well, it like that. Go and have your shower. Hmm? Go and have your shower. Oh, yeah. Do you ever think of Dougie? Yeah, yeah, of course I do. I'm going to say something really horrible now. Are you? It was never right for me. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. Well, it's not very horrible, is it? I mean, it's speaking of the dead, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I liked him. I liked him a lot. Do you think I was looking for a father figure? I don't know. I seem to find myself drawn to old men. I think it's because they seem more at ease with themselves, more confident. They know who they are. It's an to love it. Are you all right? Am I talking rubbish? A, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I'm no good at talking to people. I'm good at listening. That's what I do, listen to other people's problems. Have you got any problems you want me to listen to? Um, not really, no. Shame? <gasps> no, that's not a shame, is it? That's good. Oh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, what about you? Who listens to your problems, love? Oh, I don't have time to have problems, me. I'm too busy. Mm. Tell you who has got problems. Who? Gina. Big, big problems. 
Really? It's getting a bit busy in there, if you've done. I'll be there in a minute, Fred. What's up, love? I think Joe's going to chuck me tonight. You are? <laughs> we know what being chucked means. Of course. Why should he want to chuck you? Because he thinks if he doesn't, he'll end up in prison. Why should he think that? Because he's scared and stupid. I thought my love life were complicated. So are you going to be hiding in here all night? I don't know. I'm sorry. See, why don't you go home? I'll manage here. Our Ashley can step in if need be. No, I can't. Of course you can. I'll tell you what. I'll even pay for a taxi. I can't run away, Fred. I've got to know. I've got to know if he really cares about me. Come on. Let's get in there. What have we stopped for? What are your plans? What do you mean, what are my plans? I want to know what you plan to do next. I don't know. I haven't thought. Well, think now. <laughs> Richard. I don't want you causing any more trouble for me and Gail. Oh, right. And what about the trouble you've caused me? I've flown halfway around the world for this, and frankly, it still doesn't make sense to me. How many times? I mean, all I... right. Patricia knows I made a pass at you. So what? Why didn't she call me? You know Patricia, she loves a fight. Why just skulk away? I don't know, do I? Why didn't you tell me about all this before? I mean, I know you don't like me, but you have to let me pay all that money on airfares. You, you could have written a letter. I didn't know you lived in Australia. I didn't know she was going to stay with you. You see, <laughs> that's your problem, isn't it, Charlotte? You can't let things lie. My best friend is still missing. Your best friend hates you because you betrayed her. Your best friend never wants to see you again, like I never want to see you again. In fact, I think it would be a good idea all round for you to go missing, just like your best friend. <laughs> Joe has to finish with Gina for Dev to drop the charges. Yeah, but Gina knows all about it. I lead such a simple life, me. To be honest, Shell, I'm sick of the whole thing. I mean, they're all as bad as each other, except maybe Dev. He's tried really hard to be straight, but the other two, they've just been twisting and scheming. I can't keep up with any of it. Well, I knew something was going on, but this... Hey, you're the lucky one. You've got a decent bloke who loves you. Who could want more than that? Mm -hmm. That's all I want. In fact, can I have him? You what? Can I have your block? That's if you don't want him. Hey, you keep your paws off him. I can give you free groceries for a year. <laughs> no, I'll stick with what I've got, thanks. All right, then. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You uh, ran into the back before. Oh, well, I was on a break. Got to get them when you can, otherwise you don't get a chance. Another pint, is it? We need to talk. No, we don't. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Why? Because, uh, well, things have been going a bit mad, haven't they? Hmm? Do you want to come through sit back? No. Look, I, am. Um... Where did you look at him? Look at who? Dev. <laughs> I wasn't looking at Dev, I was just looking around. Gina, listen to me. You don't know how hard this is for me, love. You see, I know what you're going to say, and you don't have to do this. The thing is, I want to see what to do is bring you trouble, right? I mean, this isn't what we wanted, is it? Joe, listen to me. I know why you looked at Dev. I know about everything. In fact, I know more than you do. Just let me ask you one question. Do you trust me? Yeah, of course I do, Well, but... then, trust me now. I know you're scared about going back in prison, but you don't have to be. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. If you just trust me now, everything will be all right. Gina. Joe, I mean it. If you really care about me, just get your pint and go and sit back down. I'll even pay for it myself. I'm sorry. It's over. And it's not your fault, it's mine. I just don't feel the same way I did, all right? Now, look, I don't want to make a big scene, OK? 
Is this what you want? What you really want? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. I am. Um, I wish things could have worked out differently. Could. It could have worked out very differently. You see, I know everything. I know you're scared about going back inside. And I know that you went behind my back and told Dev that you don't be if he dropped the charges. Why didn't you say something? Because I wanted to see if you could through with it. I didn't have a choice, Gina. You did. I told you that if you trusted me, everything would be all right. And you didn't have to do it. Because Dev dropped the charges yesterday. Is it all right if I go on, Fred? Of course it is. Can I go through it back? Yeah. Hey, it's all going on in here. Don't leave it. Could you drop the charges, eh? Seemed like a decent thing to do. You could have told me! So could Gina, but she wanted to find out how much you cared. She got her answer. Don't leave it! Let's just get a pint, shall we? Where's Gina? She's gone home. You what? Went out the back. Now, come on, Fred, I please. don't think so. Are you sure you're going to be all right to walk home? Yeah, I always look more drunk than I actually am. Sometimes I can fall over my own legs when I'm stone cold sober. I'll get me coat. How come you're not drunk? You drank as much as me. Uh, not what? quite, love. Oh! What's, what's going off? See you, fellow. Very good. She's, what's up with her? She all right? She's legless. I'm not legless. Yeah. I've got two very fine legs. Do you like my legs? Unfortunately, they don't work. Nice to look at, not very good for standing and walking. So what have you done to us? We just had a few drinks. I was just about to get her home. Right, well, come on, I'll help you. Come on, love, let's get oh, you. Oh, oh, come on, you that's go. it. Let's get a good night. Oh, you're a nice man, you are. And he's strong, cos he's not very big, is he? But that's no reason why a small man can't be just as manly as a big man. She's very lucky, your shell, very lucky. She wouldn't even swap you three years free groceries. Oh, chill, I'm flattered. You should be. Oh, come on, let's get you. Right, come on. Come on. What's she been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Lighter fluid. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, no, no, come on. Let me get you down these steps. We've got tips. What are you two doing? Nothing. Are you going out with each other? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Oh, no, that's disgusting. You and my brother. Ooh, that's put me right off my chips. Sick, that is. Come on, there's no need for that. No, listen, I live here and Arlen have got as much right as anyone. I don't want my smelly brother hanging around here all the time. Why do you think I left home in the first place? No, if, if you two want to carry on doing whatever it is you do, you can go and do it somewhere else. Ooh. <laughs> Gina! What? Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't think I'd need to. I thought you'd trust me. All right, then just listen. Please. I wish I could think of some way to explain to you. But I couldn't face going back inside. You know what I was like. So good news, then. You're a free man. I didn't think I had a choice, all right? No, you had a choice. All you had to do was trust me. I was desperate, Gina. Joe, you have had me jumping through hoops for weeks. I asked you to trust me once, and you can't do it. So, no, you did have a choice. And you didn't choose me, so now I am dumping you. What? So you're going to throw away everything over this? Throw away what? What is everything? You've not been straight with me from the start. You didn't tell me about being in prison. You didn't tell me about the war. I saw. If this is everything, I don't want it. OK, I know. You're right. But it's not been easy for me. You know, after you've been inside, it, it's difficult learning to trust people. No. Now you've used excuse once to offer you can't blame being in prison every time something doesn't go the way you want it to. You're the wrong man for me, Joe. Too complicated. Are you for Gregory? I can't keep up with you. You and Debbie, you're as bad as each other. Look, I should have never got involved with either of you. Gina. Joe, it is over.
have you been? Uh, there were roadworks on the way into town. You've been gone ages. Well, you, you said you wanted to be on your own, so I, uh, I went for a drive. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry about tonight. Charlotte always loves causing a scene. She wouldn't have been able to if you'd have told me the truth. I know. We can't go on like this, Richard. I know you think you're protecting me, but I'd rather know the truth. I hate hearing things from other people. It makes me feel stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. You keep saying it. So, what happens now? I don't know. Are we going to see any more of Charlotte? Oh, no. I think we've seen the last of Charlotte. Nothing much in here today. Still, I suppose, uh, no news is good news, eh? Yep. Mum, you know, like, you've got a day off. Would you be able to drop off Bethany and pick her up later? Hey, hang on, love. Your mum and I might want to go out no, today. No, we won't be going anywhere. It's OK. Thank you. Thought it might be nice, you know, to... After Charlotte. OK. Morning. Mission accomplished. Yeah, I believe the Carter and Gina are no longer an item, yeah. So you're happy now? No, not exactly, but it's for the best. You thought it necessary to come between two people so you could exercise your power over them? There's nothing like that. She deserves better than him. Someone like you? I'm not going to get into an argument about this. The facts speak for themselves. He dumped her to save himself. Ergo, he's a scumbag. Ergo, do you understand what that means? Yes. Yeah, she's better off without him. Dev the good Samaritan. No. No. You seem to forget we're talking to two adults here. I didn't put a gun to Carter's head and force him to dump her, did I? You don't realise the effect you have on people, on women. You don't realise what they think of you. You know that woman the other week? Please. Look what she thought of you and how you treated her. You can't just trample over people's emotions like you do. Dev, you're a nice man. Why do you keep showing people the horrid side all the time? You're better than that. Show them some respect. Maybe you're right. Oh, hi. I just wanted some tea. You'd think working here, I'd... There we are, love. Thank you. Oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, good. Oh, oh, I say, look here. What? What? A good day for affairs of the heart, but not for her, it seems. Oh, you don't believe in all that star stuff, do you? Oh, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. I mean, well, look, look at Rita's, for example. New Horizons beckon. Well, do they? I'm going on a cruise next week. He knows that. And, and then, you see, look at the characteristics associated with the individual star signs. Well, it, it's uncanny. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, see. Psychic. Receptive, but vulnerable. Someone who swims in the medium of dreams. Now, who's that? No idea. Well, me, of course, Pisces. Oh, really? <laughs> I'd have thought that was obvious. Mm. No, I mean, look, take young Tyrone here. Mm. I can tell you immediately what star sign he is just from his personality. Well, go on, then. Taurus the bull. No. Leo. No. Right, oh, hello. What's all that about? Oh, gee, it's all women in the world against me from now on. Well, as some of them work for me, that's not good news. I want to see more of them, not less. How's the advert? Well, I'm on to it. It'll be in the Gazette this week. And uh, about the women, don't worry about it. They all have a rascal, don't they? Don't be glib, son. When Haley gives you the dead eye, you've moved on from being a rascal. So, uh, Joe and Gina, eh? Bet no one saw that coming. Really? Apart from you, that is. Why'd you say that? Well, you're her best friend, aren't you? I'm sure she confides in you. Yeah. Yes, she does, about some things. Well, there you are, then. Uh, that's the trouble with being approachable. People tend to lay their secrets on you. And you want me to pass these things on to you? No, no, of course not. So why are you asking me? Scorpio. No. 
Sagittarius. Oui. There you are, you see. How do you mean, there you are? That was the last one. You've gone through all to others. I'm not saying it's a perfect science. Well, it's a good job there's only 12, otherwise we'd be here all day. <laughs> so, come on, then. What does my sign say? Oh, oh. <laughs> romance could be heading your way. Oh, great. Hmm? Hang on. Yours is a good day for affairs of the heart. His is romance is heading his way. Yes. Well, they're both the same. No, they're not. They're, well, they're, well, they're similar, maybe. Oh. oh, well, I'll get off to the garage and wait then, eh? Thanks, love. Bye. Affairs of the heart. Hello. I've come to pay my mother's bill. Can we just... Can we just clear the air? I, I know you've every right to be cross with me, but... I'm not cross. Disappointed. Sad, maybe. Well, that's worse. I'm, I'm sure Charlotte won't trouble us again. So forget about her and Patricia. Think about us. And ghosts. Ghosts? Yours don't seem to want to leave you. I like to think my previous marriages remain firmly in the past. I wonder how you'd feel if I gave you that engraved ring I'd given Martin and let you think it was especially for you. Exactly. All the time thinking the sentiments were for me and then discovering they were meant for someone else. Bringing back your past doesn't exactly enhance my self-esteem. I know, I know. But, but please stay and let's try and work this out. Hello? Oh, hi, Nick. Uh, may I take this opportunity uh, on behalf of all the staff of the Cabin Limited to offer our most sincere condolences on the sad demise of your mother. Thank you. Oh, she was, she was a delightful woman whose order of Canine Weekly will be sorely missed. <laughs> so how much do I owe you? Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I think you'll find that's correct and up to date. <laughs> Diane Black. Mm. Charming. And thank you so much for all those kind things you said about my mother. Not at all. Oh, and, and Miss Black, uh, if, if there's anything I or my staff can do to help at this uh, sad time, please, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. staff at the cabin? Well, I'm sure the paper boys will, miss her. You never had a kind word for her. Oh, it was that yupping mutt of hers I couldn't stand. Oh, Mr Wu? Oh, I quite liked him. Mr Wu. Fancy calling a dog after a musical song, really. It's just a little shit soon. Mm, my sentiments precisely. So Nick went to work, came home, and Maria was gone, and so were all the things. I mean, he's worried sick. Well, I'm not surprised. He did admit they weren't getting on as well as he'd hoped, but, I mean, just to up and leave. Hmm. Look, girl, I don't want to change the subject, but can we at least clear up this bracelet thing? No, not now. I just want to prove that the ghosts have gone. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Richard. You know, Richard told me not to come here again. Really? Listen. But I thought about it, and there are things you should hear. I really don't think this is necessary. Charlotte's come here especially. Go on. My apology. Pardon? You need to hear my apology. When Richard took me home last night, he was quite intense. He had me scared for a moment. But then I slept on it, and I realised he was right. What he said to me does make sense now. I'm sorry for any trouble I've caused. Richard never cheated on Patricia, despite my best efforts, and I'm sure he'll never cheat on you. Too right. So I've come to apologise 
and say goodbye. I'm going back to Australia. Oh, surely not. I mean, you've come all this way. She needs to get back to her work, don't you, Charlotte? Unfortunately, yes. I don't suppose we'll meet again. So good luck. Thank you. Oh, I do like to see you tuck into that. Oh, it's not hard. It's gorgeous, is that? <laughs> mm. Not my star say today. Go on. Romance is coming my way. Get away. Do you know, I would have followed at stars. You're the great Fortuado. You were my favourite. Do you know, I wouldn't go out of the morning till I'd read what he had in store for me. Honest? Oh, yeah, that's how I come to marry our Jack. You see, I were in love with Engelbert Umperdink. You know the singer? Never heard of him. Never? I used to have his posters all round the wall till our Jack made me take him down. Said that he could feel his eyes following him all round the room. And it felt a bit uncomfortable in his vest. So what's that got to do with stars? Well, I were in torment, weren't I? We're in love with Engelbert and going out with our Jack. That's when the great Fortunato, he put me right. Did I? He said, never strive for the stars. Always strive for the attainable. So I chose our Jack. So if things were different, you'd have been called Vera Rumperdink. <laughs> <laughs> so you reckon romance is coming my way, eh? Well, you never know now Maria's that, do you? I mean, who knows? Maria? Well, yeah. Ah. Didn't, I, didn't I tell you? Oh, I'm sorry. I knew there was something I had to tell you. Here, here, here. What, what, what about this? Hello, Aiden. What's the news on my car? Uh, it's all done. The tap is needed just in which should make it much quieter and you won't need to use as much petrol. Oh, very good. Yeah, considering he only did the polishing. You come to settle up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well done, Aidan. Hope you'll work as hard as this in class. Yeah. Then maybe not. You seem, seem to be getting on well. Yeah, we are, thank you. Ain't fair. What? Well, you and Aidan have got these really, really cool jobs and I'm stuck working in fresh coats. Oh, what, don't you like being a retail provisions operative? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? I want to be a smoker. What? You know, a smoker. They stand outside the offices all day just smoking and having a laugh. Yeah, well, they must do something else. Probably. Then your clothes would stink of tobacco, your breath would smell and you'd spend a fortune. Yeah, well, I never said it was perfect. And in winter, you'd freeze and you'd get lung cancer. Oh, yeah. Listen, um... You know what I was saying earlier about Gina and Joe? Well, I hope you didn't think I was just being nosy. I mean, the last thing I want is to interfere with other people's love lives. Really? Hi. Uh -huh. You said if I needed anything. <laughs> It's all right. What are you doing here? Do you want a drink or do you want to cause more trouble? Just me you, sure. How are you? I'm fine. Really? Spare me the mock concern, Edev. It isn't mock concern. If you had any feelings for me, you would have shown them earlier. Now you've made your point. So go and find someone else to play your games with. Uh, what do you think you're playing at? Excuse me. I've had Nick on the phone. He's worried sick. He just upped and left. Yeah, well, it weren't working out. He didn't say anything. He was at work. You don't walk out on someone's life without saying anything. You didn't even leave a note. Yeah, well, I was going to. But then I couldn't find a pen. You didn't tell him you were going? <laughs> right. I didn't know what to say. Hiya. Oh, what are you doing? Don't ask. Where's Nick? She's left him. Oh, dear. Didn't even bother to say goodbye. I said all right. So, Audrey, you give me job back or what? I don't think so. <laughs> and the first person she thought of was you? Well, I must have made a favourable impression. Uh, uh. 
Uh, I, I like to think that problem solving is my forte. Now, I've factored in the issues. Mr. Wu is homeless. Poor Diana can't look after him. And we, as a news agent, reach those parts of the community that others can't. Therefore, we are in the perfect situation to find Mr. Wu a new home. Which is why she came to you. Exactly. So what are you going to do? Put a card in the window. And that's it? Uh, yeah, well, at, at a reduced rate. It's only 50p a week. So that's what you're going to propose? Well, yes. I... Yeah, I don't know. You can be lucky sometimes. Pardon? I'm going to solve your problem for you. Hiya? Yes. I'll have him. You? Yes. Yes, I've been thinking about getting a little dog for some time. It'll be company for me in the evenings and a good excuse to go for walks. So you can tell your lady friend you have found her ideal solution. You've found a home for it. I'll do it at once. No, 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 but it's strictly between ourselves. Uh, sure, yeah, cheers, bye. Who was that? Oh, uh, business. Uh... Your business? Yeah, but nothing worth talking about now. We've got more important things to discuss. Like? Us. Clearing the air. Let's go out tonight, please. Sunita, can we sort this out? Look, I'm, I'm sorry about earlier. I wasn't prying, honestly. OK. No, it's not OK. This last couple of weeks, there's been this... this atmosphere between us, and I don't want that. I thought we were friends. Yeah, but life's full of surprises, isn't it? I'm sorry. Forget it. No, I won't forget it. I'm sorry. I'm going to clear this up. Now, have I said something? No. Done something? Ah, so it is something I've done. Oh, my word. I see. Look, I'm going to tell you something now, and I'm taking a risk, but if you already know, it can help us, and if you don't I know, don't want to know. But I think you already do. What is it with all of you? Tell Sunita she can bear it. What, I'm at a walking receptacle for your guilt trips? I don't want to hear any more secrets, all right? Not from you, Dev, Gina, anyone. Live with your own conscience. I would do. I have been. But this is obviously upsetting you, and I don't want that. You, uh... You know about me and Dev, don't you? Yes. Why? Why did he tell you? He didn't. He didn't? Look, you see, that's secrets. You share them, you lose them. No, you're not concerned about me at all. You just want to find out how I know. You're right. Look, I told you this because I was concerned for you, for us, for our friendship. You know? That's it. Can't we just be friends in spite of it? Can't we? Please. <laughs> She's obviously been delayed. Uh, no, she's not coming. <laughs> Diana, not coming? <laughs> Afraid not. Oh, yes, and how do you know? She phoned while you were changing. Oh. She said she's very sorry, but she can't make tonight. Uh, what about Mr Wu? He's at the vet. He's got a bit of a sniffle. Uh, she didn't want to hand him over while he was poorly, so she said she'll bring him round when he's better in a day or two. Oh. She said to pass on her gratitude to you. Mm, I, I, I think I'd better just pop round and check. Uh, she also said her and her husband are going to the theatre tonight. The husband? Aye. Horoscopes. <laughs> Techno notice. Another gin and tonic order, yes, love? Yes, please. RJ, I know you said I couldn't come back to the salon, but can I come back to the flat? Maria, when did you get back? Sunday. And were you playing your radio really, really loud? Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's all right, sweetheart. Sold the flat. Oh, what? Well, yep, yeah, of course. Uh, listen, love, there's somebody who wants to see you. Uh, come on, Audrey, let's sit down. Oh. Hiya. Are you all right? When did you get back? What happened? Why are you uh, caught? Steady on. What? I never thought I'd see you again, that's all. Oh, don't be daft. So what happened? Just 
just didn't work out. I did say, didn't I? All right. I knew it. But all the stuff I said at the airport, it can happen now. My Tyrone. And you wouldn't believe what it said in my stars this morning. And to think I don't even believe in... Where are you going? Out. Hey? I've got a date, Tyrone. I've not come back for you. Sorry. You're doing really well. Yeah, well, I don't feel like it. No, honestly, love, you are. I feel like I'm in a goldfish bowl. <sighs> Norris. I was never convinced of these offending projects, but now, I mean, take a lad like Aidan. Could be academic, doesn't want to be. Put him in a practical environment and watch him blossom. I definitely think it's a way to deal with young offenders. Give them practical skills. Kevin? I'm sorry, Ken. Look, I'm, uh, I'm glad you're happy week, eh? I've got to go. No look, love. Never mind. Stars. Well, don't blame them. Did his mother never warn him of women who lead men astray? His mother were a woman that did lead men astray. Oh, yes. Anyway, listen, don't worry, love. But you make your own look. I mean, look at me. I mean, the right-minded wants to be called their rumpadink. <clears throat> Night, Aidan. Later. See you later. Not yet. We've had such a lovely evening. Let's have a nightcap. OK. Peace offering. Please. What I did was stupid, but don't let it come between us. Please. Cheers. Hey, that's fellas for you, the effect they have on us. What do you mean? I know how you feel about him, love. Dev has that effect on women. We all get our crushes, but we do recover from them, honestly. I don't have a crush on Dev. Oh, no, right, of course you don't. No, really, I don't. Oh. Right, well, I'm sorry. I, I must have made a mistake. Only in degree. Pardon? I haven't got a crush on him. I wish I had, then maybe it wouldn't hurt like this. Because he doesn't know, does he? And if he did, he'd probably laugh. See, it's not a crush. I love him more than I've ever loved any other man. And now I'm hurting like I've never hurt before. What are you standing out here for? I wanted to get locked up for the night. Oh, just checking. <laughs> Just checking what? Well, I mean, we, we, we take a lot of money in here every day, don't we? I, I don't want some young thug uh, uh, chancing his arm with your profits. Very thoughtful of you. No, oh, you, you hear stories all the time about these mass raiders with shotguns breaking down doors. They're just waiting to break into somewhere like this. Well, if they do, they might find more than they bargain for. What do you mean? Mr Wu, of course. Oh, are you going through with that? Well, why not? Oh, about a scrappy little thing like that's not going to be no deterrent to a big, strong man with an attitude problem. Oh, I don't know. He did a very good job of terrifying you, as I remember. Where's that Gina got herself to? She should have been here an hour ago. Oh, give her a few minutes, Fred. She's not too good at the moment. You weren't quite with it this dinner time. <laughs> I'll grant you that. She's very upset about what happened with Joe. Too much information, I said, too much information. I am not the sort of man who gets involved with the ins and outs of his employees' love lives. All I'm concerned about is the smooth running of this pub. We can always give Harry a call. He can fill in if we need him. No need for that. Oh, hello. So you've decided to grace us with your presence, have you? I'm sorry I'm late, Freddy. I had a few things sort out before I came in. Be right, I should dock an hour off your wages. But I don't think I'll do that. I'm far too soft. 
So where's he taking you? Just for a meal in town. Anywhere in particular? No, nowhere special. Is that it? Not bad for a Friday. Keep an eye on the shop. I'm going out for a while. Not going to the Rovers. Well, I might be later. Is that a problem? Not for me, no. Um, Jean will be there, of course. Excuse me. Right, I'll get off then. At least you've got something to go home for. Yes, I'm very lucky. And I'd like it to stay that way. What do you mean? Ken can't find out about me and Dev. Listen, I won't tell a soul. Great. And uh, I won't breathe a word about you and Dev. I wish it were me and Dev. Oh, you're wasting your time, love. It's not worth it. One of these days you'll find a fella who is. OK. To go when? Fly out Sunday. The tickets are nothing. They're practically giving them away. Is this an attempt to win me round? Of course not. This has just come out the blue. But what about the kids? What's this about kids? I'm sure your mother can look after them. Look after who? You, Dave and Bethany. What for? Richard wants me to go to Spain with him. What, and leave us here? Well, a bit for a second honeymoon. A bit sudden, isn't it? I only got the offer today. Oh, fine, go. See? But we don't need to stay at my grand's. We can stay here, she can pop round. Hey, I haven't even said I'll go yet. Oh, come on, girl, you've got to grab these opportunities while they're there, otherwise you miss out. So you've already said you'll go? Provisionally. Of course I said I'd talk to you about it first. I don't even know this Chris Melton and his wife. Who's Chris Melton? Precisely. A business friend. Who I don't know from Adam. Which is why we're going to meet them in the Rovers tonight. If you don't like them, we call the whole thing off. They're going anyway. So where is this villa they've rented? Andalusia. It's beautiful. I mean, it's in a lovely setting. It's got its own pool. They're going to bring the brochure and show you tonight. Richard, we've remortgaged the house to get us out of a mess. We can't afford to spend like this. The villa's free. It's only the flights and a bit of spending money. Come on, girl, say yes. I know you'll enjoy it. They're great company. Oh, I wonder where you were. Well, I'm not hard to find. I've got no money to go anywhere. Yeah, well, whose fault is that? Yeah, well, I'm still looking for something, you know. Oh, yeah, up to your eyes in Greece, I'll see you. Well, you say you get on your bikes, I'm just making sure I've got a bike to get on. Hiya, love. Did you have a nice day at school? OK. Listen, I want to tell you something. I've been making some inquiries. I've decided to set up a savings account for you to help you out a bit when you go to Oxbridge. No guarantee they want me at Oxbridge. Oh, come on. The school said it's a certainty. And if you do go, I don't want you going short. I mean, you're going to be making all sorts of posh friends in a place like that. <laughs> Mum, it's not that I'm being ungrateful or anything, but it's going to take a lot more than a savings account to get me through university, Oxford or anywhere. Hey, Mum, if you don't want it, you can always give it to me. Yeah, well, if you'd have made something of your life like he has, then I might consider it. Take a lot from this. What's he on about? He said to tell you that his bodywork might be a bit worse for her, but there's no wrong with his engine. Uh, uh, well, you can go and tell him to rev his engine and, and get lost. Well, I won't exactly put it like that, but... <laughs> hey, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Took more than some pathetic bloke get me down. Got life to lead, haven't I? Good girl. Hey, Mike, 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 listen. I'm not sure this was such a good idea. You'll be all right. You've got to put what happened behind you. <laughs> it's not that simple. It's as simple as you want to make it. We've got business to discuss, right? Life goes on. Yes, gents, what can I get you? I'll get this, shall I? Large scotch, is it, Mike? Yes, please, love. Joe? Uh, it's all right. I know what he drinks. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> you naughty boy. Yeah, OK, about an hour. Ciao. Oh, Italian, is it? Half Italian, yeah. Oh, well, let's hope it's the right half, then. Oh, it is, don't you worry, Fizz. Another fella. Yeah, met him in the precinct. He's got a gorgeous body. Don't you think you ought to give a bit of thought as to where you're going to live before you start back into your social life? Well, I'm living here, aren't I? Yeah, only cos we're letting you. You know, if Audrey finds out, we're for the eye jump. Well, that's already sorted, didn't she say? Who? Audrey. I've spoke to her and she says I can move back in. Oh, it'd be nice if somebody asked us. I mean, we are the ones that are living here. <laughs> you moved in without even asking, Fizz. Yeah, that was different. Oh, look, I've not got time to stand here arguing. I've got a fit Italian colleague for me in an hour. Guess what? I've got some brilliant news. It looks like Mum and Richard are going to Spain on Sunday. Mm, interesting. Gran's going to be looking after us, but I can wrap around my little finger. Oh, yeah? It's going to be fantastic. Great. So what do you want to do to celebrate? Go for a coffee at Roy's. Roy's? 
Yeah, well, I haven't got long. Well, why? Uh, well, I'm helping my dad do something tonight. But they're going to the Rovers tonight. I thought that me and you could spend some time together. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I promised the old man to give him a hand. Anyway, what's one day when we've got the whole week together from Sunday? Mm. <laughs> and Birdman of Alcatraz. Enjoying your freedom. Leave it, Deb. Leave it? I don't know, he's got a note to show his face here after what he's done. I invited him. <laughs> really? Well, I'm disappointed in you, Mike. I thought you had more taste. And I thought you had more sense. It's not the time. Well, I would have thought it's exactly the time. Because I think people have a right to know what kind of conniving, devious little piece of rubbish they're rubbing shoulders All with. Right, I'm warning now, you, look, Dave. leave it. If you've got something to sort out, do it in private. Because I think the good people here should know about a man who is prepared to sacrifice, willing to sacrifice his girlfriend to stay out of trouble. Okay, it wasn't like that. Oh, right? yes, it was. It was. But that's nothing to what he turned her into. Oh, Gina wanted to help her. Yeah, but only because she was stupid enough to be persuaded. No, it was her decision. I didn't <laughs> force her. Really? Right, so you didn't ask her to come over to my place to try and seduce me. OK, sweetheart, you get in the back now. Right. That's enough. I'm not standing here watching you to upset that poor girl anymore. Don't you think you've done enough without coming down here and shouting the odds? She's in tears back there because of the way you treated her. And she doesn't need a problems broadcasting just to satisfy your vanity either, pal. Come on, Joe. It's time we left. Yes. Good idea. One more word from you and your next. <laughs> Shelley, I'm just trying to show everybody else what a low life Carter really is. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't matter what you do to Gina in the process, does it? Andalusia. Oh, that sounds impressive. Oh, it is, Audrey, and it's a wonderful countryside and it's a secluded villa with its own pool. And two strangers I've never even met. But you will, that's why we're here. Oh, come on, if she doesn't want to go, you can always call on me to make up the foursome. <laughs> Seriously, ma'am, would you go on holiday with two strangers? It's just not a stranger. You know what I mean. Well, if they're paying, I have to say I give it serious consideration. Well, it's not just the money. There's the kids. Yes, well... I can always look after them. Don't let that stop you. You see, what about Taya? Are you sure you can manage? Yes, of course I can. Now, why do you ask a question like that? Well, I know the salon keeps you busy. Oh, come on. The day I can't look after my own grandchildren, ring Archie and get me in the ground. It's very kind of you, ma'am. Take your pleasures while you can. You're a long time dead. Huh? Are you sure they're both gone? Positive. I can't believe they'd do that. The men love. That's the only explanation you need. I don't think I can take this. I oh, know, sweetheart. I think I should probably just go on. Well, you can if you want, but I think you're better off with something to do. Yeah, maybe. Well, they're not going to be coming back, are they? I'll tell you what, give it half an hour, and if you still want to go home, then I'll give Harry a ring and he can cover for you. Look, to be able to have it that loud, I'm trying to work. <laughs> Sorry. Where have you been? I remembered I had to see Hayley about summer. Woo, Hayley, eh? What exciting friends you've got. Hey, she's all right, is Hayley? Anyway, it was something about work. Oh, I heard Underworld were hiring. I thought I might give it a whirl. Huh? Forget it. You know you need to have some experience to work for Baldwin. Oh, come on, it can't be that hard if they took you on. You stuck-up cow. I was <laughs> just joking. Yeah, well, I don't like that sort of joke. <laughs> she is so easy to wind up. Yeah, but it doesn't help. Oh, come on, it's a laugh. She's so daft. If this is all right. What, you really think so? Yeah, we've been getting on fine. Hmm, wouldn't have thought she was your type at all. Why? Well, <laughs> she's a loser, isn't she? Sadly, the sort of person you'd describe as an ideal flatmate. Well, I think you're wrong. No, she's all right, is Fizz. There's more to her than meets the eye. Oh, I met him in that club. Oh, nice. Hey, quick. <laughs> Great. Hey, Tony, you look lovely. Hi, thank you. Hey, meet Gail. 
Tony. Gail, Richie's told us so much about you. And all good, which is rare for a married man. <laughs> well, give it time. Oh, the lot sound of that. I said she's got you taped. Bound and a foot more like. Oh, honestly, Gail, why do we put up with them? Because we're irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you want to drink? Um, the same as Gail, please. White wine and a pint for you, Chris. Great. Um, uh, same again, that please. That you've rented. It's very kind of you to invite us along. Sorry. It's great, isn't it? Oh, Chris, show her the brochure. She doesn't know what she's letting herself in for. Right, yeah, well, it's a beautiful villa, Gail, and Andalusia is supposed to be stunning. <laughs> Generous man, our Chris, eh, Chris? Oh, yeah, to a fault. Hey, eh, Tony? Yeah, yeah, I suppose he has his moments. Is this it? That's the one. <laughs> it's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? He's got a good eye for a bargain, your husband. Sorry? Yeah, uh, uh, it's down to me. I'm the one who found it. It was in a travel agent's window. You'd been looking for something for quite some time, hadn't you? Oh, yeah. But a bit of luck, really. Well, we wouldn't be going there at all if it wasn't for Richard. <laughs> well, I'll be useless. One of which is to get a drink for Chris and Tony. Come on, I'll give you a <laughs> Sorry. What's going on? It's just a little something me and Richard have got going. Oh, not more council business. And it's a bit hush-hush, so Gail needn't know, OK? Right, now, Tony, there's your white Thank wine you. and there's your pint. Jesus, well, here's to Andalusia. 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 Have you seen a good-looking bloke hanging around? About 6'2", dark hair? I'd be happy if I never saw another good-looking bloke again. It's a bit radical, isn't it? You think? I suppose you've heard about me and Nick. You hear about everything in here, love. Been getting a lot of flack from a certain quarter since I've been back. Really? Yeah, some people think I shouldn't have left him. Apparently, I should have stayed over there in Canada and made it work. Yeah? Yeah, me? Yeah, I think you deserve a bit of credit. It's a lot harder to admit you were wrong. You've made a mistake. So, it was either stay over there and keep up appearances, or put my own happiness first and move on. I decided to move on. I think any woman who's not brave enough to take control of her life deserves all she gets. It's okay. It's okay. Catch your breath. Give yourself a minute. Give I yourself... can't. I can't stay here. I, I, I know. I know. I know. Right. Okay. Now, uh, where can you go? Well, I've got nowhere to go, have I? Well, what do you mean? Of course you have. No, I haven't. I've not got anything left. You, you've got the rest of your life, Gina. Have I? Oh, right. I tell you what. Now, here's the keys to me flat. Go back there, put your feet up, pull yourself a drink, and I'll be back there when work finishes, all right? Oh, what about Peter? Oh, don't worry about him. He's at the races. He'll be ages. You'll have the flat to yourself. We'll have a chat then, all right? right. Slip out the back, and, and don't worry about Fred. I'll clear it with him. All right, love. I don't want your apologies. I was wrong to make her to dump you in public like that. I was wrong. I was angry, but I just want the best for you. Just leave me alone. No. I'm not interested. Please, Gina, please. Me. You and Joey both no. used me. But you know what? More fooled me for being stupid enough to do this than the whole world revolved no, around men. You're not stupid. You're you... treating me like dirt. But maybe I deserved it. Because I am stupid and I am thick. And maybe I deserve everything I get. Is she gone? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I suppose. I don't like her get to you. She doesn't. I think she does. No, it's not that. Well, what then? Well, me and you. And what about us? I just don't want things to change now that she's back. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I didn't used to think much of you. Oh, cheers. Well, just shut up and listen, will you? I found you irritating. You used to get on my wick, but it's not like that now. Now I've got to know you. I mean, know you properly and... Well, you've grown on me. What I'm trying to say is, I like you. Really? Despite the fact that you try your best to put everybody off you. Yeah, I know. And Maria can't just expect to waltz back in here and pick up where she left off either. Uh, try telling her that. Well, I already have told her. 
Look, it's going to take some getting used to, all of us back here together again, but... Well, I reckon we can crack it if we try. It's just a case of us all giving it a go. All right? There you go, love. <laughs> Gave you twenty. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm not trying to diddle you. It's just my mind's somewhere else. Um, I'll bring it over to you. Here you go. Sure, we're changing customers then, are we? Oh, I'm sorry, Freda. I'm just not with it tonight. It's Gina, isn't it? Yeah, she was in such a bad way. I don't suppose I could get off early to check on her, could I? Make sure she doesn't do anything daft. Daft? How do you mean, hurt yourself? Oh, I don't know. I'm just really worried. I've never seen her like that before, Fred. What are you standing there for, then? Get your coat. Oh, thanks, love. Yes, hey, and let us know. I'll lock up if you're not back. I've already had my tea. Fine, if you don't want them. Hey, I never said that. <laughs> so, put salt and vinegar on him. Not vinegar. I didn't think you'd be him. So you're going to eat two bags if I was out? That's gross. <laughs> yeah. <Ugh>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be out with Aid. He's doing something with his dad tonight. He never helps his dad. They don't get on. Yeah, well, he is tonight. Anyway, I've got to look after Bethany while Mum and Richard are out with some friends. So we still make some? Of course we are. Mm. Ah, in that case, you can go in the fridge and go and nick a couple of cans to eat with our chips. I'll nick one can and we can share it. Fine. They don't mind sharing with a mate. Gina? 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 Gina, are you in there? What's up? What? It's just, I came in and you weren't there. Yeah, and... I know, because I was having a pee. I drank a lot of vodka. You thought I'd done something silly, didn't you? No, I didn't. He did. I see it written all over your face. Well, maybe I did a little bit, yeah. Yeah, well, don't you think I've been stupid enough already? Throwing myself at two different blokes. I don't know about that. Yeah, but... well, I do. And that Maria was right. Any woman who's not brave enough to take control of her own life deserves everything she gets. You know, I've been sitting here thinking about how pathetic I've been. I mean, I nearly let two men ruin my life. Yeah, but that's over now. It's finished. You've got to get on with your life. Move on with yourself. Yeah, I know, and I intend to. But it won't involve staying around here. What do you mean? I mean the two near. The pair of them. Yeah, but that'll get better in time. People have short memories, love. Yeah, well, I'm not worried about people. I'm worried about me. I can't face going in that bar every day and putting a brave face on it. I want to get away from here as far as possible. What, you... you mean leave? Yeah, I mean leave. What, for good? And what else? Listen, tell Fred for me, will you? Hang on a minute, Jeannie, you can't just go like that. Let's talk about it. I don't need to talk about it. I've done enough talking. Well, at least stay the night. No, really, I've got to go. Listen, thanks. Because I know we've not always seen her to eye, but I do think of you as a mate, you know. Gina, let's think about this. No, because if I do, I won't go. What are you going to do? I don't know. Good looking girl like me. <laughs> Could do anything. Oh, Gina. I know one thing, though. It won't involve a man. have to take me for a drink, you know. I'm quite happy to cover the cabin for you while you're away. Listen, I need the practice because all you do on these cruises is eat and drink and fight off handsome young men with illicit intentions. <laughs> well, we can all dream, can't we? <laughs> Knowing my love, I'll end up with a cup of cocoa and Mavis after the last waltz. <laughs> Hi, hey, you two know how to do things in style. Uh, well, he didn't want to drink and drive. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, Emily and I will be all right because we're walking. Oh, well, you're all right going. It's coming back you need to worry about. <laughs> Cheeky. Right, bye. 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 Hey, you know... 
I'm sure I didn't leave my car like that when I parked it after work. You must have. No, I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> that wine was too good. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. It was a very good night. And it's not over yet. Oh, well, in that case... Gina! You OK? What do you care? Hey, I'm only asking. Yeah, well, you don't need to. Where are you going? I don't know. Whoever it is, it won't involve you. Hey, I was just about to do that. Oh, it's all right, I can manage. Uh, cases, man's work, Gif. <laughs> You're in a good mood. Well, of course I am. I'm going on holiday with a beautiful, fabulous oh, woman. Who's that? Tony Melton? Oh, you've seen right through me. No, I'm talking about you. Hey, I know it's been a bit of a rough week this week, and it's all my fault. Yep, no, no, it has, and I'm sorry. I know. I made a mistake, and, uh, well, I might make a few more. I doubt that. But I've got your best interests at heart. You do know that girl, don't you? Yes. Hey, stop snogging. It's disgusting. Cheeky. Hey, and I don't want none of your lip with your gran next week, neither. I don't need none. She's so soft, I can wrap around my little finger. I'm serious. And you can listen to this as well. Mum, can I at least get through the door before you start picking on me? Did you hear that? I'm not picking on you. D David, will you turn that off, please? All I'm saying is, will you be good for your gram while we're away? Yes, of course we will. Otherwise, yeah. we won't be able to do this again. Hmm, tragic. Hey, and remember, she's not as young as she was. And it's not just her looking after you this time. You got that? OK. I hope she's going to be all right. Oh, I wouldn't worry, love. Masters like Gina always land on the feet. She's done a moonlight flit after having a life threat by two blokes who said they loved her. She got no job, no home, no bloke. How do you call that falling on your feet? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, if you're putting it like that. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, love, I know I'm being selfish, but, you know, if Gina wouldn't run off, we'd be spending the day together, wouldn't we? Peter, that can't be helped. No, I suppose not. We'll have to watch you reading your paper some other day, won't I? Hmm. See ya. Hi, it's me. Are you busy? Now, that's the paper book. Now, is there anything else you need to know? I have worked here before, Norris. Oh, no, I, I appreciate that, Emily. But, you see, retail is a very fast-moving field and, and it's important we keep abreast of the latest innovations. Uh, now, no. customer interaction. We haven't done that, have we? No. Right. It's taken on the paper now, no, Emily? Oh, not quite. I, I'm covering for Rita. She's going on her cruise with Mavis today. <laughs> sure, that for sure. But, uh, did you mind? You're interrupting a very important training symposium here. You're not saying nothing else at all. Now, listen, as the customer enters the premises, I find the issue of a general greeting is much appreciated. Now, this has a two-foot... Oh, no, 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 Emily, I can't agree. You're not ready for advanced till work. Oh. That'd be week two at the very earliest. The nerve I... of some folk beggars belief. I'll say. I've just had that Diane Black on. She's off to America today. Well... Does she know you're going away too? She rang off before I could get a word in edgeways. But she, she can't. What, a, what about the, uh, the, the... Dog, Norris. Mm. The word is dog. Mm. Well, I'm still getting him. She's put him in a taxi. He's on his way now. That's nine ten, please. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thanks. Ta. Wine and nappies. It's going to be a wild afternoon in your house. Yeah, not for me. I'm working. On a Sunday? Well, you are. Oh, yeah, of course I am. No, uh, I'm just doing some extra study and I'm going for promotion. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I hope you get it. So do I. I've had my assessment day. That went really well, so fingers crossed, eh? Yeah, yeah good luck. Hey, tea bags, tea bags. Hey, mini shell portrait. Do you know, the ones our girl get are terrible. I like mighty. Strong enough to trot a mouse on hers and even go brown. Maiden's water. What? Oh, Richard, you gave me such a fright. Oh, that's what my dad used to call weak tea, maiden's water. Oh, really? Listen, I've got the ones you like. Oh, that's so thoughtful. Actually, I'm glad I bumped into you, Audrey. I just wanted to check that you're OK about this week, you know, looking after the kids. I'm fine. Really? Uh, not worried at all? Well, I was at first, but... You know, I found out that that music was Maria. No, no, oh, I didn't. It was such a relief, I can't tell you. I bet it was. And I've had no lapses since. I've remembered everything. 
Well, <laughs> as far as I know, I have. <laughs> oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. Because, you know, if there, if, there, if there was any doubt, I, I just wanted you to know that I know you're all right. Oh, thanks, Richard. Do you know you're a good one? You are, really. Oh, yeah, that's 150 and 1490, please. There you go. Think of us slogging away when you're lying by the pool. <laughs> I definitely will. <laughs> See you. Thanks Bye. 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 She's gone. Did you speak to any of the neighbours? Maybe she left a forwarding address. Bed's it. Nobody knows her. She... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap. You're upset. No, I'm not upset. I'm ashamed. How could you know what she was going to do? It's not your fault <sighs> Gina's gone. It's not how it feels. So what now? What can I do? Hmm? Feel guilty? Try and forget her. Try and move on. Getting a better class of customer. <laughs> it's a delivery. Don't dogs bark when they want some, eh? <laughs> oh, hang on, Jan. I need a favour. Oh, another one. Look, the councillor's sending someone round tomorrow. They want to see both of us or they'll chuck me out. I said you can tell them we're back together. I didn't say it's about being back together. It's only for an hour. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Look, Janice, you owe me. If you hadn't a barged in, I would have convinced them me and Kurt were a couple. No, you wouldn't. You would have beggared it up like you always do. I moved it along a bit. Please, Janice. I can't go back to that poxy estate. People hate me around there. Well, everyone hates you, so you'll feel at home. I told you that dog wanted some it. It's left you a message. <laughs> oh, no! Well, can you not dump Beth on your grandma when they've gone? Yeah, I reckon. Do you want to go to town? Oh, I might be meeting aid. Might be. Yeah! Oh, look, I didn't say out, I didn't say out. You sure won't be busy again? Look, he's not going with anyone else, right? Yeah, sure he's not. See you around. It's a little shit suit. Oh. Not that flaming little look. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Well, dog ownership does have some rather unpleasant responsibilities. Responsibilities, that's a joke. You need galoshes to walk the streets these days. Knee deep in muck there. Oh, come on, Mr. Wood. Uh, not so fast, not so fast. Twenty quid first. Twenty quid? Didn't she pay the fare at the other end? No, she didn't. She's pushing it, that one. We've only come from round the corner. Yeah, the fare's a fiver. The extra 15's for cleaning that lot up. That's what I charge puking drunks. It should be a lot more for that eight. Eight, Les, that's enough. I'm sorry. Norris, have you got 20 quid? <laughs> I'll pay you back. Right. Come on. Oh, Mr. Wu, come on. Oh, he likes I'm you, Lisa. <laughs> and I like him. Isn't he lovely? Yeah. What do you think? And David's got a check up at the dentist on Thursday oh, at four yeah. o'clock. Oh, no, I haven't have her. Yes, you have. And I want you to go quietly. That's just great, that is. Oh, he's got his sarky mouth back on him, I see. Is he settling in at school, is he? Yeah. You don't have to write this down, ma'am. There's not a lot to remember. It's OK, it's OK. It's just something to jog my memory. I'm just snipping out for a paper. Anyone want anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. OK. You seem a bit on edge. Do you? <laughs> You're not nervous, are you? Oh, uh, looking after the family for a week's too much for me, do you think? No, of course not. Just asking. Listen, Gail, I'll be glad of the change. I'm on my own far too much as it is. Look, take the heed no. about my lists. I'm looking forward to it. All I'm saying is a bit of notice would have been nice. We've been really left in the lurch. Folk will be queuing instead of sopping. Gina couldn't take any more. Don't blame her. Who should I blame, then? Is Gina not coming back, then? No, I don't think she is, love. Well, Gina's gone. Are you looking for bar stuff, then? I'll do it. we are top behind the bar, me. Oh, yeah, you'd be brilliant, Kirky. Hey, you could get us free drinks and all. <laughs> don't call me Kirky. All right, I was going to try it out. Well, I don't like it. Um, a girl I used to work with was asking about jobs the other week. Should I give her a ring, see if she's still available? Well remembered. First time that lad's ever sharpened her mind, I'll wager. He's been licking me fingers. Oh, do, do, do you want Emily to hold it for a bit while you wash your hands? Just get the drinks, Norris. Do you know, I feel terrible about leaving it in kennels, after all it's been through. It's only dying, moving to a new home. I think it's traumatised. Well, it doesn't look traumatised. I really should get to know it properly. Do you think I should phone Mavis, tell her I can't go? You 
couldn't do that. Well, what else am I going to do? Why don't I look after him? Oh, I can't let you do that, Emily. Nonsense. I'd be happy to. We always had dogs when I was young. You won't be any trouble, will you, Mr Wu? Do you really not mind? Oh, it'll be my pleasure. Oh, I can't see Norris agreeing with you on that. You leave Norris to me. You still pulling fires? Where's Gina? If I've told one person, I've told twenty. She's gone. Left. Resigned. Scarford. All right. I'll have a fart when you're ready, then. <clears throat> hey, it's busy, isn't it? Where's Gina? Get out of my way! Hey! Get that at home. Come in here to escape. Don't we all? Oh, God, tell me about it. Honestly, I think Karen keeps going on about wanting a foot massage. What man would she only use as a feet when the remote's broke? She's still not working, then? No, oh, not working. Not beginning to describe it. She's not moving. Apart from her tongue. Tell me about it. You Max ain't giving you grief, is she? No, no, not Max. But her mother's trying to help Ben. Not <laughs> another word, Norris. It's my house and he's coming to stay. Say hello to Uncle Fred. Generally speaking, I do not approve of canines on licensed premises, unhygienic. I had you down as an animal lover, Fred. Animals I love are on posters with dotted lines and prime cuts marked. There's no prime cuts on that. One could be arranged. Don't listen to the nasty men, Mr Wu. Shelley, did Gina leave an address with you? No, she didn't. Please, Shelley, do you know any way I can contact her? Well, why don't you try her mother? Or better still, wait for the phone to ring. But I won't hold your breath, you know, because I reckon she knows she's well shot. Bounce you into doing any of his jobs. Make sure he does his shirt. And Sarah? Are you watching television or listening to our conversation? Oh, it's a good job I am writing everything and why? You won't believe it. There's something on my list I've forgotten to do already. I'll be two ticks. Oh, yeah, well, I wouldn't if I were you. I've just gone out. <laughs> Look, never tease an ex-mother-in-law. That is a well-known saying. Well, if it's not, it should be. What can I do you for? I just wondered when you're going to be free next week to give me a hand with the kids. My kids? Yeah, of course your kids. Oh, you don't know, do you? What? Oh, this is very awkward. Gail and Richard are going on holiday today. Oh, are they? Right. Nice to be told. No. It's all very last minute. It's a friend of Richard's from the council. He's got a villa in Spain. I'm sure she meant to tell you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure she was. I only knew myself on Friday. Mm, so when were they going to tell me? When they got back? <sighs> and in answer to your question, no, I can't help you next week with the kids. I'm busy. Oh. Oh. It's weird us being outside, isn't it? Uh, not really, no. Well, you know what I mean. We usually spend all our time indoors, don't we? No, <laughs> we usually spend our time together in bed. You're not complaining, are you? No, I'm just complaining we're not in bed right now. Hey! 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 Hey!
these, don't want to. I'll get these for you. Is that all right with you? Thanks, Mr. Carter. That's very good of you. You can buy us a drink, as long as you don't want Ted tells for it. Of course he does. His type don't do anything for now. I'm going to say, what else would I want? I don't know. An alibi. Fizz, will you hold that point, Lou? Yeah. Hey, you can have anything you want off me. Kate won't mind. Well, he won't know. <laughs> oh, ow. I am sorry, you know. It's not really me that needs an apology, no, is no, it? No. I'm sorry I've made you think bad of me, and I'm sorry I've lost your trust. I know I deserve everything I'm going to get. Don't take it too hard. I don't think Janice meant anything by it. Oh, yeah, she did, all right. Shove up. Hey, time in. Joe Carter's getting around in. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm working, aren't I? Well, what are you doing in here, then? Torturing himself with smell of beer. <laughs> Listen, Kirk. You might have to find yourself somewhere else to live. Janice won't do it. Why not? Because she's a poisonous reptile who won't be happy till she's seen the back of me. Right, well, I've already seen the back of you, and now I'm trying to sort it that I don't have to look at the front neither. Move. I knew it. You won't be happy till I'm off this street altogether, will you? If it means that I can come in here and have a really nice, quiet drink without you shouting down me ear all, then, yeah, yeah, I do. I'm wasting my time here. Hey, it's not just Les who'll have to move. What about my Kirky? Yeah, what about me? Don't call me that. One of the old stuff. Pretty soon. Hi. Hello. Is there any chance we could get the place to ourselves tomorrow night? Um, I doubt it. I think the brand will be hanging around. I've just been telling Gail, I think I put my foot in it with Martin. Oh, we didn't tell him. No, it's not your fault, then. No, of course not. Look, we'll get him a bottle of sangria or something. I thought you'd gone for a paper. I lied. I didn't get one. I got it with this. Oh, for me? No, no, it's not necessary. Of course. I mean, it's the least I can do. Come on. You know, we really appreciate you looking after the kids. Oh, well, thank you. Come on, we'll crack them open <laughs> now and have one, right? Go on, then. You all right, love? Where have you been? Are you all right? I was really worried about you. Yeah, sorry, I tell you what, I'm going to have to pack them fags up. So, listen, love, have you found the coppers? No, she won't let me. Well, why not? I think she's in shock. She just wants to go home. <sighs> I didn't see the faces, did you? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Well, there's not a lot the police can do then, is there? I mean, they were too quick for her to see what they looked like. Well, it's up to her. How did they get much? Money, cards, photos, everything you find in a bag, except her keys, luckily. Yeah, scumbags. This'll be fair. Hey, listen, uh, are you going to be all right to travel on your own? I'm just a bit shaken up. I'll be fine once I get off, I expect. OK, all right. Come on. Here you go. Here. Take that for your taxi fare. £20? I can't take that. Yeah, of course you can. Look, how else are you going to get home now? Come on here. here. Oh, thank you. Uh, look, give me your address and I'll, I'll post it straight back no, to you. No, there's no need. Forget it. It's fine. No, it's me that's been mugged. There's no reason you should be out of pocket as well. Just give it a... Thanks again, love. You and your husband have been very kind. Listen, we were just doing what everybody else would have done. <laughs> I don't you believe it? Okay. Well, take care. Thanks, mate. Husband. <laughs> okay. Funny tummy tablets. Yes, Norris, I've got everything. You're like a stuck right, record. I'll do it. I know it's just right. You're right, I do need a holiday. Oh. I shall be needing one soon, too. Oh, oh not because of Mr. Wu. Oh, not him, no. Oh, him. There you are. Kiss him goodbye? Well, I don't normally on a first date. Oh, come here, let me have him. 
You say goodbye, I'm little baby. <laughs> now, now, don't worry about a thing. I won't. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. I will. Bye yes. bye. Bye 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 bye. Is there anything else? I was thinking about what you were saying about Gina. If you ever wanted to talk about it, I'm... Thanks. I'll bear it in mind. Um, or we could go for a drink. Uh, I think I've had enough of the Rovers, don't you? Oh, it doesn't have to be there. I thought Look, we... Sunita. What I've been saying about Gina the past couple of weeks... Yeah? I shouldn't have unburdened myself on you. It's what friends are for. No, I know, I know. But you know how much she meant to me. Right, but I was the one that ruined it. I'm going to have to live with that. I don't want to have to talk about it as well. Okay. It's good of you to ask, but it's not your problem. You work in my shop. So thank you for being a friend, thank you for looking out for me, but I've really got to take care of myself on this one. And don't try getting your grand babysitting every night. You make me sound like a right user. Well, you are. Oh, uh, he's annoying me already. You are not a user, my darling, and I wouldn't let you be either. Oh, Richard, now, thank you for those chocolates. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> thank you for everything else. You know the memory oh, business. You are a friend. Right. Not a friend, Audrey. Family. Oh. oh, talking of memory, that reminds me. Uh, two seconds, Gail. Oh, no. no. Where's he gone? I don't know. Come on! Get him! <laughs> I'll See phone ya. you when we get there. Oh, lovely. Right. You got everything. What have they got for without these? Oh, is he? I asked you three times about those. Good job it wasn't just twice. I'd have left them. <laughs> <laughs> that smell? Hey, don't you start. I've just cleaned it. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. So, have your plans fallen through, then? Mm, something like that. Gran, will you keep an eye on Bethany for us? She'll be asleep for ages. Where are you going? Forty. Oh. See ya. But don't be long. Do you think my mum will be OK? She'll be fine. She's got her list. Made, have you? What sort of list? The list! A reminder of what I should be doing. No. Oh. See you. Go. Look, you haven't seen the list I made, have you, Sarah Lovey? Grant, you've already asked me this. Oh, have I? You see, I don't even remember doing that. Well, you will remember to take Bethany to the crash, won't you? Yes, I shall. Oh. You know what I'm glad about? That you didn't catch them two fellas. Because what would have happened? Well, they'd probably beaten seven bells out of me, wouldn't they? I'll tell you what, love, I'm glad I didn't catch them two fellas. Still, I think you're really brave for going after them. My hero. Hey. It's just one thing I don't get. You said all this happened in Bolton Lane? Yeah. Well, what were you doing there in the first place? Oh, well, there's a bookie down there I sometimes do business with, love, that's all. Oh, right. OK, then. Right, I'll see you later. See ya. You've um, got a fancy man you're meeting and he's taking you to my posh? No. Nope. So why are you all dressed up then? Because I felt like it and I'm fed up of slobbing about. I'm going to get a magazine. We'll be quick. I haven't got all day, even if you have. And this is where Norris works. You remember Norris, don't you? Who lives with us. And what if he says no, he doesn't? Does that mean I'm out on me ear? I don't know why you have to be so hostile. Mr. Wu's only with us for a couple of weeks. You're right, Emily. Oh, <laughs> you got a dog, look, Steve. Are you gorgeous? Yes, you are. <laughs> He's a Shih Tzu called Mr. Wu. <laughs> well, you're not having one, so don't even think about it. Yeah, you tell her, put your foot down. I oh, know, be left looking after it, that's why. Cleaning up day and night, the number of germs a dog like that carries doesn't bear thinking about. <sighs> Taxi, lovely. I'm sorry to have left you on your own. Oh, it's OK. Yeah, I made a list of everything I've got to do, and now I've gone and lost it. Oh. 
Tell you something else that you've done. Oh, no, what? No harm done, but uh, somebody did leave the tap on. What here? Oh. Mm. Mm. That must have been me. I know it was me. Oh. I wasn't going to tell you this, Maxine, because I thought it was just a passing phase, but I honestly think I'm losing my grip. You know, either I'm doing things and I don't remember I've done them, or I think I've done them and I haven't. Oh, we all do that. I mean, you know, I'm forgetting things all yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. No, it's different. I mean, you, you know this Alzheimer's thing that people talk about? I'm just wondering if it's the start of that. Oh, hey, you seem all right to me. Yeah, well, I seem all right to myself most of the time. Anyway, I've uh, got um, another appointment. Mrs. Benedict, 11 o'clock. You will tell me, love, won't you, if you notice anything. I mean, like the tap and anything like that. Yeah, yeah, of course, well. Yeah, well, I'm just going to need someone to keep an eye on me. Right, you, make yourself scarce, and I'll try and persuade her Janice has moved back in. She won't believe you. <laughs> she was here, you was trying to convince her you were into fellas. Yeah. Well, I'll tell her I went off you, and Janice has, like, reconverted me. You said you were days off. I am, which means if I go into the station now, I can swat up for my inspector's interview. I've only got till Friday. Well, what about my meeting? Well, what time's that? Three o'clock. Yeah, well, I'll be back before then. Curly, how are you doing, mate? I'm fine. I've got to be there for three. We've always been good neighbours, haven't we, eh? Doing one another a good turn. And we did put a stop to them rats like you wanted. Well, you shut up about them. What do you want, Les? It's just the councillor still talking about throwing us out because our Janice has gone. Only, you being a councillor and all. That's housing. That's got nothing to do with me. Oh, come on, mate. Oh, I'm sorry, Les. I'm not voting for you again. You told me you never voted. No, but if I did, then I wouldn't. I'm a bit early. It should be 11. Uh... Uh, no, Blanche, no, I've got Mrs. Benedict at 11. Well, you should have me, you know. I made the appointment last week. Who did you speak to? You. Or oh, somebody that was your spitting image. Maxine, Mrs. Benedict? Yeah, she's the one that rang this morning. So why have you put her in instead of me? I haven't put her instead of you. There's nobody booked down. So have you got me some other time? Uh, no. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Blanche, I'm sorry, you must have made a mistake. I must have. And why not you? Well, there was nobody down for 11. I know that. What I'm saying is there should have been, and it should have been me. Oh, never mind, I'll go somewhere else. Oh, she'll have got mixed up. She'll have probably gone somewhere else to make her appointment in the first place. Oh, it's me again. That's what I was saying. My mind's going. Oh, you decided to come then? Yeah, of course I did. I told you I'd applied. Yeah, and I told you, you're wasting your time. You know, she'd never done this job before. None of us have one so far. Ten and all, love. No, I'm not doing it. I'll just go and tell Mr Carter that you're in. Look, I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just saying that I thought this job was for somebody who could do it, not somebody who can't. Oh, and I bet you've already told him I can't, have you? No, no. Have I said anything? Not that I've heard. Uh, Miss Sullivan. Hiya. Now, Joe, this is my flatmate, so make sure you treat her nicely. Yeah, all right, I will. Thanks, Fizz. See? I'm not going to tell him the truth about you. He can find out for himself. <laughs> Come to Rovers. And, uh, what truth's that, then, love? <sighs> well, I was just going to tell you that I've not really done this kind of work before. So I'm not experienced like your advert wanted. OK, well, uh, perhaps you've got other qualities that are more important, eh? Mm, that's what I was hoping you'd think. <laughs> Shall I come in the office, we'll have a chat. Mm. Oh, uh, Blanche, uh, let me get you a drink. Go on, then. Vodka and tonic. Only don't look at me hair. No? I should have had it done this morning. Only silly Audrey Roberts has gone and messed up her appointments. She doesn't even seem to know what day it is. Oh, oh dear. And uh, she's got that family of hers on her hands all this week, hasn't she? Oh, I wouldn't like to see the mess there, then. I'd say she's hardly up to looking after herself. No. Yes, love? Oh, uh, 
Uh, vodka and tonic, uh, Shelley, please. Oh, Blanche, guess he's living with a hero. I can think of some people you'd have to be a hero to live with. No, uh, me, Peter, yesterday. Saved a woman from two muggers. Oh. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. Sit down, love. How did you get on? Yeah, pretty good, I think. He's all right, isn't he, once you get talking? Yeah. What, did he not test you on a machine? Well, no, I'd already told him I won't be any good. Didn't have much choice, did I, after what you'd said? Well, there was no point in you lying. Do you want a drink, love? I'm going by. Oh, yeah, can I have a white wine, please? <laughs> so, I, I don't want to be nosy or anything, but did he say he got the job or not? Well, he hinted I probably had, yeah. <laughs> hinted? Never mind hinted. What did he say? He said he's got one other person to see, and then he'll let me know. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. Do you want a drink, love? Let me get you one. No, no, I'm all right. Better. Yes, yeah, so Can I have a dry white wine and the same as what we had yeah. before, if you can remember? I think you can remember that, love. Uh, the woman from the council's coming round this afternoon. Is she? So, I'll probably be almost by the end of the week. Well, they've said they'll find you somewhere else. Right. Top of one of them town blocks down on Weatherfield Hall Estates. Them that's half boarded up. Still, be right out of your way there. Two o'clock, she's coming. There you go, love. Oh, right, please, Shell. Oh, oh. oh, now, we were talking about you oh. saving some woman from a gang of thugs. No, it, it weren't a gang. I, I never said it was a gang. Yeah, it'd be better if you didn't say anything, love. Well, I want to. And they recorded it on one of them high-up cameras, and we'll all be able to see it. Yeah, well, I doubt that. Anyway, it sounds like you were the good Samaritan when one were needed, and I admire that. Well, thank you, Archie. Yep, come in. What? I've uh, come from interview. Uh. Ms. K. Phillips? Yeah, Phillips, that's, uh, was my maiden name. Oh, right. Very smart. Well, I thought if you knew it was me, then you wouldn't... you wouldn't see me. Do you know something? You're dead right, Karen. And, uh, what do you think was going to happen when you got here? That I wouldn't recognise you? <laughs> no. No, I just, um, I thought that you'd give me the same chance as everyone else. Karen, you had a better chance than anybody else. You had a job here. Yeah, but I haven't now. Yeah, because you blew it. Look, I still think that I deserve a fair hearing, right? Now, all I'm asking is that you just carry on and pretend that you've never seen me before, right? Ask me any questions that you want, and if you don't like my answers, well, then I'll get lost. <laughs> School at 16 with three GCSEs and a swimming certificate. Right, any foreign languages? Well, no, because what would I want to do that for? <laughs> Karen, I have no idea. But then I've got no idea what you want to do this for, either. So uh, ask me why I want this job. <laughs> I know why. Because no one else would give you one. OK, I uh, want this job because I feel it's what I'm best at. And I've tried lots of other things. Only this is the work that really suits me. So uh, why'd you get sacked then? Hmm? Well, you know why I got sacked. Yeah, but if this was a regular interview... Oh, right, OK. I got sacked because I was stupid. And uh, you weren't as stupid as what I thought you were. Oh. Oh, compliments. <laughs> anyway, I'm the best machinist you'll find. I mean, you've got to agree with that. I mean, ask me about my last job. OK. Tell me about your last job. Well, I was working in a furniture shop, selling sofas, only, uh, well, I didn't really like it because there wasn't enough scope for me to use me. Ah, what's that word? Initiative? No, well, initiative, but... Um... Judgment. Well, they just told me what to do all the time. Oh, so uh, they sacked you and all, did they? No. <laughs> I mean, they probably would have done if I hadn't walked out. <laughs> nah, I couldn't have took another day working with them posh types. <laughs> I mean, they just punting around like God's gift. All they're doing is selling overpriced rubbish to punters with more credit than sense. Yeah. Yeah, we should have seen you there. Yeah, well, I'm glad you didn't, because I hated it. Anyway, then I thought about this place, and 
well, this is where I want to be. I want to be back with my mates. Give me an ad, Jamie. Well, no, because I won't do that. I mean, you were new before, weren't you? You know, everyone was trying it on. OK, fine. You've been honest with me. I'll be honest with you. How do you think it's going to look, Karen, if I take you back after all that's happened, eh? Well, that you, uh, you don't hold grudges. Mm -mm. That I'm soft. That when I say something, I don't really mean it. OK, look. Forget everything else. You're right. The only reason I'm here is because I need a job, and this is the only job that's going for me. And also, I can't pretend that I'm something that I'm not. So it's up to you. Come in, Belinda, love. Make yourself at home. Thank you. I know you're going to be surprised by what's happened. Me and the wife getting back together. I was surprised myself. Mr Battersby. Uh, do you fancy a drink? No, thank you. Mr Battersby, last week you tried to persuade me you were residing here with Mr Sutherland. Kirk! No, 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 look. You got the wrong end of the stick. He was just a pal I was putting up for a night or two. Well, that wasn't the story you were telling then. And now it's another story that your wife's moved back in while I'm sorry. But it's true! You knew she were about. She turned up while you were here. Yes, and made it perfectly clear that the two of you were separated and she was living elsewhere. Yeah, and next day, back she comes, begging me to take her back on her knees. So I said, yeah, go on. And we've been as happy as pigs in muck ever since. So where is she now? Uh, out at work. Sonny me. Oh, hello, love. Les said you might pop round. As I told you, I'm back. Well... I tried to live without him, but I couldn't manage it, could I not, eh? Uh, no. We had a bit of a falling out do last time you popped round, but everything's all right now. Normal service, eh? Yeah, it's what I've been telling her. So, uh, what, what's going to happen now, then? You're not going to throw us out of her own home, are you? Hi, right, Curly, all right, mate? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Yes, Martin. I'll have coffee, please, Roy. Ah. So, I'm just after the planning committee meeting, and this uh, arcade is definitely on the agenda. Excellent. Mm, sounds like there's some conspiring going on here. Mm. I'll leave you to it. Uh, Martin? Hiya. Could I, uh, I just have a word? Well, go on, then. It's, um, it's about Audrey, you know, and what she's taken on with these kiddies. Oh, look, before you go any further, she didn't have to. I would have done it, but, oh, no, no one mentioned it to me, did they? So, if you're suggesting I should be over there helping out, then don't bother. I can understand Good. that, even so. I, I know you wouldn't wish Audrey any harm, uh, or that any harm should come to these kiddies. I'll report back on what I've found and you'll be receiving a letter confirming our decision. But I'm going to be all right, aren't I? I'm not going to be kicked out. We aren't. Uh, we? We aren't going to be kicked well, out. Well, it's not up to me personally. I'll have to refer this new information, but yourself and Mrs Battersby shouldn't be unduly worried. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Belinda, love. I'll see you again, eh? Bye, love. <laughs> you little beauty, you played a blinder! Right, well, now I hope you know I don't want you thrown out your house. Of course mm. I do. Hey, wh where are you going? Back to work. Oh, right. Look, let me take you out tonight, eh? No, thank you. Just to show me gratitude. Les, it's one thing not wanting you kicked out your house, but I do not reckon that me and you should be having nights out. Goodbye. Well, hi. Everyone all right? Yes, thank you. Good. Hi, Martin. And how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Well, not according to Archie, you're not. Oh, what's he been saying? Um, everything. So now I'm going to take over for now, and then he's going to be coming round later and he's going to be taking you out for a wild night of gin and tonics and salted peanuts. Look, there is really no need. Now, don't start telling me that or I'll change my mind. Oh. You scared me to death. I don't think so. Um, look, I've just come to see if you've made your mind up. Oh. Do I not even get a sleep on it? I'm the best machinist you're going to find. I mean, what else matters? Uh, what will people think? Effect on morale? What will Mike say? I'm not going to come back like I've won. Or like I've got one over on you. I mean, I'll, I'll be so quiet you won't even notice me. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Kevin. Please. You'll be on probation, you do know that, don't you? Yeah, and for as long as you want. So, uh, I'll start tomorrow, shall I? All right. 
Go on then. Right. Mm. Oh, well, I think I'll have an early night. Would you like to let Mr Wu out for five minutes, or shall I? Oh, I'll let him out. <laughs> Just so long as I don't have to let him back in. Come on, Mr Wu. Let's leave grumpy old Norris and get some fresh air. Oh, charming. Well, you really aren't helping matters. Dogs are quite capable of sensing when you don't like them. Yes, and human beings are quite capable of sensing when dogs don't like them. Come on. This way. <laughs> there we are, look. 40p change. Thanks, Betty. Hey, and I believe your son deserves a medal. <laughs> yeah, perhaps you're telling me. Saving a woman from being attacked. You must be very proud of him. I am, actually. Oh, oh this looks suspiciously like a council of war to me. <laughs> it is, yes. Sit down. Well, I'm not so sure about council of war, but it's a chance for me to apologise. I've told you, you don't need to. You see, the thing is, I promised Roy that I'd bring up the issue of the amusement arcade this afternoon at council meeting. But the agenda, it overran, and I uh, never got a chance. Which wasn't your fault. Well, no, I know, but... So, you... what do we do now? Well, we have to wait now till next week. But presumably, whoever's behind it has to wait as well. I mean, they can't do anything until they've got the licence. No, they can't. Well, let's just hope whoever it is doesn't like waiting gets fed up and looks somewhere else. Mm. Uh, hope and pray. Which I do every night. Well, why does she do it? Janice? Yeah. Obvious. She still cares, doesn't she? Who for? Me. All right. Only she won't admit it. Because women don't like admitting when they've been wrong. And she was as wrong as you can get when she left. Hi, was it, Les? Yes, please. You're a good-looking woman, has anyone ever told you? Mainly after they've had a few, yeah? Yeah? Well, it's true. So why don't Janice come back to you? Pride. It's a big thing with women. In it, shall eh? Pride, a big thing with you women. Well, we like to think so, Les, yeah. Pride's the only thing keeping her away. <laughs> oh, hi, Betty. Hi, yeah. Hi, Betty. Uh, whiskey and soda and gin and tonic, Betty, Come Coming up, love. Uh, Martin didn't mind you asking him to babysit, did he? Oh, of course he didn't. Nice chap is Martin. Yeah, I suppose he is. Plus, I explained I needed to have a serious word with you. When we're sat down, I'll tell you what it is. Come on. There's a good boy. Move, 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 move out the way. Now, look. Look, I've had enough of this. Move. Get over there now. Oh. Emily? Emily? Look, I suppose you think this is funny, don't you? Getting an elderly lady out of her bed? Well, it is not. What on earth's the matter? He, he, he won't let me past. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, it, it's not my fault. I didn't ask to have a dog in the house. No, you made your feelings very clear, just as he's making his clear to you. Come on, there's a good boy. You see, I, I, I just didn't want to step on him. Of course you didn't. Poor Mr Wu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two plates, please, Betty. <laughs> OK, well, so what's this surprise, then? I uh, got a job. Yeah? Well, guess where? Royal Marines. No, Underworld. You back there, are you? Yep, yeah, um, cheers. Okay. I went in, made him give me an interview, and then I said, forget what's happened, am I the best person for the job or what? And this was Baldwin, was it? Uh, no, it was uh, Joe. So, yes, that's tomorrow. Yeah, and great things about you. Oh, yeah. No, all lies, that. <clears throat> no, they're not. You saved somebody from a violent attack. Well, yes and no. Look, to be honest, I'd, I'd rather we all forgot all about this, please. Well, we're not going to. <laughs> Certainly not, no. I want you to go and see a doctor. No. Look, it's not because I think there's anything wrong. Well, then. But because you're doing nothing but worrying. And worrying is making you ill. Now, you see a doctor tomorrow, yes? If it's bad news, like it was with Alma, that's supposed to stop me worrying, is it? Are we going to fall out? Well, I hope not. Yeah, OK, 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 I'll think about it. Never mind about thinking about it. You'll go and see a doctor. All right, yes. Good girl. Uh, 
shoe. The shoe, get out of the way. Look, I've got to go and do the papers. And if I don't do the papers, you know what'll happen? It'll be chaos, and it'll be all your fault. Oh, Emily, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Did we disturb you? Just a little, yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Good boy. There's a good boy. Oh, good boy, my foot. He had me Let's trapped. Let's go through here. Then Norris won't be frightened, shall we? Yes. <sighs> no. What? I think I've just received what's generally called a speeding ticket. You have? Let's talk. But, but I haven't been speeding. I just don't drive like that. Well, that's what they all say. Winds away. What would I be doing on Winds away? Breaking the speed limit by the looks of it. Wednesday the 9th of October. Have you caught you on one of those speed cameras? Yes, that's, that's what they're saying. Yeah, but that's a week ago, isn't it? That's when I got my car back from the garage. Oh, don't ask me about cars. I'm one of the few people in this country who walks to work. 48 miles an hour and a 30 mile an hour limit. I'd never do that. Well, not knowingly. Oh, well, I'm going to challenge it. I am. I'm not paying that. Karen? Well, yeah, she can do the job. I just thought, you know, give her another chance. I thought you told me that you wouldn't take her back for all the tea in China. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, uh, well, this time she swears she's going to be able to. Lady. And you believed her? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I did. And they said they'd pay me anything I wanted to, pick me up every morning, chauffeur driven limo. Only would I please come back because you were missing me, something around. And well, I said, yeah, you know, I'll uh, keep me hand in until I find something better. Hi, Mr. Baldwin. Morning. Should I go on the same machine as before? Yeah. Same machine as before, same big mouth as before. Uh, I'll have a word with her. Yeah, I think you should. Archie wants me to see a doctor. Well, it can't do any harm. <laughs> Can it do any good? Well, at least you'd know. Oh, uh, knowing's a good thing, is it? Alma knew. She knew for long enough what was coming. And I don't remember it making her any happier. Anyway, if I have got this Alzheimer's thing, I mean, they can't do anything about it, can they? So what's the point? <sighs> no, I am not going to a doctor. But don't you go telling Archer that. I'll tell him I've made an appointment, right? And then if he asks again, I'll say they're doing tests or something. Anyway, wait long enough. We're going to find out anyway, aren't we? Hmm? Sit down. He won't be long. He's just nipped to the news agents. Well, if you don't mind, cos I could just give you the money. Oh, no, no. <laughs> He'd want to see you. Always told me all about it. Oh, it was a knight in shining armour just when I needed one. <laughs> I'm sorry I stared when you opened the door, but I was expecting the lady who was with you the other day. <laughs> lady who was with? Oh, I don't know what her name was. She didn't say. <laughs> but she was very helpful, too. <laughs> you sure I'm not in your way? No, no, not at all. Would you like a coffee while you're waiting? He's coming. Oh, don't go. I won't. All right. Yeah, fine. Sounds like it. So, come on, then, what have I done? Nothing. Well, you've only been avoiding her and not even ringing or texting her. What do you think you've done? Well, I'm here now. So, make the most of me. No classes to go to. Candice, I know you have your my drama class, which is just about to start, so let's go, shall we? Yes, sir. And you too. Well, we're going, we're going. And keep going. Hey, show you something. Do you know what this is? It's a key. It's a Barlow's car. It's not. Want me to prove it? All right then, love, I'd bet. Hi. Oh. Visitor for you. You came to my assistance the other day. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm pretty well recovered, thanks to you. Oh, well, I know. Come on, I won't say thanks to me, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're all right. I I'm sorry to call and announce like this. No. But I had to come down this way, so I thought it was an opportunity for me to give you your money back. Thank you. Ah, no, hey, come on, you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, I think I should. But I wanted to thank you again. I, I don't know what I'd have done without you. Look, I'm just glad I could help you, that's all. Anyway, I won't take up any more of your time. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee. Oh, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. 
Bye. Bye, Bye. Thank Bye. you. Well, can you believe that? I thought I'd see this again. Nice of her to call. Yeah, it was. Who was the lady you were with? When? When you went to that woman's rescue, she said you were with somebody. Oh, yeah, no, there was a woman turned up just, uh, just after me and she looked after her and then she got her a cab. She said you were with her. Yeah, well, I wasn't with her, was I? She got that wrong. I mean, come on. Mind you, that's not surprising, the state she were in, love. I tell you, I don't think she knew what she were doing. <laughs> Is that what she said, honest? <laughs> that I was with some woman? That's what she said, yeah. Can you believe that, eh? I don't know. You, you, you go to somebody's rescue, you look after them, then she comes round your flat and she tries to drop you in it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, that. <laughs> Oh, I've forgotten what a rotten, boring job this was. Oh, well, you don't have to come back this afternoon, do you? Oh, I think she does. I think she's in the same boat as the rest of us. Uh, who is? I'm just here till it suits. Well, we all are, in a way. Yeah, true, Ailey, but the difference is... Well, I can come and go as I please, can't I? Cos I went, and now I'm back again. And I'd say I can do that any time I feel like it. <laughs> Karen, can we have a word? I'm a, I'm a dinner hour. It's all right, it won't take long. Right, I'll leave you to it. See you across the road. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you over there. <clears throat> What's going on, Karen? What? I have heard nothing but you showing your mouth off from the minute you walked in this place this morning. Yeah. Banging on about how we've had to persuade you to come back. And how you can come in and out whenever you feel like it. Yeah, no, that was just me. And the truth is... You begged me to give you this job. Yeah, begged me. Which I did. On the condition there'd be no more of this mouthing off. Yeah, well, it's hard, isn't it? What is? Oh, having to walk back in here and face my mates. After all the stuff I said about, oh, uh, I'd be glad to leave because it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I get it. So, uh, all this this morning, that was just what? Play acting, was it? Well, yeah, I suppose it was. Right. Okay. Well, as performances go, it's not going down too well with Mr Baldwin, which means I am getting it in the neck, Karen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Because from now on, I want what you promised. That's good behaviour, fitting in and getting on with your work, all right? And if I don't get it, well... I will take great pleasure in making you the first person in the history of this factory to get sacked twice. Oh, yes. You want some? It's better than that. It's a letter from the housing department saying that all their inquiries have been concluded and they're happy that me and Mrs Battersby should retain the tenancy of Number 5 Coronation Street. <laughs> so Janice is moving back? No. So why has it said that? Because we pretended she did, didn't we? Oh, so they've got it wrong, then? They got it wrong because we meant them to get it wrong, didn't we? Oh, put your shoes on, I'll buy you a drink. Archie! Oh, oh, can I get you a drink? Uh, well, I'll have a pint of bitter, please, sir. Oh, there you are. Pint of Archie. Thank you. Uh, now then, mm -hmm. have you done what we said you were going to do? Uh, about seeing a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, I rang for an appointment, yes, and they can't fit me in until next week. Oh, well, you've, uh, you've taken the first step. That's what matters. All right. I have just read her the riot act, so we'll see what happens, shall we? Not a lot, knowing Karen. Oh, well, I've got more faith in her than you. Well, seeing as I've got none at all, that wouldn't be difficult. Yes. Oh, uh, quite a bit, sir, and uh, another one for Mike. Thanks. Are you there? Um, have you decided about the job yet? Only, I was wondering if you wanted me to start this week or just wait till Monday. Look, I'm sorry, love, I should have got in touch. But he's offered it to someone else? Yeah, uh, just a question of experience, you know, she'd done a job before. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I see. Look, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm sure you'll find something else. No, come all the way around here if you want, we're desperate. <laughs> yeah, only you'll want someone with experience as well, won't you? Well, it'd be nice, but you don't have to have. I mean, you can learn this job in a day. Well, there you go. This could be a big chance, you want it, don't you? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, go on, of course you do. Right. When would you like her to start? She can start as soon as she likes. <laughs> you can start today, right? Yeah, well, I could. <laughs> right. That's it, then. You just got yourself a job now. Let me get you a drink to go with that. Mm. Yeah, they are, my love. Hey, you know we were looking for a new barmaid? Yeah. I think I found one. 
How do you manage that? Two pints when you're ready, Betty. Look, please. I'm ready now. Good girl. Okay. Jan, can I get you one? No, I'm all right, thanks. You're going to tell her about the letter? I doubt she'll be interested. Hey, no, no. What we'll tell her? We'll tell her the council still aren't sure and that they might still be going to throw us out. Neither. Never mind, you just agree to what I say, OK? Yeah. Because it's like I told you, I think deep down, Jan's anchoring after coming back. Well, we'll give her a bit of help. Orange juice, please, Betty. OK, love. Um, you know how you've given our Karen a job, eh? Yeah. Why? Oh, blimey, even her husband thinks it was a lousy idea. See you back out with it. Right. No, I mean, why? Because uh, when I asked you to give her a job back, you said there was no chance. Yeah, well, it's um, just that we wanted someone who'd done the job before, you know. And Karen happened to turn up at the right time and, uh, well, she talked me into it, mate. <laughs> Working here is a bar, mate. Yeah. Which I'd rather do any day than work in a sweaty old factory. All oh, right. You think what we do is a rotten job, do you? Are you hearing this, Karen? Oh, well, she might be right. Well, I don't think being a bar maid's anything to write home about. Oi, if it's what she wants to do. Which it obviously is. Congratulations, Maria. I think you'll be too much. Thank you, Hayley. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get back. Already? Yep. Oh, somebody's changed. Well, people do, sometimes for the better. Jan! Jan, love. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, only, uh, I've had a letter off the council and they're still not convinced you're back with me. Oh. That woman that came, well, her boss wants to come round on Friday and check us out for himself. No, Les. No way. I am not going through that pantomime again. It, it, it's our wedding anniversary. It's eight years since we turned up at that registry. I know office. that. All right, then I'll come round. But listen, this is pretend, right? Don't want you getting any daft ideas. I shan't. What time? Oh, uh, no, they didn't say. I I'll let you know. Right. Well, this is the last time. I'm not making an habit of it, right? Yeah, it will be, it will be. See ya. Did you see how she changed her mind when I mentioned our wedding anniversary? She didn't seem too keen, though. That's because, like I told you, that's her pride making her like that. Deep down, she's desperate to come back. Thanks, Alsha. What be a tea? She's lying. I beg your pardon? There is no appointment. In fact, she said she's not even going to go and see a doctor because whatever they're going to tell her, she doesn't want to find out. Oh, dear. Archie. <coughs> Martin. Uh, Martin, have you a minute? Well, let me get a drink first. No, no, before she comes back, it's, uh, it's about Audrey. Oh, I. Well, I uh, made a promise to see a doctor, you see, and uh, she told me that she'd made an appointment. But. but uh, she's lying. Uh, ah, right. So, what do we do about that? Well, funnily enough, I was already thinking that maybe I should move in while Gail's away to take the burden of looking after the kids off her. Well, I think perhaps you should, yes. Mm -hmm. But don't tell her I've told you about the doctor, otherwise she'll never speak to me. <laughs> or me. Right. Anyway, maybe she's right. Maybe she's not ready to see doctors yet. It's got to be her decision, you know. OK. So, listen, you take over across the road. You keep an eye on her at work. And I'll, well, I'll, I'll wine and dine her a bit, you know, try and cheer her up. You'll never believe this. But, uh, guess who turned up this morning? No idea. Only that woman we looked after who got a back mate. No. Yeah. Nipped out for a paper, I got back, and there she is. She sat on the settee talking to Shelley. Why, though? What was she doing there? Well, she said she wanted to give me my money back. Hey, you can remember that 20 quid I lent her? Yeah. Only, of course, while they're waiting for me, she's been sat there talking to Shell, and Shell only wants to know who's that woman I was with. Oh, uh, yeah, can you uh, lay me £50 off on Jubilee Dan at the 340 at Lingfield, please? Hi, Shell. You all right? Yeah, I'm just, uh... Oh, oh, sorry. I'll see you later. Right. OK, look. See you. See ya. Right, I'm back. So, what did you say? Oh, that's brilliant. I just said, uh, no, no, I wasn't with anybody, but I went, oh, yeah, yeah, um, there's a woman turned up just at the same time.
Right, and Shelley believed that? Yeah, of course she did. Anyway, listen, if I can get away tonight, do you fancy doing something? When will you know? I'll now demonstrate. No! Close it! You want to come for the ride? No! Agent, get out of there. Somebody's going to see you. Wait here. Shan't be long. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't talk to you earlier, love. Oh, it's all right. I've done enough talking. So, are we, uh, we doing anything tonight, then, or what? Oh, sorry. No, I'm going to have to work. No, honest. Well, we've taken on a new barmaid, haven't we? That Maria from the salon. Hmm. I'm going to have to show her the ropes. Hmm. Oh, well, can't be helped, I suppose. Could always put the bar up, though. No, I think I'll just stay in tonight. Nice telly. Oh. OK. Hang on! Uh, no, no, no. Don't you be taking your coat off, cos you're not stopping. What? I've just been shouting you up the street and he just sailed on, ignoring me. Oh, I've got a lot in my mind, Marty. Yeah, well, that's why I'm here. Look, I'm going to take over this family of delinquent kids so you can get yourself home and, and put your feet up. Oh, no, I'm not so sure about that because it was me promised Gail. Yeah, well, I don't care. You're going, so come on, pack your stuff. Yeah, but what are you doing here, though? I'm just waiting for somebody. Who? Aid. It's Aid, isn't it? And after all you've said about him? Candice, I don't have to tell you everything. Fine, be like that. I'm going. I'll see you tomorrow. You might if you're lucky. Get out! The name's Schumacher. Aid Schumacher. Oh, come on, just get out. Quickly! No props. Loads of time. Well, no, perhaps not quite so much time as we thought. Come on. It's OK, stay cool. So what are you two doing here? Uh, nothing, sir. All right, well, you shouldn't be here now, so off you go. You couldn't give us a lift, could you, sir? Afraid not, no. Off to the old bus stop, then. Wish I had a car. So you think Shelley believed you? Oh, I know Shelley believed me. Well, she acted like she did. <laughs> Shelley doesn't act. Well, that might just mean she's a very good actor. OK, suppose she didn't believe you. No, no, listen, listen. Suppose she didn't believe you and she followed you. And any minute now, she is going to come knocking on that door. Well, she's at work. Ah, that's what she told you. Nah, no chance. Not Shell, no. Well, she's honest, is she? Yeah, she is. Not compared to you. Oh, compared to somebody else I could mention. I, I, I am not lying to anybody. Yeah, but I only lie so I don't hurt her. Oh, yeah, cos it's for her sake. Yeah, it is for her sake. Suppose she finds out you've been lying to her. Which she is going to sometime. <sighs> yeah, she is. Because things like this can't go on forever. I mean, you nearly got found out this morning when that woman called her out. Yes. Yes, but you wriggled out of it. Well, you know, maybe one day you won't be able to. What's gonna happen then, eh? I mean, is this really worth it? <sighs> Sorry, not very good, are they? We'll do. Yeah, you can only get better. Right, that's 220 then, please. I think you found it's 360. Oh. <laughs> I think she'll be all right. I'm sure us male clientele all think so, especially when she gives them that cheeky little smile. They won't notice what she's serving them. Well done, Maria, love. You've a talent. I say you've a talent. Uh, you've taken it like a duck to water. Well, I know I'm making a few mistakes, but everyone's being dead nice with me. Well, they will be. Yes, Norris. This is a dog-free zone, isn't it? Yeah, why? Have you got one you want to bring in? No, I've not. I've got one I'm trying to get away from. I, 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 have you seen this dog that's taken over our household, stinking the place out? Uh, yeah, called Mr Wu, I believe. Not by me, it's not. Uh, Norris, can I get you a drink? What? Oh, yes, yes, half a bit, please. Oh, what can I get you? I have a half bitter and a red wine, please. Oh. How have you got behind there? Just started tonight. Good for you. <laughs> Uh, called him on Kevin to make sure no one had taken the car for a test drive and he checked and said they couldn't have done. You're just going to have to pay it. Yeah, I suppose I am. Doesn't mean I'm happy about it, though. They don't send you speeding tickets to make you happy. They send you speeding tickets to make you stop speeding. Yeah, well, thanks for pointing that out. Actually, I've got a confession to make. 
I'm going to be shocked. Mm, you may be, yeah. I haven't made an appointment with a doctor. That was a lie. Oh. I just didn't feel I wanted to, Archie. Not yet. Well, it sounds to me that you've done the best thing. <laughs> if you don't want to see the doctor, then you mustn't do it. But I promised you I would. Ah, because I made you. <laughs> now, forced promises don't count. Ah. Anyway, how have you been today? I mean, any more uh, little problems? No. No, I've been fine today. I have, yeah. <laughs> Smashing. So what would you want with a doctor anyway? So, um, you just walked up to him and asked for your job back and he, he, he just give it you? Well, no, I had to say a little bit more than that. Like what? What does it matter? Well, see, when I asked him for your job back... Yes, Steve, I heard. And so, come on, what are you saying? I mean, what am I being accused of? No, no, better not be. You asked me one more time what I did to get my job back, and I'll jack it in. And then we'll go back to living on your money. What you're saying is we should quit while we're ahead. No, what I'm saying is, and today proved it, is that sooner or later this is all going to end in tears. No. No, because you could just as well say that today proved that we can handle it. Because I handled it this morning. I mean, yeah, I was a bit shocked when I walked in and I saw Mrs. Thingy sat there, but just meant I had to do a bit of ducking and diving, that's all. <laughs> Be honest, you really enjoyed it. Well. Yeah, you did. Well, it got the old adrenaline pumping, that's for sure. It's not just me you want. It's the game, isn't it? The danger and nearly being found out. Maybe. But if you're asking me, do I want this to carry on, the answer's yeah. I don't see why I should have to make myself scarce. You will if you want to carry on living here. In fact, you'd better stay out all night, just in case. I could let slip to Janice that the housing department actually wrote to say that they're not going to wrestle us anymore. You wouldn't. Well, why shouldn't I? When she came round here the other day and we pretended we'd got back together, I reckon she enjoyed herself more than she was letting on. I know her. I know how her mind works. Deep down, she wants to get back with me. Blimey, me. they're even more cunning than what I thought they were. So that got me thinking. If only we could get her round here for a repeat performance. So you've cracked on that the council are coming round again just to get her round here? And when she does come round, I'll be waiting. Like the spider waits for the fly. Yeah, but when the housing fella doesn't turn up, she'll know that you was lying. Aha! By then it'll be too late. I'll have turned on the old Battersby charm. Got a drunk, you mean? Let's put it this way. She won't be able to resist my charms. I've got a nasty feeling that... What? I don't believe this. I've got another one. Another what? Speeding ticket. That's the second one in a week. You want to watch you don't lose your licence. Yes, well, I'm well aware of that, Blanche. The thing is, I haven't actually been speeding. I've never broken the speed limit in my life. All right, there's no need to bite my head off. Are you sure it's not just a reminder for that one you got the other day? Yeah, different day, different time, different place. Well, then it's a mistake. It's got to be. Yeah, well, you're dead right it's a mistake. Well, I'm not paying this one. You can ban me. I can't get my head round it. What? Me washing up? <laughs> no, you've been here, like you live here. Well, do you like having me here? I do. Yeah, of course we do. Good, because I like being here. Dad, can I have some money for the school trip? Oh, mm, how much? Just a couple of quid repair rest on there. Do you? Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. There you go, all the way up. Are you checking up on me? No, no, I just thought you'd welcome a bit of a helping hand. Well, we're all done, aren't we? Let me finish the washing up. No, no, it's done. Well, I'll dust about a bit. I don't want you to have to do everything, Martin. Audrey, I've told you. I like to help out. Hey, have you seen these, David, arguing over us? Oh! Uh, and you two better be getting these gates on. Come on. Although, actually, I could do a nipping back to the flat. Change some clothes, you know. Go on, then. You do that, and I'll do some tidying up. All right, then. I'll see you later. All right, my love. See you later, kids. See have a good you. day. Now, have you brushed your teeth? Yes. Have you washed behind your ears? Yes. Yeah, right, go off, then. See you. Oh, Gran, I nearly forgot. Um, can I have some money for my school trip? Oh, yes, of course. Where's my purse? Oh, absolutely shattered. Snap. Hey, and it's all your fault. Hey, you can't help it. It's teething. Oh, no. 
I could have done with a good night's sleep, though. Oh, what's one of them? I mean, normally I'd be able to stagger through, but I can't be really sharp today. Well, it was today. Norman? I'm only joking. Hey, Mummy's got a big interview today with all the top policemen. Yes, he has. You're very chirpy for someone who hasn't had any sleep. I think I'm high on nappy fumes. Look, don't worry about the interview. You'll walk it. Do you know how many people are going up for this job, Norman? You passed the exams with flying colours. The assessment day went very well. You said so yourself. Yeah, I know, And but... it's not as though you haven't been putting the hours in. I'm still nervous, though. I mean, I hate interviews at the best of times. I just end up saying really stupid things I never normally dream of saying. Well, they're very lucky to have you. I think you'll, you'll do very well as an inspector. Thanks. Well, well. He's lazy. He's gone to work. Uh, you know, I'm having to take time off my work so that I can come round and see that fella today. Yeah, well, it's not a good cause. No, it's not. I don't like lying. Not about me and Les. I've a good mind to phone him up and complain. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, it might get him my five bags. I could I could say to him, I feel like I'm being victimised. Well, you don't want to aggravate him up, though, Mrs. Brie, or else he might never leave us alone. You'd think they'd have something better to do, wouldn't you, than go around snooping on folk all day? Well, they've got to, haven't they? People do all sorts of pull the wool over their eyes. Oh, shut up. Look, I know that you and Aid were up to something at school the other day, so you might as well just tell me what it is. It's nothing. We weren't doing anything. Liar! I'm not. So why were you so keen to get rid of me then? We, we just wanted to spend some time on our own, that's all. How can you lie like this? You're meant to be my best mate. Yeah, I am! So what's the big secret then? I wish I could tell you, but I can't. So there is something. You admit it. Yeah, but I'm sworn to secrecy. By aid? Yeah. And this stupid secret is more important than our friendship, is it? Oh, Candice, it's not as simple as that. Yeah, well, that's the way I see it. I'm walking to school on my own. Oh, Candice! Wait! Right, I'll see you later then, yeah? Mm. I'll give him a kiss from me when he wakes up. Will do. Good luck. Thanks. I might have a word with Curly. Yeah, just uh, go through. I thought you might like to hear the latest development. The arcade? I've just seen a workman inside the shop. They weren't unloading fruit machines, were they? No. No delinquents hanging about outside waiting to get in? No, but surely they've got to get planning permission before they start altering the premises. Well, yeah, well, maybe it was the new owner tidying up a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, of, of, of course, you're right. I... Just had a, had a bit of a nasty shock, that's all. Yeah, well, let's hope the prospective owner gets one when I put the case to the planning committee. Come on, Mr Wu, good boy. Come and see your Uncle Norris. I can assure you that overgrown fireball is no relative of mine. Don't be so mean. Poor little thing. Vicious little thing, more like, trying to bar me from freely moving about my own home. He can sense your hostility. That's why he growls at you. Oh, don't credit him with intelligence. He has a brain the size of a pea. I'm sure if you'd just spend a little more time with him, the pair of you would get on like a house on fire. I I'm not a dog person. I never have been. I never will be. Nonsense. Now, I'm going to leave him here with you. While I go into town. You'll, you'll do no such thing. It, 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 it's unhygienic. He won't move off his bed. What, 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 what if he wants to spend a penny? I can't leave the shop. He could just go outside. What, what, what if I want to spend a penny? I can't leave him down here on his own. Look, it won't be for long. I'll be back in an hour. Counting the seconds. I think she'll pass muster. Oh, she's very keen to learn. I'm not frightened of hard work. Popular with the lads as well. You're going to stand there gawping all day, or do you want serving? You were saying? That's her brother. What are you doing here? I'm working here. Since when? Since a couple of days ago. So, what do you want? Pipe, please. Hey! And the same for me. Your Janice came round this morning threatening to phone up the council. She never. Don't worry, I'll talk to her out with it. But she's not happy, Les, and she'll be even less happy when she finds out the truth. You leave me to worry about that. So, uh, do we get a discount, then? <laughs> no. Ah! Lager wants changing. I'll do it if you want. Do you know how? Of course I do. Not difficult. Hey, he's a bit handy, him, you know. Hey! Are you still all right for this afternoon, then? I suppose so. Although I'm not happy about it one little bit. It feels all wrong. Just do it like you did last time, love. 
You played a blinder. I can't have, can I? Else they won't still be sniffing around. Anyway, it can't be that hard pretending to be married to me. You've had years of practice. That feels like a very long time ago. And I tell you, I won't pay in. Pay? Hey? Joe Carter reckons he's going to dock my wages if I clock out early. And it's not fair that I should be out of pocket. Fair enough. What time do you want me then? Four o'clock suit. Right. See you then. I'll look forward to it. Shh, shh, shh. I've only just got him down. I'm sorry, but uh, he's been crying all morning. At one moment, I thought it was something serious. So I took him over to the medical centre. It's uh, just his teeth. Right. Uh, <clears throat> you didn't get the job, then? No. Nope. I'm sorry. Can't win them all. What really bugs me, though, is gave the job to Simon Harper. Who's he? Oh, well, he's the only the most bone idle copper in the unit. I think of all the hard work I put in, it's like it doesn't count for anything. Norman? Did you hear Ben, then? No, I, when I went for the interview, I was so psyched up, I thought, I really deserve this. No, I definitely heard him then. He's fine. Anyway, they started off with the questions, and I, I sailed through that I'll bit. have to go and check on him. Norman! And you better get dressed. He'll be here any minute. I am dressed, Janice. This is all part of the plan. What plan? Ah, what's we all candles? Have you had a power cut? It's like you were saying in a pub. If they believed we'd got back together last time, why are they coming back again? Look, if they rumble us this time, tough, you'll just have to move out because I can't cope with all this lot. I know, I know. So what better way to have them think that we've rekindled our love than to have them walk in on us? That's it. I beg your pardon? Look! Wine on the table, blanket on the ground. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to work out what we've been up to. So come on, get your kit off. <laughs> no, no, no. My claws are staying firmly on, Mater. In fact, I've got a better idea. Summit that'll make us look really like husband and wife. Oh, yeah, what's that? Why don't we have a blazing row? Hey? Yeah, I could make it even more realistic by giving you a thick ear. Dan. Oh! Oh, the memories are flooding back. I managed to get him down again. Good. But we're out of Calpol. Dev sells it. Oh. So, you were saying? Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. Go on. No, you're not interested. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're not interested in my job. Let's put all this on. Oh, I'm sorry, Norman, but I was really upset when I came home. I really needed to talk to you, and you were just miles away. I was listening out for Ben. No, Norman, whenever I talk about my job, you just glaze over. Our son was in pain. What do you expect me to do, ignore him? No, no, I know that, Norman, and I love him just as much as you do, but... Do you know what? Sometimes you use him. Use him? Yeah. You use him to compete with me. What? You do. It's like, um... Oh, sorry, Emma, I, I can't talk about your bad interview because I've got a teething baby to look after. Oh, and I gave up a really important career in retail management. What? You act like you're hard done by. I'm a house husband. I'm also a counsellor, and it's hard work. Yeah, and so is being a copper and a mum. Oh, and we know which one comes first, don't we? <sighs> oh, and out comes the cloven hoof. Yeah, but just... <laughs> Your turn, I think. Happy? I'll be happy when all this is over and done with, and I can go home. Where is he, anyway? Should have been here by now. He's, uh, he, he's probably got held up. You know what they like. Look, why don't you sit down? I've got some cans in the fridge. Oh, no. I don't want a drink. Go on. Help you relax. You don't half look tense. Of course I'm tense. They're sending some bloke round to snoop on us. Yeah, but the more laid back we are, the more it looks like we're at home with each other. Yeah, I suppose. I, I'll get the cans. Spark out. Hit him with your truncheon, did you? You're glad I didn't get this promotion, aren't you? Oh, stop being 
ridiculous. No, well, you obviously resent me working. I think I've been extremely supportive of your career ambitions. Yeah, at the expense of your own, so you resent me for it. <sighs> Those are your words, not mine. Well, I'm sorry, Norman, but that's how I feel every time I come home after a hard day. All this, all this, just because I wasn't upset enough about your interview. There'll be loads more jobs that come along. Oh, yeah, of course, every day. I don't know why I'm being so stupid. Um, and maybe, just maybe, I was a, a little bit relieved that you're not moving on to a more responsible position, which would mean you're spending more time away from home than you already are. We should have had this conversation 12 months ago, Norman. Oh, sorry. We did, only I was under the impression then that you wanted to give up your job and look after Ben. And I was under the impression that there'd be more give and take on both sides. I make sacrifices and all, you know. Don't think they don't notice that I don't want to work overtime or bank holidays. Oh, I see. So I'm a hindrance to your promotion plans, am I? No. Well, why don't I just give up the council altogether? <sighs> You're twisting things now. I mean, why work with the community when I can stay at home and I in your uniforms? Oh. There's no point in talking to you. Yeah, that's right. Go on, go down the pub with your workmates. Tell them what a lousy husband you've got. And while you're at it, ask them how many of them would give up their work and stay at home and look after the kids all day. No, 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 now listen to me. I am an extremely careful driver. Now, is there someone who can investigate this for me? I've had two tickets in less than a week. Go on, Ken, you tell them. Doesn't he speak lovely when he's angry? Well, no, no, if that's all he can do about it. Bye. Great. They make a mistake. I have to get a call. Surely not. Yep. They will not discuss individual cases. But that's scandalous. Absolutely. And I'm going to make sure it's well publicised. I mean, how many more innocent motorists are there out there being victimised like this? You know, Ken, if you have put your foot down in a built-up area once or twice, you can tell us. We won't hold it against you. No. It might make you more exciting in my eyes. Right, so you two think I'm guilty as well? Well, I can't see them making the same mistake twice. Yeah, well, that's what they want you to think. Yeah, but they photograph the car, Ken. That's how they get the registration number. Maybe there's two cars on the road with the same registration as Ken's. No, no. Oh, it was definitely your car they caught speeding, Ken. <laughs> It just wasn't you behind the wheel. So who was it? Is it all right if I go out for a bit? Oh, come on, your tea's going to be ready soon. I'm only going to be half an hour. Oh, yeah, and who's going to look after Beth? Well, I thought you might be able to. Oh, come on, I really need to talk to Aidan. Go on, then. Thank you. Hi, Dad. Uh, oh, you, want a word with you? What uh, you know what about? Me and your grand do talk, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. We do compare notes, so we both don't turn up at the same time, we don't buy two lots of bog roll, and we don't pay for your school trip twice. Oh, that. Yes, that. So, come on, cough up. How come you weren't in school? Did you miss me? We were out joyriding again. What happened? Aidan, do you know how much trouble you'll be in for if you get caught? That's the thrill of it. Come on, you have to admit it's exciting. There is nothing exciting about nicking cars. I don't need cars, and it one car in particular. But why have you got it in for Mr Barlow? What has he ever done to you? It's top entertainment. He doesn't even know you're doing it. Yeah, but he knows about the speeding tickets, though. What? Well, I nick his car, and as soon as I see a sign for a speed camera, I put my foot down. Are you kidding? Can you imagine the look on his face when he gets a speeding ticket? He doesn't know why or how. OK, you've made your point. Can you stop it now, please? Why? Because it's illegal. So? And it's dangerous. You're not even old enough to drive. Look, this is really starting to bug me now. I wish I'd never told you. If you get caught... I won't get caught. Aidan, if you care about me and you care about how I feel, then you'd stop it now. Well, I don't care about you. And I don't care how you feel. So why don't you just give my case, yeah? Look, I didn't mean to say that. It's just, uh, I hate being told what to do. It makes me want to do the opposite. Sarah, I'm sorry. Sarah. You haven't borrowed my car in the last couple of weeks, have you? Uh, no, why? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm just collecting out straws. Why, Jeff? I can do it borrowing it, because mine's in for a service. Do you want another one? You never said you could change a barrel. There's no great skill to it. You know, you're wasted on them toilets. Actually, you're not, because you do a really good job there as well. Mm, I'm always happy to take on additional duties if you're short-staffed. Oh, you're very kind, but I won't want to take advantage. Hey, you only have to say. Well, I suppose I could promote you to cellar man. Stroke cleaner, stroke pot man. 
General Dog's body, you mean? Uh, senior General Dog's body. Oh, I like the sound of that. Mm-hmm. Oi, oi, I was here first. Yeah, all right, keep your hair on. You just completely ignored me. No, one ever. I just thought... Oh, you just thought you'd ignore me and serve the blow? Hey, look, please don't argue on my account. Uh, is everything all right? Well, I'm standing here waiting to be served, and then he appeared, and she looked right through me and served him. Well, he wasn't deliberate. Just a sec, love. By all means, flutter your eyelashes at the lads. But the lasses are customers too, even if they don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Good. There you go. Steady on. I don't want to be slurring my words when that housing officer finally gets here. This will look good, this. You sitting at home, chilling out with your husband. Except it's not my home, and you're my ex-husband. <laughs> not in the eyes of the law. In my eyes. Well, that's where me and you differ, innit? You see, I'm what they call a one-man woman. <laughs> I'd take that as a compliment if you'd said it right where. But it's true. There's no other woman comes near you, Jan. Maybe it's time they tried. They've tried. Plenty of them. I'm not interested. I'd sooner die alone. <laughs> if the fags and booze don't get you first. <laughs> You're like an addiction to me, Jan. I can't help myself. Do you know what? I had a feeling you were going to get all nostalgic on me. Well, I can't help how I feel. Les. It's all in the past, mate. You can't keep dragging it up. Where is this blooming housing officer, anyway? It's not in the past. I can't help how I feel now. I can't stop thinking about you. I dream about you. Maybe you should wake up. I've tried. I've tried to move on. But every time I see you, I'm back under the spell. Oh, Les. What do you like? You waiting for Sarah? She can't come out tonight. She's looking after the sprog. Oh, so you've got no one to play with. We're not joined at the hip, you know. We're both free agents. That's not the way she sees it. She's mad about you. Just one of my many adoring fans. <laughs> you don't half fancy yourself, don't you? Just don't beat around the bush, that's all. I'm surprised you and Sarah aren't off on one of your secret adventures. What's she been telling you? Oh, everything. Oh, yeah? We've not done anything. Look, what's the big deal? I can keep a secret. Can you? Well, you see, the thing is, me and Sarah, we're very close like that. We can tell each other anything. And I thought me and you were close. Not in the same way. Not intimate. We could be if you wanted to. Yeah? Forget your caprices and your Naomi Campbells. Janice Battersby is the only supermodel in my book. <laughs> What, what, what are you doing? I'm going to phone the council and find out where this blooming housing officer's got to. Never mind that. Sit back down. He should have been here hours ago. Yeah, but we're having a nice time, aren't we? It's all right. We've had some good times in this house. Yeah, and some very bad times. We don't have to pretend we're back together, Janice. We can do it for real. Les. Hang on, hang on. Hear me out. I know what we agreed about what happened before and what wasn't going to happen again. But I feel like the old magic's still there, and deep down I think you feel the same. We meant for each other, Janice. I love you. I, I always will. This housing officer, he's not coming, is he? Well, now... Let's just give me a straight answer, please. No. He doesn't exist, does he? No. You've made it all up just to get me round here. Yeah. Right, with me coat. Janice. No, I do not want to wear it. But, Jan. Les, I've told you, I don't want to wear it. Look, it's no good you telling me how much you love me and how much you want me back, cos it doesn't mean out. Not while you start lying and scheming and plotting your stunts. You know, it's exactly this kind of behaviour why I wanted shot to you in the first place. Jan! This your lunch, then? Yeah. Awful having to work on a Sunday, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I'm quite glad to get away, really. Me and Norman have done nothing but bicker all weekend. I got passed over for that promotion the other day, but it seems like it's only me who's bothered. How do you mean? Well, I think Norman's quite relieved, really. do not want me working longer hours. He's always seemed very supportive about your career. Yeah, that's what I thought, but... These days, he seems more concerned about how many nappies he's changed. Oh, this flipping arcade. He's only talking about his work, same as you. Yeah, but this was important. I worked hard for that promotion. Yeah, Norman 
Someone's worked hard to give folk round here a voice. Good job someone thinks that's important, eh? Morning. Didn't you? Four rushes or five. No, I'm not hungry. Oh, but we always have a fry up on a Sunday. You know, you make us sound like some old married couple. Can't you eat on your own? Well, that seems worth it, making a fry up just for one. Yeah, well, then you know how I feel. I'm facing a whole life of fry ups for one, I am. I don't get you. No, I don't expect you to. You're just a kid. You don't know how it feels to be knocked back by the only woman you've ever loved in your life. Yeah, you know, it's not worth moping, is it? You've got to look on the bright side. <sighs> what bright side? Well, for one thing, if you and Janice had got back together, I'd have had to leave, wouldn't I? But as it is, I get to stay. Hello. Right, Audrey, all right. Now, listen, I've been thinking I could move back in today, if you like, give you a break. Are you sure? Yes. Got nothing else on, so I might as well. Anyway, they're back tomorrow. Oh, are they? Mm. All right, well, maybe it's a good idea, then. Well, I could stop now. I can always get my stuff later. All right, then. OK. Now, don't you two go running rings round your grandma, OK? Well... Mm. All right, catch you later. <laughs> See, See you. Then. See ya. <laughs> Grand. Yes. Can I have yes. me spend? Oh, right. Um, David, you got them a couple of days ago. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm off to Simon's. Yes. Ah, hello, Candice. Hiya. I'm just wondering if you wanted to come out for a bit. Oh, Grand, is it OK if we can go out for a couple of hours? Only I've not seen Candice all weekend. Uh, well, you can see her here, can't you? Oh, yeah, but it's not the same, though, is it? And I spent all yesterday in the house. Yeah, well, you're just going to have to spend a bit longer because there's nothing in. I've got to pop to the shops. Grand! Look, I won't be long. Goodness me, I'm only just through the door. It's grand, this, grand, So what have you been up to? No, oh, nothing much. I'm glad you came round. I thought that you might be avoiding me. Well, why should I? Well, because I didn't tell you what Aid was up to. It's not that I didn't want... Oh, you mean about nicking Bella's car, don't you? It's all right. Hey, Tommy himself. Thanks, Emily. Oh, Thanks very much. Hi, Shirley. All right, mate? Hi, mate. Hey, fancy pint later? Oh, well, I'd love to, but Emma's at work and I've got to look after Ben. Mm. Hey, listen, you don't fancy popping around for a can later, do you? Yeah, I do. All right, I'll see you later on. Cheers, mate. I look forward to that. Right. Just a paper. Thanks, Emily. Right, Cheers, thank you. Um, I, I, I could do with you out here, Norris. Oh, well, I'm busy. <laughs> well, I don't see how. Post office isn't even open today. Oh, there's a lot of paperwork to be done. Uh, just those. Cheers, Emily. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Les. I've been better. <laughs> What's up with him? Oh, he's sulking, isn't he? He come on to me the other night and I told him what to go. You got to admit, he's got staying power. Karen, the Thank trouble you. with Les is he thinks he's got pulling power, but he hasn't. Well, you've got to feel a bit sorry for him, though. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Bye. I just don't understand why he told you, that's all. It made me swear to keep it secret. Well, maybe it's because he knew I'd be cool about it. Oh, and what's that supposed to mean? That I'm not? Oh, come on, you're having Lara Croft. Oh, and you are. Well, at least I don't have to be persuaded to bunk off school, and I certainly don't have to go running home to a kid every ten minutes either. That is so unfair. Listen, I don't want to fall out about this. All I'm saying is, he's well out your league. Why don't you just go back with Todd? Anyone can see he's still mad about you. So I can clear the way for you? You don't have to. Look, I'd rather you heard it from me first. It's dumped you. He's going out with me now. Well, if it wasn't you in the car those times, then it must have been somebody else. It's the, it's the only explanation. Yes, but there was some damage in that case. I mean, hot wiring a car leaves a right mess. Well, it was somebody with access to a key, then. Which could only have happened when the car was in the garage. Yeah, but I checked with Kevin. The car wasn't test-driven then. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of a test drive, more of a, a joy ride by your star pupil. Oh, not that dog again. It's not my fault. I didn't bring him. He brought me. Oh, he's gorgeous. What's his name? Mr. Wu. <laughs> We're looking after it for Rita while she's away on holiday, more's the pity. Oh, you don't like dogs, do you, Norris? <laughs> I can't stand them. <laughs> did you have a bad experience with one when you were young? I did, actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd be about seven, and I, I was just walking along, innocently playing with me yo-yo, when this massive dog jumped out from behind this bush and snapped it off. It, it, it was terrifying. Oh, must have been. 
Kevin said he hadn't put a foot wrong all week. Yeah, but Kevin doesn't necessarily see everything, does he? Oh, come on, it must have been him. When you look at all the other things he's done. Yes, well, I like to think we've gone beyond that. <laughs> well, you might like to think it. But... Look, credit me with some judgment, Deirdre. A few weeks ago, I would have said, yes, that's typical of him. But now, I honestly think I've got through to the lad. And I don't want to break his trust by accusing him of taking my car. You're just trying to wind me up. Because you're jealous, that's all! Because you fancy him somewhere wrong and he's not interested in you! Oh, isn't he? Well, that's not the impression I got on Friday. He was well up for it. Have you been trying to get off with him behind my back? He was the one that was doing all the trade. Oh, you liar! More like you threw yourself at him! You're a right slapper, you! Well, you can talk! At least I didn't give it away when I was 13! How? You're just making all this up. Aid would never do that! Shows how much you know. Well, if you don't believe me, why don't you just go and call him yourself and find out? I will! So, how's things, then? <sighs> Not brilliant. No? Emma got passed over for promotion. Ooh. And ever since, she's been blaming me for it. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, that's women all over. You say nothing, they accuse you of not caring. <clears throat> you give them some sympathy, they tell you you've been patronising. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or in Emma's case, she actually accused me of being secretly pleased. I mean, I was gutted for her. Of course I was. And like I told her, I said, well, look, at least you've not been demoted. At least you've still got a career. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? Well, yeah, why not? Well, it's hardly the most tactful thing to say to someone that's just found out they haven't got a job. Rubbish. I've always been right behind Emma. She knows that. I gave up my career for her. Hang on a minute. What's all this about giving up? You finished work because you wanted to be at home with Ben. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, well, that's hardly any great sacrifice, is it? Well, no, I suppose not. Sounds to me like you're jealous. What? Oh, come on, admit it. You give your IT to be out there again, like her. Heal. Heal. Will you heal? No, 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 no. My heal, you stupid mutt. <laughs> Are you all right, Norris? No, I am not. Oh, cute, isn't it? Well, I, I wouldn't do that. It'd have your arm off. No, it wouldn't. Here, do you want a treat? That's it. <laughs> you greedy little thing. So, what's up, girls? Candice reckons you're seeing her now. It's not true, is it? I'm seeing her, yeah. And I'm seeing you and all. And I'm seeing that lamppost down the street. And that postbox over there. Hey, will and... you just stop acting daft and tell me straight, are you going out with her or not? Um, not. You liar! What about Friday? And what about it? God, you're like a couple of kids, you two. He loves me, he loves me not. Well, boring. Look, just tell us which one of us you want. Why not play a game? Like, do or dare. OK, I dare both of you to meet me on Enshaw Street by the canal about 11 o'clock tonight. And then what? You'll see. OK, you're on. Sarah? You know I can't stay out that late. See you later, Candice. See you later. Hi, sir. Oh, hello, Ed. Looking forward to half term. Yeah, I'm going to have a great time. Good, good. Oh, sir, I just wanted to thank you, you know, for work experience. I had a great time at the garage. Well, from what Mr Webster said, you did yourself proud. I have to admit, I was pretty pleased myself. I think it was a really productive week. Mr. Wu seemed to be getting on a lot better. Oh, he's quite a nice little dog, really. It's just a matter of knowing how to handle him. <laughs> oh, hello, Emma. Hi, hello. <laughs> oh, I saw Ben this afternoon. He's growing, isn't he? Oh, tell me about it. Can't buy clothes fast enough. <laughs> and he's bright, too. He saw Mr. Wu the other day and said, Dog, plain as anything. Is he? Well, actually, it's more like Olga, but it amounts to the same thing. <laughs> um, you haven't got any of those plain uh, chocolate truffles, have you? Oh. You treating yourself? Treating Norm and he's a sucker for them. Yeah, well, I'm sure we've got a box here somewhere. Uh, At least I, I thought we had. I, I, I think I might have sold it earlier. Well, don't worry, I'll just have uh, the mixed box, please. Oh, he's a doggy do, is he? Oh. He's as good with dogs as he is with babies. <laughs> it's so it seems. <laughs> That's uh, £3.80, please. Great. There you go. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. 
know, I said you two would bond if you just made the effort. Oh, it's not a matter of bonding, it's a matter of being firm. You see, he now recognises me as a pack leader. Really? Oh, yeah. Hiya. Oh, hiya. Sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. Are oh, you all right? No, go on. You must be tired. Well, you must be an all. I was going to have all this cleared away before you got home. I was going to have a nice meal cooked for us, ready and everything, table set. Best laid plans, eh? Yeah, I know. I've only just got him down. I think he's cutting another tooth. Poor thing. His gums are red hot. Oh. Look, got you these. What's this? I'll have the milk. You can have the plain. Oh, you're making me feel worse now. Why? Well, this is the sort of thing I should be doing for you to make you feel better after that interview. Oh, Norman, you do plenty. Do I? It's just that I feel like I've been a bit hard on you recently. And I'm jealous the fact that you've got a life outside these four walls, even though you didn't get the job that you really wanted. Oh, forget about that. I'm over that now, anyway. Listen, why don't you forget the cooking and I'll get us a nice takeaway and we'll have a nice bottle of wine, eh? What do you reckon? That sounds great. Gran? Yeah? Is it OK if I go out for a bit? Where to? Candices. It's only early and Bethany will wake up. She's flat out. Go on, then. Thank you. Is it OK if I stay out a bit later? I mean, I've not got school tomorrow. <sighs> well, I suppose. Be back by 10.30, though. 10.30, that's early. Not in my book, it's not. But... No, 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 no buts. Do you want to go out or not? Oi, you're not in the hairdressers now, you know. You're here to pull pints, remember? Oh, get out the road. Hey, Maria, can I have a two pints live, please? <laughs> Oh, I've been thinking. What if it's Peter? What? Peter, who's been taking the car. I mean, you said yourself he asked to borrow it and you refused. Maybe he's taken the spare keys out of the drawer when he's been round. So now you're saying my son's a criminal? No, I'm not saying that. I said borrow, not steal. I know it's not Peter. I asked him anyway. Can we just drop the whole thing, please? Pardon me for breathing. Mm. Norris told me that Ben said dog the other day. Well, yeah, something like that. Well, why didn't you tell me? I did. Really? Mm-hmm. Been a bit obsessed with work lately, haven't I? Well, it's understandable. So tell me, how did you get on today? Didn't anyone say anything to you? Yeah, a few people said hard luck, but mainly it was smug looks from all the blokes who resent me being a sergeant anyway. I mean, what do I have to do? Grow hairs on my chest? Oh, no. Anyway, I've bored you with that enough already. Your career is very important to me, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about this weekend, Norman. I was just disappointed. I shouldn't have taken out on you, though. That's what husbands are for. I should have been more understanding anyway. Yeah, well, I didn't really give you the chance, did I? And I wasn't being very supportive about the arcade. It's not important. Yes, it is. Sunita was right. Why? What did she say? Well, she just said that you really fight to give people a voice around here and... Everyone really appreciates it. Really? Yeah, so they should. I'm dead proud of you, you know. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Oh. Oh. Maybe we should call it a day anyway. I'm bushed. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tidy this up in the morning. Last orders, please. Fancy another? Yeah. Okay. You're right. So so. I just thought you might be sulking. That's all. You know, trying to prove a point. If I was doing that, I wouldn't have come here, would I? I'll leave if you like. Don't be so daft. Les. The other night, I, I weren't being mean or out. I know. It's just that... You don't I... care for me anymore. I know. I got the message. That's not true. I might not feel like that for you, know. But I'm still fond of you. Yeah? Of course I am. I 
would he eat it if we couldn't be friends? I, I don't know. It's hard for me, this, you know. Yeah, I know that. But by moving away, you know, we're going to have to come to some kind of agreement. We can't carry on like this. I mean, the other night. We're getting on fine until you sprung that on me. Les, if I thought that you were being straight with me, we could enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I reckon. I mean, we've, we've loads in common, haven't we? We've got the girls. We both like going out and having loads of beers and a bop and a laugh. Yeah, well, there's no one I know better than you, Jack. I don't want to lose that. Well, neither do I, Les. So let's be good mates, eh? Yeah, makes. Right, see you later. Yeah, cheers. See you later. Oi, are you going to serve me or what? Yeah, in a minute. All right, what can I get you, lads? What's the point in having a flipping sister as a barmaid if she won't give you three pints? <laughs> I thought you'd got four. Oh, yeah, very funny. <laughs> You've cheered up, haven't you? Yeah, well, I've just been talking to Janice. And the only reason she got upset the other night was because I sprang it on her. I don't want to know what you both got up to. I'm talking about when I told her I loved her, you dork. All right. You see, I now realise I've got to be more patient. Take things more slowly, like. You watch. This time next year, me and her will be back together as Mr and Mrs. Cheers. I'm sorry I snapped at you earlier. I shouldn't have done. No, you shouldn't have. Look, I wasn't accusing Peter. Honestly, I wasn't. I was just trying to work out who else it could be, since you're so sure it wasn't Aidan. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not so sure anymore. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I think you might be right. I saw him earlier, and there was something about his manner. What did he say? Well, it wasn't what he said, so much as the way he smiled at me. It reminded me of the old Aidan when he thought he put one over on me and was revelling in it. Well, then you, you've got to ring the police and tell them what you think. <laughs> what? That one of my pupils was perfectly pleasant to me and thanked me for his work experience? No, just tell them about your suspicions. They might want to go and question him. But what if I'm wrong? I mean, what's he going to think of me then? Anyway, if it is Aidan, he's probably getting bored with it by now. And nothing's happened since, so let's hope that's an end to it. I don't know what I'd do without you, Kurt, lad. Yeah. Well, you just remember that when your Janice moves back in. Hey, I, I, I will, Kurt. I will. I, I won't see you homeless, I, I promise. Right, let me find the key. There you go. Night, night, Ken. Do I'll do it. You're a good lad. Thought you said you couldn't make it. Yeah. Well, I did, didn't I? He's not here, then. Oh, he will be. How do you know? Bet ya, he's just winding us up. He's probably at home right now, in bed, just laughing at the thought of us out here. I reckon we just go home. I know your trick. You just want to get Aid all to yourself. As soon as I start walking home, you'll be back here like a shot. No, I wouldn't. Right, well, if you want to go, you can go. I'm staying. Six in the bed and the little one. Oh, how long have we been up? Oh, I'm not sure. About half an hour, I think. But I do know I've done 12 circuits. Oh, well, it seems to be working. Go on, you go back to bed. You've got work in the morning. Oh, no, it's all right. I'm awake now. I'll make us a warm drink, eh? Listen, I've been thinking about me not getting that job. I mean, it's not the end of the world, is it? And I mean, maybe it's for the best anyway. How'd you work that one out? Well,. Like you said, it would just mean longer hours, and for what? More money. And anyway, it'd mean I'd see less of Ben, and I want to see more of him, not less. Norman? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So maybe it's the best way around to do things, you know? Mm. Get all the family stuff out of the way first, and then go for the promotion later when the kids are older and there's more time. Kids? Yeah, well, it struck me. Now seems the ideal time to try for another one. What do you reckon? Maybe you're right. Maybe we should just go. Oh, no. Hi, Aid. What are 
are you doing? I thought you weren't going to do this again. I never said that. You're mad, you! All part of my charm. Well, so far, so good. You're both here, then. So which of you fancies coming for a spin? Oh, you must be joking. What if we get caught? It wouldn't be any fun if there wasn't a risk. Come on, who's up for it? Or are you both too soft? I will. No, you won't. Get off! You can't tell me what to do! Look, if you take it back now, you might not even notice it's gone. Ah, yeah, but that'd be a waste of petrol. Hurry up. Am I going on my own or what? Candice! Last chance. Why are you doing this? Are you coming or not? No. Even if I wanted to. My gran will already be going mad. She's probably called out the police by now. Just so long as you don't. See you then. Four of them, uh, Gare Richards, Chris Melton and his wife, you know the councillor, they live in Oak Hill View, I think. Yeah, I know. So the flight's due in at eight. I know. But I would ring beforehand just to check so it saves you hanging about. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll pop into yours on the way round and uh, teach what I do with curly perm. Oh, Steve, now come on, there's no need to get all shirty. I was only trying to be helpful. Thank <laughs> you. Do you want a chip? No, I need one. A man. How was your holiday? Let's just say my little black book is now out bulging. Yeah. That's why we didn't get a postcard, is it? You betcha. A <laughs> few stories to tell you. I bet you have. <laughs> have you been crying? No. What is it? What's wrong? Nothing. Oh, come on. Uh, David, you have to do that now. Are well, you were the one complaining about the mess. All right, look, would you, uh, would you get Bethany a drink, please, sweetheart? I saw Candy's kissing aid. Oh, Sarah. Oh, darling, why can't you be a bit more choosy with your friends? Me? Yes, well, Candice. I mean, a blind man in a blizzard could see she's a sneak. <gasps> Dead fit, though. Oh, cheese. Mm, that aid's not much better. He was kissing her back, I suppose. Yeah, well. Oh, well, well. Now, you can't go blaming her and then sticking up for him. Anyway, we always known he's been trouble. They deserve each other, if you ask me. I don't deserve this. Well, why didn't you say as much instead of skulking away with your tail between your legs like that? Well, Gran, I'm hardly going to start a slanging match with Bethany there. Make sure you catch up with them tomorrow, then. I'll try catching up with her today. She's got a phone on diver and she's not answering the door. I know why now. Oh, Gran, can you not look after Bethany for a bit? I won't be long. Madam, you said that last night and then you swanned in at midnight. Well, Gran, I can't just sit here knowing that they're laughing at me behind my back. Could you? A couple more years, this boy will be swimming the channel. <laughs> What's going on? You're doing a runner? No, just sorting out some of his stuff. Hey, he's grown out of this already. Did you hear that? Fatty. Oh. Fatty, fatty. Never mind, it'll do for your little brother or sister. Uh, I couldn't find the rest of his stuff. Have you put it up in the loft? Uh, no. But there isn't anything in the suitcase under the bed. <sighs> no, I gave it away. What, everything? The jumpers and the baby grows. Not his teddy bear dressing gown. It was never going to fit him again. Yeah, but that was a present from Emily. Who did you give it to? Oh, just some people. Some people from the mother and toddler group. I mean, there was Julie. She's on her own now. And then there was Debbie. Her husband's just been made redundant. But that's hundreds of quid's worth of stuff. Did you really think we'd never need it again? Well, you never said so. Yeah, I know, but... All right. Change. Oh, ta. What's going on? Oh, yeah. oh. You're a gent, aren't you? Well, all part of the service. What are you doing? I'm drinking this, and then I'm going to tell Candice what a two-faced little tramp she is. <laughs> hey, and she argues back, you can always hit her with the bottle. Funny. 
don't tempt me. Oh, but two girls fighting over a lad, though. Well, pony, you won't get the Oxford University. Lad, Aiden. Two losers fighting over a waster. Oh, why don't you write an essay about it? Cos I won't waste me paper. How'd you put up with that? Hey, I only live with him. You went out with him. I can't remember why. I've got more in common with my gran. <laughs> Two pints of lager and a short back and sides, please. <laughs> So how long have you been working here? What, are you complaining? No, a couple of weeks. I'm not Audrey's favourite person at the moment. So we snapped her up. Yeah, only because she wanted a roots doing. Oh, <laughs> <Hi>, cheeky. <laughs> how are you fixed for Sunday, anyway? Oh, well, Audrey's lost. Mm, I'll bring them over. Cheers. Hi, oh, love. Hi, love. You're fine? No, I'm not stopping. I just uh, popped in to tell you that a nurse needs to spiked up again, so I'm sorry we've got no hot water. Oh, I'll bring the plumber first thing. Are, are you calling in later? Yes, I'll do my best. All right. Oh, you're back then, I see. Missed me? Oh, yeah, Miss Bay now. <laughs> no, I small potatoes to me, that mate. <laughs> yeah, you wish. Oh, he's got a race meeting on tonight. Oh, yeah? What's that? Oh, Donkey Darby to the likes of you, mate. I'll see you tomorrow for a proper bet. <laughs> give us a tip, then. Oh, well, you give us a chance. I've only just stepped foot off the plane. So do you do the dogs, then? Uh, got off with a few in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Prefer the GGs myself. Cheers. Oh. No, I was just saying, because my dad races greyhounds. <laughs> Good night. You want to get him to take some time? Mm. <laughs> you are not as daft as you look, are you? Well, then you can return the favour, can't you? What do you think to Faye's dream in the big race? <sighs> so you managed to prise your tongue out of his throat then? Eventually. You're supposed to be my mate, and you're supposed to be my best mate, but since they came on the scene, it's aid this and aid that, and sorry, Candice, I can't see you tonight, cos I'm with aid. It, so you're trying to pay me back? No, it's just a lucky extra. Oh, dead mature. Listen, if aid would rather be with me than you, then I can't do anything about it, can I? Candice, he thinks you're thick. You proved that last night by getting in that car with him. Wrong. Getting in that car was one of the best ideas I've had in ages. Actually, second best. The best was pulling over in that country lane. I'm warning you. Stay away from him, Candice. After last night, you try keeping him away from me. Oh, this'll be him now. Norman, did you really think I'd want Ben to be an only child? Well, I'm an only child. I'm not sad and maladjusted. Yeah. No, of course not, but I don't want that for Ben, though, do you? It's the first time you've said. Yeah, I know, but oh, just imagine it. Like a little brother or a little sister for him to share his toys with. Well, not his clothes, eh? <laughs> well, just someone he could stick up for in the playground. Yeah, well, it would be nice. So, when were you thinking of? A time like the present. <clears throat> well, I've got him, and I've got a shepherd's pie in the oven, and it's got to be out in five minutes. And... Yeah, well, check your diary for a window. Oof, I wish. You don't seem very keen. Well, it's not that, no. It's just that having a baby's hard work, it's a shock to the system. We've got to be rock solid. And you don't think we are? <sighs> not as much as we was. I mean, we're not heading for the divorce court yet. But we're both assuming stuff. And we're not talking. And we're both getting it wrong. And that's on something as important as whether we should have another child or not. What does that tell you? Yeah. Maybe we need to spend more time with each other before we think about getting pregnant again, eh? It doesn't stop us practising, though, eh? This is ridiculous. Now what will you ring the police? But this street is never empty. How come no one saw it being taken? Well, never mind that. Will you get it back? And if you do, how many points will you have on your licence? Or will you still have a licence? Unless it was Peter, which would explain why nobody thought to stop him. Ken. What is it with you and this lad? What what kind of hold does he have over you? He's not got any hold over me. Then what are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of it. Well, yes, I am, actually. I'm frightened of looking like a paranoid old fool, cooking up conspiracy theories because I've got nothing better to do in my life. We can say it's Aiden, know it's Aiden, but we can't prove it. There is a hole where your car should be. That's proof enough for me.
Fancy a lift? Coronation Street, Cornwall, Caracas. No any country lanes? City boy me, don't do countryside. Oh, well, that's not what your girlfriend says. Which girlfriend's this? Oh, you know, the one that rides around with you in a stolen car. Uh, borrowed? Driven with tender loving care? Simple question, Aid. Straight answer. Have you dumped me for Candice? Uh, nope. Then what are you doing snogging her behind my back and why are you parking down country lanes with her? I'm scared of the dark. Three little numbers, Ken. It really is that easy. But it's not. We're 99.9% .9 convinced. No. We'd have to be clinically brain dead not to be. No, you're wrong. Oh, Ken! Stop being so English about this. So reasonable and sporting no, and... Don't start attacking me for thinking through Thinking the... is fine, as long as you do something on the back of it. All right, well, just let me finish, will you, for thinking through the consequences. If it's Critchley, if it's always been Critchley, then he's done it for sport. Getting one over on Barlow, not getting Barlow's car. Borrowing, not stealing. Oh, right. Oh, well, I'll go and borrow the crown jewels then, shall I? See what the police have to say about that. Oh, don't be absurd. But you're not making sense, Ken. We know he'll bring the car back. Do we? So I'm asking the question, aren't we better waiting? Catching him red-handed. Oh, a stakeout. Fantastic. We wait till he pulls up at the front door, snap him with a camera, and then we ring the police. They might just turn up by next Wednesday. And you call me absurd. Sarah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Let's not leave the engine running. Someone might pinch it. Come on, talk to me. What, so that... You and Candice and probably half a Weatherfield can have a laugh at me. No. And you can twist it all and make me look stupid. No. So I can explain. It didn't mean anything. It was just messing around. Sometimes you can be so serious. I have to be. Because of Bethany. Oh, so you do remember her name, because usually she gets the kid. Bethany's great. Cutest kid I know, and you're great with her. It's just I'd rather be with you on your own. I was on my own last night. But you were thinking of her. So you went off with Candice to punish me? I went off with Candice because she was there. Is that the best you can do? You snogged her! She was all over me. Well, you were hardly protesting. Do you think this was easy? Getting the keys cut, sneaking the car out and driving around without getting caught? It takes bottle. It takes genius. You want someone to see it. You want a fan club. Your face when you first saw me in that car, it was a right blast. But then you're like... Show's over, time to go home. Thank you and good night. I like you a lot. You better move it. You're pretty, funny and you're cool. I care for you, I really do. Aid. Get in the car. Just why I shift it. Oh, yeah. No stunts. He says. Please. It was only to save me from a pasty. Oh, hello, yes. Yes, I'm calling to report a stolen car. How can you be jealous of a two-year-old? I don't talk stupid. If that's what you're saying. You begrudge me bothering with my daughter, run off with my mate. Unless, of course, there's another wind-up. Well, the thing with Candice was a wind-up. I shouldn't have said it. No, you shouldn't have. She was the one doing all the running. She kissed me. I was just brassed off with you for going home. Ah, you wanted me to come out and tell you how fantastic you are. I'm fantastic, though, aren't I? Well, maybe not quite so fantastic now, but you'll think so by the time I've made it up to you. I bet you will. Have I grovelled enough? I don't want you to grovel. Aid, I just want you to be straight with me. All right. I think you're gorgeous. And I want to go out with you properly. Forsaking all of us. What do you say? Mm, well, if I haven't got a better offer by tomorrow, I'll think about it. Oh, no. What's up? Did you arrange to meet her tonight? Me? No. 
Well, she only wears those shoes if she's really out to impress. Get down. Chips. Woo! Come on. Is that Shelley? No, it's uh, no. We've not been together long enough for that. What's she like? Hey. What's she like? <laughs> You're not gonna tell me, are you? <sighs> Got me down as a bunny boiler or something. I think I'm going to pitch up at the pub and slash her lager pipes. No, it's not that. Well, then, come on. Well, I mean, it's, it's a bit sick, isn't it, talking about my girlfriend when I'm lying in your bed? Well, go and sit on that chair. I'm interested. Well, I don't know. What can I say? She's, um... She's lovely. She's got long blonde hair. She's got a beautiful smile. She's one of them kind of girls that, you know, put people at their ease. She a good laugh, then. Yeah, she is a good laugh. Low maintenance? What do you mean? What, um, facials and manicures, all that sort of rubbish? No, I mean, easy going. She does her thing, you do yours. Yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, up to a point. I mean, she needs a lot of reassurance, Shell. Yeah, she needs she needs a lot of reassurance. I mean, that's not because of me. I mean, I've never done out like this before, you know. That's, that's just how she is. Will we assure her then? Hi, hey, Shell. Hi, it's me. Look, just a quickie, I know you're busy. Are you nearly finished? Er, uh, well, I don't, I don't know, love, why? I'll be steady in it. And Fred reckons I can make an early dart. Do you fancy going for a curry or something? Yeah, we could do, yeah. What, um, what sort of time are you thinking? Well, sooner the better. When have you finished? Yeah, all right then, love, I'll, uh, I'll see you in a bit. See ya, bye. Bye. Well, you're not such a good liar as I thought you were. Hmm. I suppose I should be glad. Go on, get your kit on and go. <clears throat> nah. Let's have another half an hour, eh? <laughs> that could fly. Yeah, apart from the kids screaming behind. Anyway, it was on time. My MC Amada, keep that the right way up, driver. There we go. Oh, looks well, like the weather was nice, Richard. It? it was very nice, thanks, Steve. There we go. Right, well, Coronation Street, barring flood, fire and famine. It is still standing, I presume. It is. Hey, Tony, you should come round to our house, see how the other half live. Oh, listen to it. You're hardly one of the hoi polloi yourself. Hoi polloi? Uh, doesn't that come with a, a sweet and sour sauce? <laughs> Oi, keep your eyes on the road, you. Actually, it's this. Oh, charming. Hey, remember to take this rubbish and all. It keeps a tidy car, does Barlow. Handy packed screen wipes, not one but two air fresheners, plastic cover on his atlas, and look at his tapes. He's got tapes. Check out the glove compartment, alphabetical order. Oh, you lie. From back of accident. Wagner, yeah. Wagner, you dunce, it's German. Oh, you've done this. There's no way Mr. Barlow's that uptight. Well, I thought you might appreciate it. Aid. Oh, ready? Say cheese. Don't mind me. Todd, it's half term. So? So, what's with the homework? Got a college visit on Friday. Oh, right, and uh, where's that again? Nowhere. No, I don't, I've forgotten. Oxford. Ooh! Want me to show you on the map? <laughs> no, don't bother reading all that, you'll walk it. Well, look, you're from a poxy comp, you skin, you're northern, hey, and you look like a gay boy. Four boxes tick. Todd Grimshaw. Come on down. <laughs> Peter? You have no messages in mailbox one. No, oh. oh, cut chip. This isn't on, you know. I mean, your mum and Richard will be back soon, and what are they going to say? I think I can't control her. You can't. David! I can't believe you fell for that. I won't be long. Routine, two nights running. Oh. Hello? 
Hello? Candice? Uh, it's uh, Audrey Roberts, love. Sarah's grand. Could I speak to Sarah, please? You'll have a job. Why not? Cos she's not with me. Oh, uh... uh... Well, have you any idea where she is? Dead in a ditch for all I care. Oh! She's a very nasty little piece of work, isn't she, that madam? Oh, dear. Come here. What are you doing? Now, keep an ear out for Bethany, right? I'm going to look for Sarah. Hiya, oh, Ken. He's here. Oh, sorry. I was expecting the police. Uh, is who here? Peter. He's late and he's not answering his phone. He's supposed to pick me up from work. Uh, in what? Not in my car. What are you on about? Well, my car's been stolen. I've reported it to the police. <gasps> no, when? Tonight. And if it turns out Peter's taken it, I'm going to look a right fool. Well, he didn't mention how. What makes you think it's him? Hi, love. Oh, hi, dear. Would you mind if I use your phone? No, no. Carry on. Thanks. His mobile still switched off. What's he playing at? Well, he's not up to his old tricks again, is he? Out boozing with his mates. Or helping the police with their inquiries. Better not be. Drink. I think my liver needs a rest, girl. <laughs> Besides, Tony's pining for the cats. Ooh, says the man who sent them both a postcard. <laughs> Gail, it's been fabulous. Oh. We'll get together soon, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I'd love that when we've got the photos. Here comes trouble. <laughs> Hang inside. on. Inside you, nothing on your feet. I'll just give you one. Um, that's not the pretty bag. <laughs> <laughs> the honest approach. I like it. Go on, let's get you inside before you catch your death. Oh, it's too chilly. Have you seen the time? Yeah, it flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I have to get back. Well, there's petrol in the tank. Well, my mum and Richard are back tonight. They wonder where I am. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you're the boss. Aid! We're going too fast. This is nothing. If it's shampoo or even a bottle of gin, we're all right. But if it's oil... I don't keep oil in the boot. Olive oil. Chris, did you buy that garlic oil at the airport? Please. I'll get this. No, 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 I'll do this. You both pay me if you like. Place. No. You stumped up for the trip. The well, least I can do is get the cab fare home. Ah, uh, well, if, if you insist. I do. And thanks. Thanks so much to both of you. Yeah, you've been fabulous hosts. Thanks. I'll let you know about the hostel. Sure, yeah. You, you know where you're going, don't you? The hostel? Is it the Vale Hostel? The next door to the ridings, you know it? Know it? I lost a penthouse flat because of it. The missus was heartbroken. Well, you might have been hasty. We're still reviewing it. We? The council. Can we get going, please? Tell me it's not true. What was it? You haven't used my money, the remortgage from my house, to take two complete strangers on holiday. Hey, slow down! Oh, I'll call this fast. I mean, there's people about! Oh, I thought you were going to do it. If you don't slow down now, I'm dead in now! I'll take the shortcut. No, don't. We did, sir! Shut the door! Don't be down! Shut it now! Okay, so I took a gamble. With my money! Oh, I thought it was our money. Which you conveniently forgot to tell me you were spending. So you stumped up for the trip. Well, was that just the flights or flights villa and flights villa and little woman to pack the cases? 
scale. Tell me, did Chris and Tony pay for that villa, or did you? Mom, I did. Oh, now but... we're getting to it. Well, I didn't tell you because I knew you wouldn't go along with it. Right, I wouldn't go along with it. Things are tight enough without you splashing out money on He's holidays. He's not but... splashing out. Don't you see? If the planning committee reject planning the application... Planning committee? You mean Chris, your new best friend? New bent friend. He's not bent. Well, if he's not bent, why are you wasting good money taking him on holiday? Night, then. David, wait. Gail, this is usual business practice. It's called corporate hospitality. You warm them up, you show them the facts, then they make their own minds up about it. And that's exactly what Chris is doing. Well, that's not what it'll look like from the outside. Well, you've just spent a week with the block. Did he look dodgy yeah, to you? Yeah, I've spent a week treating him and Tony like friends when they knew we were slimy little customers with our begging bowls out. Have you any idea how that makes me feel? Oh, bug off. they think of me? The poor little housewife who's too thick to be told the truth. They don't think anything How of the sort. you humiliate me like that? You're overreacting, oh. Gail. When this application's overturned... If it's overturned. ...and the riding's flats rocket in price again, you will thank me. It'll be the best money you ever spent. Hi. Oh. I walked in on something. Nothing that won't keep. Where have you been? Uh, is she back? Sarah, I've been out looking for her. Well, who's been looking after Bethany and David? Great homecoming this turned out to be. Don't worry, love. The firemen are here now. They're going to get you out as soon as they can. Don't you worry. Just let me get this oxygen on her. The head injuries look serious. Left pupil fixed and dilated, probably internal bleeding. We've got to get her up right, quick as she can. Take some of the pressure off her brain. Keep breathing. She can't be more than about 14. Keep breathing, darling, that's it. Don't worry with candies, cos I've tried. Actually, she was... Rude to me. They've had a falling out. Aid. Aid. Yeah, she's had a falling out with him and all. So I've tried the chippy and that little bit in front of the off-license in Crimea Street. What, where the kids skateboard? Mm, and then David told me to try the gates by the Red Wreck. Oh, poor little soul. I've put him through the third degree tonight. No joy? Nothing. Well, I mean, she won't be standing out in the cold, will she? I mean, let's face it, she'll be stuffing her face with crisps in front of somebody else's video. Too comfy to reach for the phone. Well, actually, I mean, it's not all that late, and there's no school in the morning. Voice of reason. No, no, I'm only saying, you know, put it in perspective. <sighs> I wasn't going to tell you this. But? It's two nights on the trot. Is it now? Well, she said she'd be back by half past ten, and then she swans in about midnight. Well, forgive me for getting things out of perspective, but I think I'll ring round a few parents. You may be better off with Sarah's address book. Yeah, good idea. <clears throat> I'll go and get it. Don't wait, Bethany. That's all we need. Oh. Look, the only problem you've got with my car is you're not driving it. Get lost. It's true. Nick, how can I break this to you gently? Your car screams midlife crisis. Yeah, yeah. It does. It's a step away from growing a ponytail and buying a sunbed. I don't like the look of that. Is there someone in there? Oh, hang on, I know this car. Yeah. Radio ahead to A&E, tell trauma we need him on standby. Another disappearing driver. Stolen tonight, apparently. Are you sure? That car belongs to my neighbour. I know this girl. Sarah Platt. She lives across the road. And you didn't know she was a twop? No way. She's a really nice kid. Nice kids stay in and do their homework. How is she? Alive. Joss. A trauma ready. We're going to need him. She is. She is a nice kid. How old do you know the family? Oh, don't you start. 
I mean, someone's got to tell him. Do you want me to do it? I'm sorry, Mick. Just a bit... That's what I mean. Are you going to get upset? No. I'll do it. It's probably better coming from me, seeing as I know him. Yeah, I, I know, and I'm sorry for ringing so late. No, they, they don't think, do they? I, I'm sure we were the same. I, I appreciate it. Bye. You're trying to get round me, you needn't bother. Sorry? I think lying's become a habit with you. Come on. It trips off the tongue. Gail. I haven't forgotten the bracelet. Oh. You think that was dead and buried? Well, it might have been. But when something like that happens one week, and something like this the next, you begin to wonder. The villa was a business I mean, thing. it wasn't the first time, was it? There was the small business of the ex-wife. The one who wasn't dead. I mean, what other lies have you been feeding me? There's no need to drag you all that up Put it all together again. and you begin to wonder. Was that a bout of absent-mindedness? Or have you been feeding me a pack of lies from the beginning? Flat out, both of them. Here, ma'am, you might as well no, have this. No, Gail, I don't want presents. Oh, ma'am, I'll let you down. That was nothing, believe me. I should have stopped her. Tell me, how? It might come in useful. I've, uh, I've gone through all the names I recognise, just starting the ones that I don't. Yeah, I think you'd better. Oh, it's gorgeous. And I'm down to my last drop. No, Sarah told me. Oh, well, there, you see, she's not all bad. Lovey, don't panic when I say this, but, uh, do you think we should call the police? You might need to when I get my hands on her. Oh, give us a hug, Norman. Oh, what is it? You OK? Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, it's fine. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I've just looked in only five minutes ago. What is the matter? I hate this job sometimes. Hey, it's all right, it's OK. It's okay. Bye. Right. Thanks. Right. See you later. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Why don't you go home, ma'am? You must be shattered. Can't have been an easy week. Not until I've seen her. Well, we can ring her. You can rollick her down the phone. Come on, I'll run you around. Please, really? No. Oh. Lost her kid. <laughs> Will there be some trauma or oh, over? Oh, dear. Hi. Can I come in? Sure. Is there, um, is there something wrong? It's bad news, I'm afraid. Patricia? Sarah? Just tell me. There's been an accident. Is she dead? The car she was Is she dead? No, Gail. Oh, that's something. What car? Ken Barlow's. <laughs> what was she doing in Ken Barlow's car? The car was reported stolen earlier tonight. Sarah was in the passenger seat when it turned over at speed. There's no sign of the driver. But that can't be right. No, not Sarah. She'd never get her in a stolen car. Are you sure it's our Sarah? Richard, I was there when they pulled her out of the wreckage. I saw them put her into the ambulance. <gasps> How bad is she, Emma? Critical. <laughs> she has very serious head injuries. She's in intensive care, but they need to operate immediately. My colleague, PC Hotwood, he's waiting in the car outside. We need to get you to the hospital. What about Bethany, David? Well, I'll get Sally. Could you put a few things in a bag? She'll need to stay overnight. Yeah. Is it really that bad? The sooner you can do that, Audrey, the better. Yeah. I'll be two minutes. Thank you. You said Patricia. I... Emma said bad news. You said Patricia. I don't know where that came from. But panic. Y your mind plays funny games. Now, think. Do you need anything? We should have been here. None of this would have happened. You don't know I that. do. We should have been here to protect her. Your colleague tells me you found the car. That's as far as I got. It's been involved in a serious road accident. Ken. Who was driving? Not Peter. We don't know. Ken's daughter, Peter's twin, was killed in a car crash. The driver left the scene. Peter wouldn't do a thing like that. Left the passenger. Sarah Platt. Sarah? She's very badly injured. What was she doing in our car? 
and the driver just walked away. Ran, apparently. Has to be. Aid. You know who's done this? Yeah, we've got a pretty good idea. We've got to get to the hospital. Right, I'll come back and take a proper statement, yeah? Sure. Uh, can I come? Uh, we're taking Gail and Richard. Oh, I'd like to see her. She's in intensive care. We'd just be in the way, love. Where's my car? We'll be in touch. Thanks. Uh, tell me, it wasn't a police chase, was it? I reported missing and a couple of hours later this. Well, as far as we know, there were no other cars involved. And what time did it happen? Ken, they've got to get to the hospital. Yeah, but I waited. I argued at the toss. If I'd rung straight away. Well, what are we talking here? Five, ten minutes? Yeah, more like 15. Ken, 15 minutes is nothing. It's long enough to crash a car. A car? Any car. Not your fault they picked on yours. We've got to go. Aiden didn't just want any car. That still doesn't make it your fault. You don't believe that. You know, as well as I do, I could have stopped it days ago, weeks ago, but I sat on my hands. I let it get to this. And Sarah could die. Mm. Mm. Oh, no. Lucy. Lucy, look at the what? time. What's up? What's wrong? <laughs> Shelley's going to kill me. She would have found you, wouldn't she? No, because I turned my phone off, didn't I, like an idiot? She left a message? Look. Four missed calls. All right, look. I'm going to have to rush. I'll see you later. Sorry. Bye. See you around. I thought you were going for a curry. So did I. Mm, what time have you been stood up? Mm. Or he's running late, or he's drunk in a gutter, or he's been stopped by the police for robbing his dad's car. You what? <laughs> oh, it's a long story. Point is, it'd be nice to know why he's running late instead of having to guess, wouldn't it? Hmm? When is it, Steve? Two. Judith Chalmers will be back in a minute. So I don't think Mia's could take much more. He's been filling you in about Ibiza, then? Only for about an hour. <laughs> he's going to get the photographs now. Oh, you don't sound a bit jealous. Did he have a good time, then? Well, uh, let's just say he didn't get much kip. And uh, he didn't go lonely, the lad. Oh, yeah? It was very chilled, very civilised, actually. <laughs> what, you mean you didn't cop off? I am too much of a gentleman to say. <laughs> These are all scenic. Views from the balcony in there. <laughs> Mr and Mrs Hillman, I'm Robert Orme. The neurosurgeon will be treating your daughter. How is she? Well, we've just done a CT scan and it confirms our suspicions. Sarah has what's called an extradural hemorrhage. That means the impact of the crash has caused a blood vessel to burst in between the skull and the lining of the brain. We need to drain that blood to stop it clotting. I don't believe this. I hear what you're saying, Doctor, but I just can't take this in. Is it as serious as it sounds? And a blood clot? We want to avoid that at all costs. Can I see it? We're prepping her for surgery right now. Has someone spoken to you about consent forms? Yeah, yeah, it's all in hand. Uh, the police said head injuries. You're saying brain injuries. Does that mean, well, could she have brain damage? We haven't ruled it out. Can I see her before she goes down? Mrs Hillman, we need to perform this operation quickly. It is vital to bring down the pressure in the brain. Or what? Well, we understand, Doctor. If you'll excuse me. Sorry, love. I tried to phone you. Oh, come here. Oh, I, I, you know, I couldn't get through. The line was engaged, and then I couldn't get a cab. And when I did get a cab, the oh. flaming driver... Oh, it doesn't matter. The dozy Philip, he took me down the motorway. I kept saying, left, mate, left. The next thing, we end up on the slip road. It's all right, you're back now. That's all that matters. Oh, give your dad a ring, eh? Me dad, love, why? Just let him know you're safe. Well, have you had the search parties yeah. out for me? Yeah, just give him your ring. He's had a really bad night. I'll tell you all about it in bed. OK, well, let me just grab a quick shower and I'll be with oh, you. No, 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 leave the shower. Oh, the, yeah, the immersion. No, no, I fixed it. It's just... It's just that what a cuddle, that's all. Oh. Oh. 
Stop being like this, Candice. It's serious. She crashed Barlow's car. Big wow. Go and tell your girlfriend about it. I left her. Well, don't think you can come running back to me, cos you can't. In the car. I left her in the car. It was wedged under this slurry. I couldn't breathe. I had to get out. And then, and then get Sarah out? The car was mashed. I couldn't get to her. A bloke came from one of them burger vans. So you left it? She wasn't talking. Wasn't moving. Well, was she breathing? You don't know, dear! I can't believe you! Stop it! Stop it! I phoned an ambulance. I won't do that if I think she's dead. Candice, what are you doing? Bring me in the hospital. What do you think? He think? I thought Sasha was involved. I wasn't involved. Nobody went out in the car. Well, then it made you crash it. Nobody made Sarah want to get in the car. You wound her up till she was practically begging me. Don't you dare twist things. I'm not. I'm just trying to get things straight. Me, you and Sarah, we're in this mess together. Thank you, Richard. There you go. There's a machine there with sandwiches. Oh, good. You've not eaten since the plane, and then you only picked. Plane? We were in Spain this morning. Seems like a lifetime away. Wish we hadn't gone. Feel like they're staring at us. They're the ones with the joyrider for a daughter. They don't think that. Yes, they do. She wasn't driving the car. She was in it. She must have known it was Ken's, known it was stolen. What possessed her? Hasn't she been in enough trouble? How is she? Well, we went ahead with the craniotomy. We've managed to drain the excess blood from around the brain. And has it stopped the bleeding? For now. We can't guarantee it won't start again spontaneously. Uh, what, what then? Well, then we'd have to review Sarah's condition. But for now, she's stable. So when can we see her? All three of you can't, I'm afraid. Oh, no. It's a risk of infection and so on. It is an intensive care unit. The rules are very strict. Please, Doctor. I have to see her. She's my daughter. What time do you want you back? Half an hour or so. What are we going to do? Aid, what are we going to do? Well, we can't just pretend like it never happened. Of course we can. I thought you listen. I think you need to get yourself to the hospital as well. Well, the doctor's then first thing. I mean, you hear about people walking away from a crash without a scratch on them, and an hour later they drop down dead. Only in bad films. Your funeral. What are you doing? Well, just go home, Aid. Half an hour, you said. Yeah, well, I don't want you here when my mum gets in. Come to think of it, I don't want you here at all. We've got to sort this. Look, we can't sort anything. It's down to Sarah and the doctors. And... God. Candice. Look, just get out, Aid. And start praying, mate. Have you ever seen anyone straight after major surgery? No. It's not pretty. Neurosurgery in particular. Of course. Now, you also see lots of tubes. Feeding tubes, tubes, uh, drugs, blood samples. A ventilator to help her breathe. Try not to be too put off. They are what'll help her through the night. Still your daughter, Sarah, underneath. When she comes out? I'm sorry? she still be my Sarah? Or will she be a stranger? She has a little girl. Bethany. If she comes out of this with brain damage... There is that chance. 
You can only face it when it comes. But you said the operation went well. Mm -hmm. She's young. She's strong. We're optimistic. But you can't be sure. I'm sorry. Hello, love. It's Mum. Last time we were in hospital, you were having birthday. It's a lifetime away. I was thinking, because I didn't know what you did wrong. Remember in the surgery, you told me you were pregnant. Any more? Let's see. A uh, 15 year old girl, joyrider. Extra dural hemorrhage. Went straight up to Neuron. If she made it, she'll be an ICU. Oh, her name's Platt. First name, Sarah. I can't believe it. Martin, I'm sorry. She's going to be all right. Of course she is. Weatherfield General Vic, please. Yeah, I heard about the accident. Any news yet? Well, the sooner we get there, the sooner we know. Oh, Audrey, uh, <coughs> sorry to intrude. How's Sarah? Well, keeping our fingers crossed, Roy. Well, if there is anything, uh, Bethany, for instance. Well, thank you, Sally's got her. Thank oh, right, you. yes, good. Well, um, give uh, Sarah, I, Gail, and I, Richard I, I our will. best thank regards. Thank you, Roy. <laughs> Terrible business. Yeah, Emma's been working on it. Do you know it was Ken Barlow's car she was found in? Yes, yes. Uh, any news of the driver? Left the scene, apparently. Yes, it's, he could have been confused. Yeah, or just did a runner. Well, I would hope to think that no one would leave Sarah. Look, it, it seems wrong to, to ask, given the circumstances, but there is a planning meeting tonight and the arcade's on the agenda. Yeah, I know, yeah. I will be, uh... Speaking against it, of course. Mind you, you could argue the case, couldn't you? If he keeps kids out of mischief, then... Yeah, yes, you could argue that, but please, please don't. Thank you. Come on, pal. Martin, where have you been? Well, finding out my daughter's in intensive care by a change of shift handover. Why didn't you ring me? I've been here all night. Me man to tell you. Look, Gail, did it not occur to you when I didn't come that she might have forgotten? If you two are going to argue, do you mind doing it outside? What's happened? They said she was a joyrider. I don't know the details. We'd be more concerned about Sarah's condition. Nobody's told us anything for hours. Any chance of finding out? She just. That there's been no change. <laughs> what time did you get to bed? He didn't. How was I supposed to sleep? This is my fault. Ken, you can't think like that. No? If I'd gone to the police when I was first suspicious, like you said. And this kid you think he was driving? Aidan Critchley. Well, he's the one who's been giving you all that grief, isn't he? Yeah, well, we don't know it's him. And you don't think it could have been Sarah driving? No, she was in the passenger seat anyway. She wouldn't do anything like that. No, oh, but she got in the car, didn't she? I mean, she knew it was your car. She knew it had been nicked. Yeah, well, I'm going to the hospital. Oh, Ken, what for? Emma clearly didn't think it was a good idea. Yeah, well, that was last night. I'm not going to find out anything sitting on my backside, am I? Yeah, but she's my best mate. Shh, my dad. Well, can you not even just tell me if she's dead or alive? Oh, bog off, then. Oh. She was telling you her sister. She hasn't got a flipping sister. You're the one, no. How are we going to find out? We wouldn't have to if you just wait for the ambulance. Any road? With no note? I'd be in a flipping cell. The police are going to come, you know. So? Why would they want to talk to me? 
dirt best mate. Dirt boyfriend. Yeah, well, they wouldn't know that. I mean, with me and you. <laughs> what about us? Well, have you told them you're my girlfriend? What? But have you said we were together last night? You mean be your alibi? Why not? <laughs> yeah, and then Sarah says you were driving the car and I'm in right bother, aren't I? Yeah, well, I don't know whether Sarah will say out. Well, as you know, the operation went well. But um, beyond that... But is she still sedated or is she in a coma? Um, bit of both, really. So when's she going to wake up? When <laughs> she's able to breathe for herself. And afterwards? What if she can't? <laughs> Dad? She's all right, isn't she? Look, um, she's had an operation. She'd, um, she'd hurt her head. But she's gonna be okay. Yeah, of course she is. She'll be fine. Aidan Critchley. Yeah? I'm Sergeant Watts. This is PC Hotwood. We'd like to talk to you. Well, I'm Aidan's father. What's going on? We'd just like to ask your son a few questions. What have you been up to now, you little beggar? <laughs> no. You know Sarah Platt? From school, yeah. Thought she was your girlfriend. She likes to think so. She was in a car accident last night. What's this got to do with Eden? Is she OK? I said she's in a coma, lad. She might not come round. The car belonged to one of your teachers. She was... she was with a teacher? We don't know. Whoever it was ran off and left her. Didn't care whether she lived or died. Didn't even bother calling an ambulance. I was at home watching telly. When did you last see Sarah? Don't know, at uh, school, I suppose. Look, we're both right sorry for the last, but Aidan's told you. He was here watching telly, then he went to bed. So... There'll be fingerprints. Perhaps Aidan would like to come to the station and give us a set. Then we won't need to bother him again if it's got nothing to do with him. No, he's done now. I don't want to put him through that. Sorry. So, if there's no else... I'm sure we'll need to talk to you again, Aidan. It was you, wasn't it? So how come I haven't got a flipping scratch on me? Because you got the look of the devil, lad. But if I find you've been lying to me, you'll have more than a scratch. Okay. I'm sorry to turn up like this. How's Sarah? Well, she's had bleeding between her skull and her brain. But I'm uh, pretty sure that there wasn't any inside the brain. Which is good. Well, she is critical. She's in a coma. So, good's relative. I am so sorry. What have the police said? Well, they tell me what they know, I suppose, that Sarah was in the passenger seat of my car and they don't know who was driving. Did they ask if you did? I, uh, I said I didn't know. But that sounds like you might know. Well, I think we both know who it might be. Aidan Critchley. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Is this because he's her boyfriend or what? Well, I... I think my car's been taken before and then put back in its place, but, uh, well, as far as I can work out, it's his sort of little game. Hang on a minute. You say your car's been taken before and you didn't tell the police? Well, I did, last night. <laughs> well, last night's a bit late, isn't it? Yes, I, I was waiting. I wanted to have it out with him. I don't believe this. You let a kid steal your car, and instead of informing the police straight away, you decide to give him a talking to. I do understand how you feel. Yeah? My daughter's lying in there, unable to breathe without the aid of a machine. She might not live. And if she does, she'll be nothing more than a vegetable. If you knew how I felt, you wouldn't be here in front of me. Gail, that's just a no, bit you're unfair. No, you as bad as he is. You could have prevented this. I'm so sorry. Well, why don't you go in there and tell Sarah? She's the 
one in the coma. They do say she might be able to hear things, so why don't you go in there and tell her you're sorry? Or a two-year-old daughter who might lose her mother. <laughs> Mr. Will, Mr. Will, come here. I'll oh, boot it right into a post office. That's no way to talk to an animal and you a dog lover. Well, yeah, well, it's scary, Monica. Uh, Mr. Will, come on, come on, come on, come on. I've got one of your treats, see? There you are. Peace restored. Fancy being scared of a little shih tzu. Come on, Monica. We'll go to the paper shop at Crimea Terrace. Oh, well, do be careful, because I believe they've got some very vicious hamsters in pet shop next door. <laughs> you want to get a muzzle for him? Oh, which one? Chocolate biscuits. Uh, I'm on a diet. Well, you don't have to eat them. Do you know, for a genius, you can be incredibly stupid. I mean, why would I be on a diet if I could say no to chocolate biscuits? <laughs> Todd, hi, love. How's Sarah, do you know? Eh? Well, the accident last night. What accident? Well, somebody stole Ken's car and um, Sarah was in it and it crashed. Sarah's been in a crash? Sorry, love, I thought you knew. Was she hurt? Yeah, well, um, I, I don't know, really. Ken's gone to the hospital. Yeah, yeah I think it's quite serious. Oh, are you all right, love? I've got to go and see you. Yeah, yeah I'll get your cab. Mr Hillman. Mr Hillman. Oh, hi. I've come to see Sarah. How do you know she was here? Everybody knows. Who is she? Do you know who was in the car with her? No. Oh, I think you do. Aidan, her boyfriend. Seen him? No. I thought it would have been to see her. I don't suppose you heard that the driver of the car ran off and left her? Look, I don't know how, honestly. Oh, please just tell me how she is. Sarah's in a coma. She might live, she might not. If she does, she might be brain damaged. She might not. Is that what you want to know? Can I see her? <clears throat> Do you understand the word coma? Yeah. Well, maybe you'll think about that a bit before the police come and ask you if you know who was driving the car and left her for dead. Please, can you give her these? You know, maybe put them by her bed. She'll be all right, won't she? I'd best be getting back. I know it sounds awful, but I've been telling our Todd for ages that Sarah isn't the sweet little thing that she makes out to be. I mean... You don't go getting pregnant just by having your pigtails pulled. I bet her mum wish she'd stayed with Todd as well. That lad she's been hanging around with is a right beggar by all accounts. Made Peter's dad's life a nightmare. Yeah? Oh, oh it's all right, Shell, I'll get these. She's got time and I'll give her that. So come on then, Bikram. Where am I going to reinvest my winnings? <laughs> no, no, don't be greedy. We've had one winner. There's four more races this afternoon. Yeah, and if my lad's gonna go to Oxford, <laughs> you know, it must be all of an hour since you last mentioned that, Eileen. I just like saying it. And any road, I need plenty of good tips. I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> no, well, sending a kid to uni is now compared to sending Cowden shopping, so get your head in that racing paper, love. Okay, fans, I shall pick you another four-legged cash dispenser. Um, maybe you could give some of your winnings towards some flowers for Sarah, eh? Yeah, 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 good idea. Hello? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for letting me know. Vikram, you're not the only one in the family who can pick a winner. <laughs> Look, I know you'd like to go in there, but uh, it's not really any point at the moment. It's a bit busy in there. Is it all right to leave these? Oh, she's not really allowed to have any stuff like that in there. Adds to the risk of infection, apparently. But listen, I'll, I'll let her know who brought them. Um, which is a bit better. Do you think she will? 
you know, of course you will. Yeah, I mean, they're just keeping her asleep at the moment, you know, to give her a chance to recover. Are you going home now? I reckon so. Why? Do you want to come? Me and my mum will look after him. I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying. How about a drink, then? They've got a cafe around here, aren't they? Come on. That's fine. Yeah. Take it the long face means bad news. You take it right. The amusement arcade, planning permission approved. I talked at length. I pointed out all the drawbacks. Complete waste of time. So that's it, then, is it? Well, no, there's still the gaming licence. We could still try and put pressure on the owner. But we don't know who it is. Ah, well, we didn't. Now we do. The application was in the name of Mr. D. Allahan. Dave? Well, he, he never said anything. Would you? I wish I was bigger. Why? Because then that lot won't do that thing when they talk about our Sarah. <laughs> they say she's going to be all right. Then they look at me. I mean, what they're really trying to say is she ain't going to be all right, but we can't say so for a little David. They don't want you to worry. That's all. Why can't I worry? She's my sister. We just used to fight all the time. Yeah, so do me and Jason. But it doesn't mean out. You love her, right? I'm scared she's not going to get better. Yeah, so am I. But nobody knows. She's got to wait. Yeah, but what if she don't? Listen. So you wind each other up. That's what brothers and sisters do. But you love her. Just like she does you. OK? Yeah, but how can I be sure she really knows? I used to sit with her like this when Brian died. Watching her sleep, holding her hand. She was only Bethany's age, wasn't she? Such a tiny little thing. Me and her, we've been through such a lot. My bad times, her bad times. Finally. I thought it was all beginning to go right. And it still. Well, how Richard came into my life, I thought it was too good to be true. When we got married, I used to lie in bed thinking it couldn't last. Now, come on, this is not helping anybody. Come on. She's not moved an inch, ma'am. Not since I came in. Like she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me guess. You lost. Next time I see for the tip, just tell me to mind my own business. Yeah, me and all, because back in horse years goes in a long line of things that I've given up. Along with men, chocolate and alcohol. I'll just have an half. I've given up buying it. I'm weaning myself off slowly. So, did you lose much then? A ton. A <laughs> hundred pounds? Yeah, well, I won nearly that in the first race. Oh, and does that not bother you? <laughs> Look, it's only money. What's the point of having it if you can't enjoy it? Dev, can I have a word? Sure. Problem? It's about this uh, amusement arcade. Oh, you've come to congratulate me. Or I could have come in here to ask you what the hell is going on. You want me to explain planning permission? I thought you were a councillor. Why didn't you tell me that it was you that was behind it? And that would have made a blind bit of difference to your opposition. I'm touched. Well, I could have explained to you why so many people round here think it's a bad idea. I could have asked you to think again. You know, I like to think I conduct my business in a correct manner. What I don't do is argue the toss in pubs. So, if you'll excuse me. Candice. You've heard them. I've just been to the hospital. Did they let you see her? No, I didn't go in. How long have her and Chris have been joyriding? I'm not stupid. What has it got to do with you? Hey, Sarah is in a coma. Yeah, and she blew you out ages ago, so it's none of your business. I've been to see her, Candice. Has he? Would you want a medal? 
Now you even sound like him. Is he worth it, Candice? Worth sacrificing your best friend for? She wouldn't think twice about turning the scumbag in if it was you lying in that bed. Why is everyone putting this on me? Why? Because you knew what was going on, Candice. Didn't you? Didn't you? would happen. Yeah, but she might not make it. Of course she may. I do know. She's my sister. And I don't want to be treated like a little kid. David, love it, you know. It is not easy being grown up. And we all want to be kids again, you know. So we wouldn't have any responsibility and we would just hear what we wanted to hear. It's not easy for kids either, is it? It's not for Sarah. She's still my baby. The trouble is she's a mother herself and that's confusing for her. So she's always trying to prove how grown up she is. And that's why we try to protect you. It's what grown up. She might not be able to hear. She might, though. I, uh, um, me and you, the rows and that, I mean, they don't matter, do they? Look, I know I've never said stuff like I love you but you don't only stick your finger down your throat and laugh about it with candies I wish you could do that now any road you've got to get better who else am I going to have a laugh with more than Mum and Richard Snocky I want you back at school all my mates, the right jealous having you as my sister. I make out to them. I hate you. But you know what? Sarah, please, I'm frightened. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't there. And if Beth could tell you, she'd say it same. She rocks, you know. She's great. Like you. So for us, eh? Get better. Please, you've got to. <laughs> oh, hello, sweetheart. You're up early. I heard Bethany wake up. Oh, good morning, my precious. Ooh. Have you heard out from hospital? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Not yet. I think she's hungry. Oh, dear. Better get her some breakfast. Go on hospital in a minute. Find out how your mummy is. It's quiet without her, isn't it? I'll just have to make twice as much noise. That way you'll think she's here. Be all right, Bethany. Uncle David promises. When she was born, she was premature. Putting her in an incubator. I told you that. No. No. First, we didn't think she'd survive. Well, doctors didn't think. I knew. I knew she'd survive. She's a fighter. She still is. And she's still my child. I want him punished for this, Richard. Aid. I want him locked up for this. Have they arrested him yet? Well, they can't really get involved until they've got proof. Proof? 
A 15-year-old girl's life isn't that proof enough. No change, then. She hasn't stirred. Has the, uh, has the consultant been in this morning? There's been so many people. Yeah, he has. Okay. Well, she's in good hands. What? Just thinking what Ivy would have said. Ivy? Brian's mum. Sarah's gran. She'd have said she was in God's hands. Well, that means she'd be right. She's got to survive, Martin. Hey. She will. She'll fight her. That's what I've just said to Richard. You didn't eat your tea last night, either. You're still upset, aren't you, about Sarah? I feel so guilty. Ken, you have got nothing to feel guilty for. Well, that wasn't what you said the other day when you wanted me to report it. Yeah, but you didn't know this was going to happen. You're just as much a victim in all this as... Who? Sarah? I don't think so. Look, that lad has been making your life hell for months. Now he's going to get what's coming to him. Gail was so furious when I saw her. Well, she was in a terrible state. I mean, look at how we were that time Tracy was in hospital. I mean, you see your child hooked up to all these machines, tubes coming out of their mouth, and, well, they just, they just lie there with their eyes shut. No parent should have to see that. Maybe I should go to the hospital again and see how Sarah is. Give them space. Deirdre's right. I just feel so useless. Richard, what's happened? Oh, no, it's all right. No panic. I'll just come back for a shower. Oh. You keep him busy. Oh. I couldn't face this summer, you know, and the walls were closing in on me just sitting around, so I thought it was best just to keep my mind occupied. Any change? No. How's Gail? Devastated. She can't eat, won't sleep. I just feel useless. Oh, dear. I've, uh, I've sent David round to his friends. Now, are you hungry? Can I get your omelette sandwich? No, no, I'm fine. But I've, I've got some sausages. M maybe later. Does she blame me? What? Gail, does she blame me for not looking after Sarah? I mean, letting her go out with that lad instead of looking after Bethany. I mean, she's just a child, Richard. Nobody's blaming you, Audrey. Well, I am. I'm blaming me. I think I'm just a stupid, silly old fool. I mean, all I could think of, you know, was myself when I was 15. And... Well, she should be out having fun, shouldn't she? Not stuck lying there attached to a machine. Hey, hey, oh, hey, God. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Hiya. Hiya, Ailey. Hiya. Um, is Dev around? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's in the back. Dev, Ailey wants to see you. Hello. Hiya. Um, I've come to see if I could talk to you about the arcade. No. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted no, to... No, I'm not interested. To... You're not interested? That's what I said. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. Mm. There's plenty of people around here who are interested, people who don't want you opening an amusement <clears throat> arcade on the doorsteps. Amusement arcade? Look, why don't you go and organise a petition? I don't dare, dare you. How dare you push us away like this? We live here. We've got a right to complain when something well, go happens... Go and complain, then. But not to me. I don't want to hear. Right? So sign your petitions, write your letters, make your phone calls, but not to me. I'm a businessman. It makes sound business sense to me to open arcade. Sound business sense. What am I doing? What am I doing? No. I don't need to justify myself to you. Todd? 
behind Mrs. Platt. Sorry. Mrs. Ullman. Now, Sarah. She's still unconscious. I'm sorry. What are you doing here? Well, I wanted to see how she was, and they wouldn't say anything when I phoned up, so I thought I'd come down. It's very sweet of you. It means a lot to me. You're a good friend. You always have been. No, I haven't. I could have done more to stop her seeing Aiden. She was my girlfriend, and I just let him steal her. He's a nasty piece of work. Sarah likes him. You think Aid was driving the car? Don't you? He's going to pay for this. I best get back to her. Thanks for coming. Would it be all right if I stayed? I've got a book. I could just wait out here. Oh, I don't know. Please. I'd like to stay just for a bit. In case there's any change. Well, if you want. I mean, have you nothing else to do today? Not really. If you're sure. I'll see you later. There you go, love. I've never really been in an arcade. I don't see how they can be as evil as people are making out. What do you think? Curly? Oh, sorry, miles away. Do you want to talk about it? Um, can I tell you something in confidence? Of course you can. I'm dying to tell somebody. It's Emma. She wants another baby. Does she? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose it is, but... Uh, well, it's not as simple as that. Isn't it? No. It's all down to the timing. You see, I just don't think I'm ready for another child yet. I mean, I think I want another child, mm, yeah, but not yet. Excuse me, uh, are you Maria? Yeah. I've got a message for you. Message? Who you from? From me. Stay Ow! away from my boyfriend! Ow! You're a lousy cat! Ow! Here's my boyfriend! What's going on? Keep her away from me! Right, that's enough! I haven't even started yet. Oh, yes, you started and you finished, lady. Are you mad? I don't even know your boyfriend! You were in Venice last night, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you were seen snogging my boyfriend. What, well, Chris? He's your boyfriend? Yeah. Well, I didn't know. We're gonna get married. <laughs> well, he didn't I like he was getting married last night. <laughs> Bye! Bye! No, no! Take my you sticky piece now! Get out before I chuck you out! We're gonna get married! Oh! I didn't know he was a boyfriend. I don't suppose you thought to ask, did you? Now get in the back and sort yourself out. Great floor show. I've had the police round my house. When? This morning asking if I knew out. What'd you say? That I didn't know out. Good. Don't think they believe me though. I know I wouldn't believe me. I mean, I'm gonna be her best mate, but I'm not though, am I? I've not even been able to see her. You could go again. See how she is. I'd like to know. Yeah, well, you go then. That Richard really laid into me, and I'm not up for facing him or her mum. They really hate me. Yeah, well, they're not big fans of mine either. <sighs> yeah, well, at least I never nearly killed the daughter. It was an accident. I'd never do anything to hurt Sarah. Yeah, well, you did enough because she's lying in hospital because of you. Thanks for reminding me. Just remember, you were the one who were in Barlow's car with me. Tell the police, and I'll dump you right in it. Look, you don't frighten me, Aid. Yeah, fair enough, I would be in a lot of trouble, but nowhere near the amount of trouble that you're in. Look at you. You're scared, aren't you? Well, don't worry, I'll keep quiet. But I'm warning you, if Sarah doesn't pull through this, I'll make sure everybody knows who was driving that car. shower, had some sleep. Well, she says she can't sleep. Well, she's got to at some point. Gail. She looks so young. Martin agrees with me. Uh, you know, you should get some rest. No, no, I'm fine. No, you're not. 
I'm not leaving her. Gail, you're exhausted. Now, I know you want to stay, but unless you get some rest, you're going to be no help to Sarah when she comes round. Won't I? No, you won't. And she'll need you more then, because she'll be confused and anxious, and she'll need you reassuring her. And there's no way you can do that if you carry on like this. Look, she'll be fine with the nurses. I'm here. Todd's here. Is Todd still here? Yeah. Look, if nothing else, just go and have a shower and change some clothes. You'll feel much better. Martin's right. A shower? Well, maybe a little rest. OK. But not for long. Not for long. Right, OK. Good. I'll go and get a few things sorted, then I'll come back and I'll sit with her, OK? Could I sit with her until you get back? Hmm. I don't know about that, Todd. I think Sarah would like that. Right, OK. All right. I'll have a word with the nurses. Thank you. All right. Well, apparently she still hasn't regained consciousness. Look, tell me straight. If I reported my suspicions earlier about Aidan taking my car, could I have stopped this? Oh, I don't know, Ken. We might have been able to talk to Aidan before the accident. We might not, but there's no point in blaming yourself. Well, I can't help that, I'm afraid. I tried so hard with the lad. Well, until we can talk to Sarah, we've got no proof that Aid was anywhere near the car at the time of the crash. He's denying it, and the witness didn't get a good look. We're examining for fibres, but... Oh, Ken, I'm sorry, I've got to go. No, 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 thanks for your time. <sighs> He'd be a teacher, eh? I thought me and a copper was bad enough. Try being a shopkeeper. What? So you can earn enough money to open arcades to get more teenagers into trouble? Oh, and you're asking as uh, a policewoman or as a mother? As someone with morals. You want to come round Weatherfield with me one night, see the world through my eyes? There's kids out there stealing money to put in the machines like the ones you'll be installing. <laughs> Old women getting mugged for a few coins and... and then kids being thrown out by the parents so they have to sleep rough. But don't worry about any of that, Dev. As long as you're making a profit. £8.30, please. Forget it. I'd rather starve than buy anything off you right now. There you go, love. You all right? After that girl's visit. Oh, yeah, I can handle her sort. <laughs> Bit of a minefield, isn't it, dating? <laughs> dating? Who's dating? I'm just having a good time. Finished with all that falling in love stuff. Oh, that's sad. Is it? I was in love with Tyrone, and look what happened there. I ran off with Fizz. And then I thought I was in love with Nick, and... He wasn't the right one, either. Well, no, he probably was. But it was just different over there. He had to work all the time and I was just stuck in the flat. I mean, his mates weren't very interested in me. Just got bored. Yeah, I know what that's like. I lived in Morocco for a while with me husband, Sam, here. <laughs> At least you knew what the Canadians were talking about. <laughs> I just used to sit indoors waiting for Nick to get home. I mean, at first it was dead exciting, but that didn't last long. <laughs> At least you've tried. At least you've... You've travelled a bit further than the Red Wreck. And I mean, there's plenty who haven't. Yeah, from now on, I intend to see a lot more of the world. And I'm going to have a laugh along the way. With other girls' boyfriends? Do me a favour, Deirdre. No lectures. Oh, listen, love, I'm the last one to lecture you. <laughs> it's just, um... Well, you remind me of me when I was your age. I just wouldn't like to see you get hurt the way I've been hurt over the years. I can take care of myself. <laughs> Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> Your future mother-in-law reckons a reminder of her at my age. How depressing is that? Hey, less of the mother-in-law bit. Yeah, well, she would be if you married Pete, wouldn't she? Well, you'd have to propose to me first. Oh, you could ask him. Oh, no, love. I want bended knee and a diamond ring for a green smell <laughs> like that. You've got to start as you mean to go on. Yes, love. Eh, uh, can Maria serve me, please? Maria, you are in demand today. Hiya. You placed any more bets recently, then? A couple. You? Well, I'm waiting for my next tip, aren't I? Yeah, well, I can give you one tonight if you're interested. Only if I'm doing something for you, then well, you'll have to do something for me. Oh, why? Yeah. Let me take you out to dinner, <laughs> somewhere nice and quiet, where we can get to know each other a bit better. Mm, well, as it happens, tonight's my night off. But I was seeing someone. His last day. My game. <laughs> I was meant to go to Oxford today. Just for a look round. 
Mum packed me sandwiches and everything. Hey, you'll have lost weight, won't you? When you come round. That'll please you. It's a nice day out. We had four loads of kids knocking a door last night for trick or treat. And there's days yet to Halloween. I'll tell you what. We'll have to go to a big firework display. We normally got one in the park. Mum's never been one for fireworks in the yard. She's always scared we'll get burnt. Oh, Sarah. Look, I reckon they're gonna think it's odd if you don't go and ask after her. Yeah, I'm meant to be a boyfriend, you know. Yeah, well, according to you, they all know I was driving. I'm going nowhere near that spill. What? And you think by this they're gonna stop suspecting you? Just by putting a card through the letterbox? I don't know. I just... I didn't mean for it to happen. It was an accident. I do care for you, you know. I care a lot. You know, if Sarah dies, you'll be put up for murder. No, I won't. All I'm guilty of is taking that car and running away from an accident. Hey, there's a gun. Back. Oh, are you fit? I feel much better. Oh, good. Look, I'll come over later. Yeah. Send her our love. I will. I don't believe it. Critchley! Richard! I'm going to get you, Critchley! <laughs> Get off me! I warned you. I told you. I told you if you harmed her, I'd put you in hospital. I warned you and you didn't listen. She wasn't me! Liar! I warned you. You didn't listen, did you? No. I'm gonna kill you. Richard, no! Please! You're not getting away with it! Let's let the police deal with it! I don't want you getting in trouble because of it! It's not worth it! I'm calling her, Richard, no! Get out of the way. Get off me. You don't care. You really don't care. You really don't Leave care. Go. I'll leave you alone when I'm finished with you. No, stop. My stop. Stop. It's not working. My daughter's it's fighting for her life. No. 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 I've just been watching him. Oh, I can't stop thinking about Sarah Platt. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, putting aside the fact that she's only 15, if she dies, she leaves a two-year-old without a mother. That's terrible. Yeah, well, these things happen all the time, don't they? I mean, it's you that has to hear the tragic stories. Yeah, I know. Just makes me want to take stock of my priorities. What do you mean? Whether we have another baby or not, I, I can't help thinking I should be spending more time in the family. I mean, Norman, I could get called out to robbery in progress and be killed. I don't want Ben to remember me as a woman who was always rushing out the house. You've got a very demanding job. I want another baby, Norman. I want one more than I want promotion. Yeah, I know, I know. Look, can you just... Give me some time, eh, to think about it. I don't want to go rushing into something that I might end up regretting later on. OK. Better just rinse this out. Remember when we went bowling? And you got all them strikes, three in a row. And you were so excited, you kept jumping them down, you got a nosebleed. I do love you, Sarah. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I've loved you for so long. I tried not... I've tried to let go of my life. I thought if I studied hard and concentrated on getting into a good uni, I'd, I'd get over you. But I haven't. I don't think I ever will. The most. Sarah, can you hear me? 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 Can you hear
you hear me? Sarah, can you hear me? Nurse! Nurse! I saw them. They were open. Look, he's opening them again. That's it, come on. understand she's still very weak. It's all been a huge trauma to the system. But she's no worse. She's doing fine. Still, there's a long way to go. I understand. She's disorientated as well. One minute she's fine, next minute she won't know what day of the week it is. But it'll go. The less pressure that Sarah's put under, the quicker she'll recover. Too many visitors right now might not be a good idea. So I don't get to see her, right? Listen, why don't I stay outside and you two go in? Do you mind? Of course not. He's dying to see her, aren't you? Thanks, Richard. Uh, what about the police? Uh, how long before they can see her? Perhaps for a few minutes later on, if she's no worse. I'll test the water at lunchtime, let you know. Right, thanks. Sarah? How are you feeling? Drugs, man. It feels really weird. That's not surprising. I bought you these. Thanks. Out of his own pocket money. Mum? How's Bethany? She's missing her mum. She's fine. She's with your gran. Could I have some water, please? Yes, of course. My throat still, like, really hurts from the tubes they put down. I don't know when I'll be able to eat the chocolates. Are they giving you anything for it? Mm -hmm. So I'll go. Sarah, can you remember how it happened? It's like I've got this black hole in my head. I couldn't even believe it when you told me I'd been in a car crash. Well, that's quite normal, apparently. And they don't even know who was driving. Well, whoever it was ran off and left you. Can you remember getting into the car? All right, all right. Don't worry. I wasn't with Candice, was I? What makes you say that? I did something with Candice. And then I was waking up here with Todd. It's okay. It's all right. Are you okay? I'm sorry, Mama. Everything just keeps going far away. Just lie back and relax. I can't remember. Yes, well, that's the good news. The bad news is that the police might want to interview some of their friends at school. Yeah, well, there's the off chance that someone might know what Aidan's been up to. Yeah, I know, there's no proof as yet, but... Anyway, I, I just thought I'd better give you the warning. Thanks. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Right, I'll speak to you on Monday, then. Bye. <coughs> so what did Miss Johnson have to say? Well, she's delighted that Sarah's on the mend, but wary about pinning the blame on Critchley. Well, who does she think did it? No, she's just saying that there's no proof as yet, which there isn't. She's got to play it by the book. She can't just go flinging allegations around. They never had a book in my day. A thug like him would have been birched. Yeah, well, we've moved on since then. And more's the pity. You know, Ken, much as I sympathise, you've only got yourself to blame, in a way. Well, how do you make that out? It were your generation that did away with discipline in schools and brought in all this equality business. Oh, don't let's get into that one, Blanche, please. Well, you're paying for it now. If you would have given him a clip round the ear six months ago... I'd have got the sack. Yes, but if you could have given him one, it wouldn't have got this far. Mother, I'm not sure this is helping. Gail Platt had the right idea yesterday. Oh, she didn't half give him a walloping. Gail Hillman. Well, whatever she calls herself. She might get remarried every five seconds, but she's not lost her grip in that department. Yes, well, it's lucky for her that Richard pulled her off, if you ask me, even if I do sympathise with her feelings. Well, I wouldn't have stopped her if I were in his shoes. The man must be a saint. 
the dog should never be so high stationed as to be leggy, nor so low as to be dumpy. What do they mean by that? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some measurements here. The ideal height at withers should be nine to ten and a half inches. Well, what are its withers? Oh, I have no idea. The overall length from withers to rump of tail should be slightly longer than height at withers. Well, we've got to find out what withers are. Well, uh, doesn't Rita keep a dictionary in the back? Oh, yeah, I think she does. I, I, I'll get a ruler and uh, measure it, make sure it's the right mm. length. You, you, you don't think withers are, uh, you know, something... Uh... What? Something to do with its nether regions. Oh, for heaven's sake, Norris, go and look it up. Right, I'm not seeing him this morning. Where is he? Oh, he was through the back snoozing last time I saw him. Last time he had some exercise. Mr. Woo, where are you? Coming to get you, walkies. Oh, oh. oh. What on earth's the matter? It's Mr. Wu. Yes, what about him? Well, he's lying on his bed all stiff and cold. I think he's dead. And as the doctors looked back at him, he said, like, no, yes, nine. <laughs> uh, can I just get back to you? Mr. Patel's in Morsley Street. Of course, Fresh Girls is on until 10. Thank you for your support. What's going on? Uh, just. Uh, keeping people informed as to the kind of man they're dealing with when they go in there. The well, man they're dealing with, what are we talking about? Gambling with your community. Well, what else would you call it? Yes, we did try appealing to your public spirit, but when that failed, we had no option. Noise pollution. Pernicious uh, influence of gaming culture on the young. What is this? It's a carefully worded and accurate warning. You can't hand these out. I think you'll find we're within our rights. Morning, ladies. Can I give you one of these? What is it? Yeah, I heard it were him that's been stabbing us all in back. Oh, you could be a bit more over the top, could you, Vera? Stabbing you in the back, darling? Like a thief in the night. That's what you've been like. Yeah, well, I'm more than happy to walk to Mr Patel's until death <sighs> comes to his senses. Yes, yeah, me and all. Oh, hang on. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hi, Todd. Hey, mate. How was she? Much the same, you know, quite with it. She remembered anything? Something about Candice, but she can't be sure what. Candice told me she didn't know anything. Join the club. Can I go and see her? She's resting just now. The doctor said to leave her for a bit. I knew Candice had something to do with it. Now, we don't know that. And if she did, she ought to be careful. If she's lied to the police and they find out, she's going to be in big trouble. Hello. Audrey, lovely to see you. Oh. It's a nice, cheery smile. Always glad to see a valued customer like you, darling. Yeah, especially when they're in short supply, eh? Well, I'm only here because I'm in a rush. I've left Bethany with Sala. A girl and Richard at the hospital? Yeah, yeah, that's right. How is Sarah? She's come round. <gasps> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, excellent news. Um, does that mean she's getting better, Mrs Roberts? Uh, well, we hope so, yes, but no thanks to you, madam. I don't even do anything. Well, that boyfriend of yours then, of Sarah's, mind you, some friend nearly killing her like that. Has Sarah said what happened? No, no, she still can't remember, but, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? That aide crashed Ken's car and then ran off, leaving her to die. I mean, if that man hadn't seen it. What man? Uh, the man that owns the burger van. It was him that dialed 999. I mean, and if he hadn't, I'm telling you, she'd have been in more than a coma, she'd have been dead. That's a 2.50 change, thank you. I can't think what happened, I mean. He was such a perky little chap. Oh, I should have noticed something was wrong earlier. I just thought he was asleep. I never realised there were so many canine illnesses, diabetes, arthritis, depression. All our dogs died of old age. Well, well perhaps that's what it was. I mean, how was it? Do we know? He didn't look old. Oh, dear. What? Uh, no, nothing. Let me see that. Chocolate should never be given to a dog. The theobromide it contains is poisonous and can be fatal. You've not been feeding him chocolate. Just the odd one. You should never give a dog chocolate. Even I know that. 
How much did you give him? Well, it, it, it started with the odd one. Yeah, well, go on. Well, he liked it so much, I sort of got into the habit. How much, Norris? About three pounds over the week. Three pounds? Well, it calmed him down. You can say that again. Any news? Well, it was news to me. What? You just wrecked it without even calling an ambulance. I never. Audrey Roberts just told me a complete stranger had to ring the woman. You ran off. Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? I wasn't thinking straight. I was desperate. What you did in the first place was bad enough. But this... You're the one who wanted to come in first place, remember? You thought you were right, laugh. Yeah, and it could have been me in that smash. Would you have left me to die as well? Well, everybody knows it was you. That's why you heard Sarah and all that. Yeah, well, she's come round. Has she? What's up? Worried she might tell. Would have been better if she'd have died, really, wouldn't it? Has she said out? I don't know. But as you say, there's always me. You can't say out. We're in this together, remember? Not anymore, we're not. You promised. From now on, you're on your own. What are you trying to say? I'm saying do the decent thing. Turn yourself into the police and tell them what happened. I can't do that. Well, if you don't, I will. Are you going to say? There are, there are studies yes. being taken place at Bayonne. Oh, no, 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 well. no, this is totally yeah. horrible. You're meant to be a counsellor. I'm here as a resident. Yeah, we don't want our kids going up in the street full of uh, drug addicts and, and vandals. What? Well, that's what you get with amusement arcades. Next thing, Josh will be in the garden and picking up needles and putting them in his mouth. That's just a few slot machines, Maxine. Don't tell me you've not had a bit of fun with one before. Yeah, in Blackpool or somewhere, but, I mean, that's different. All right, so it's NIMBY time, is it? NIMBY, Maxine, NIMBY not in my backyard always to do somebody else's doorstep. The Blackpool seafront isn't destroying the fabric of a small local community. Nor will this. It will create work for a start, bringing people that want to spend money. The wrong kind of people. Yeah, I mean, it's bad enough with that chippy down the road, with kids staying up all hours looking for trouble. Making a noise. Yeah, so the, the arcade will bring them indoors where you can't hear them anymore. Don't be so naive. Well, you wouldn't hear them, would you? Not in your cosy flat down in the Keys. <laughs> yeah, who's being nimby now then, eh? While you gain on profits and our lives go down the pan? Look, the place is going to be strictly controlled by the authorities, yes? Yeah? All right, so if anything like what you're saying happens, then uh, they'll close the place down and I'll lose my licence. You haven't got a licence yet. And if we get our way, you never will have. Do you remember anything at all about that night? Not really. Do you remember anything during the day? What you did in the morning, for example? Me and Richard were away, if that helps. Your mum said you thought Candice might have been in the car. Not in the car. I think we had a row now, come to think of it. A row? What about? Aid. Must have been about aid. But you're not sure? What did you say to her? Do you remember when this was? I remember aid kissing Candice. In a car? I don't know. This is important, Sarah. For all these tubes hitting my throat. And what the police doing here? Am I in trouble? Shh, no, no, love, no, it's OK. I think that's enough now, Sergeant. Yeah, sure. That's been a really big help, Sarah. You get some rest now, eh? How are you feeling, Sarah? Sounds to me like Candice knows more than she's letting on. Where did you go then last night? Went to this tapas bar, Vic knows, in Manchester. Looking back at the old Solly Sombras all night. Do what? But it's a Spanish cocktail. It's like brandy and aniseed mixed. Blows your head off. Cool. Hey, how much money did he spend? Well, we had two of them each, and two bottles of wine, plus food. I don't know, it must have come to nearly 100 quid. We had a great night. <laughs> what can I get you? I can't think what Rita's going to say when she gets back. Well, you'll soon find out. 
Well, we've got to dispose of the body first. I mean, did, did they cremate dogs or bury them? Oh, let's leave that to the vet, shall we? Well, I, I thought Rita might like to attend. You know, it might help with the grieving process. I doubt it somehow. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm getting fed up with that question. Sounds like you're feeling better. <laughs> Shouldn't you be in Oxford for that visit? Oh, so you remember something? No, that was yesterday. Saturday today. So how was it? I didn't go. I was in here with you. You missed it because of me. Uh, I'm not that bothered about going. It's me mum and school who want it. I'd just as soon go somewhere else. So that was why you were here when I came round? Yeah. Saying some quite nice things, if I remember. Was I? Uh, I was just babbling on, really, you know, saying out so you might hear a voice you might recognise. I didn't hear most of it. Just as well, eh? Hey. What are you doing on a Saturday? It's not like you. Not much going on, that's all. Never stopped you before. Where are all your mates? I don't know. Doing stuff. You've not been out in the last couple of days, come to think of it. It's not that young lass in hospital, is it? You did crash that car, didn't you? <sighs> you dummy. You slack, stupid dummy! There you go, Norris. Thank you. Mm. Buenos dias. What? Oh, oh, yeah, um, como estas? <laughs> well, I've got a thumping head, but apart from that. Oh, what would you say, air of the dog? Uh, two large brandies. <laughs> no, in Spanish. <laughs> I have no idea. I'll have a tomato juice, so I'm working today. Oh. So, how are you feeling? Oh, a bit like you, only worse. <laughs> so, you wouldn't want to do it again, then? I never said that, did I? <laughs> and it's just my luck, isn't it? I mean, the first time Rita shows any interest in a dog and it goes and dies on me. Assuming it was accidental. Oh, you cannot suggest it. Oh, Emily, how could you? You didn't like that dog one bit. Well, well not at first, no, but, but we were inseparable once you got to know me. I, I'd never do anything like that. No, you're right. I, I'm sorry. That, that dog was, that was special to Rita. Oops. Strange how attached you get to them. Yeah. And yet, one dog looks like any other of its breed to most people. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I had one years ago and I was so fond of it, her, the, and yet. Th that's what we'll do. What? Get her another dog. Oh, how do you know she'll want one? No, 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 no. No, she, she won't know it's a different one. We'll get one that looks just the same and call it Mr. Wu. Oh. And not tell her he's died. Yeah. Well, you can't do that, Norris. Well, why not? Well, it'd be deceiving her. Yes, but think of the alternative. Can you see the look on Rita's face when we tell her? When you tell her, oh. it had nothing to do with me. No, no, you were looking after him as well. But it, it's not the blame I'm concerned about so much as that, well, it's protecting her from all that suffering. Well, there is that. I mean, well, I could knock five years off her life. I mean, the shock. Especially a woman of her age. Now, 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 why put her through all that when we don't have to? It'd have to be identical. Oh, it, it will, Emily. It will. Why didn't you tell me? You've made it ten times worse for yourself. Lying to the police, you realise that, don't you? What else don't I know? That's it, really. I took her for a ride in Barlow's car and, and crashed it. And left her? I panicked. <sighs> How did you get into the car? I had some keys cut when you were in the garage. <sighs> no wonder they want your fingerprints. Winding him up at school. Access to his car. Who else knows? Candy Stone. Have they talked to her? She hasn't said out, but now she's threatening to turn me in. They'll find your prints all over that motor. They'd have found them anyway. I worked at the carriage, remember? That's right. You could explain it like that, I suppose. So what do you think I should do? 
I'll tell you what I ought to do. I ought to turn you in, you dozy daft pillock. And to think I stood up for you that time you come round here shouting the odds. But like you said, if they can't prove it. I said no such thing. They'll have more than fingerprints to go on once they get started. So what are you going to do? Can I get you out? Magazines, books? Mm, I don't feel up to reading yet. You've got a radio? I've got a player. I could bring some CDs in if you like. Are you still into Travis? Well, it beats Burt Bacharach. What? All these tapes in alphabetical order. What are you on about? From Burt Bacharach to Wagner. No, Wagner. Where? In the car. In Barlow's car? Who are you with? Sarah. Who are you with? You told your mum you had a row with Candice. No, it wasn't Candice. I remember now. It was... It was with aid. Yes, gambling, eh? Yeah, all, all the information's in the pamphlet if you'd like to read it. Just remember that we don't want to leave them all to read anywhere. Yeah, yeah, Some of us have got lives, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, first, let the lady by. Yeah, I don't even know what all the fuss is about. Just because you geriatrics don't like a bit of fun. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what the fuss is about. Save it for someone who did this stuff, eh? I'm going home. Yeah, should we be going all? I'm sure you've done your bit for one day, haven't you? I can't do that. He'll think he's won. All right, well, uh, see you later then. Shall I take Ben? Yeah, there you are. Uh, Roy? What about new tactics for next week? Yeah, yes, we shall we have to think. Yeah, well, if you want to use my computer, all you've got to do is ask. It's very kind. Candice was there. We just drove off and left her and laughed. So she did know. And then he went through this speed camera thing and I asked him to slow down. All goes blank after that. Then you crashed. He ran off. He wouldn't do that. He's my boyfriend. So why is he not here if he cares about you? He left you for dead. They had to cut you free. First few days you were there, they thought you were going to die. Does Aid know all this? Yeah. And he's still denying it. You've got to say something, Sarah. I can't get him into trouble. But he nearly killed you. Has Candice said anything? She's keeping quiet as well. When are the police coming back to see you? I don't know soon, I suppose. We know the truth now. All you've got to do is tell them. So do you think Aidan Critchley will be back in school this morning, then? Oh, I think that's the last place to show his face right now. Well, there's still no proof it was him that was driving. No, but you must know he doesn't have many friends at the moment. I mean, they all know by now what happened to Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the neck for it. What would you do if he did come in? Oh, I have no idea. I could refuse to teach him, I suppose, but it's not my style. <laughs> You'd always set him the old essay, what I did in the holidays. And then show it to the police, mm. yeah. Did you say they were going to be in this morning? Yes, yes, they'll be interviewing Aidan's friends. I'll see what they know about his joyriding and his vendetta against me. Can't see Year 11 doing much work with all that going on. So, all in all, a good day in prospect. I can't wait. <laughs> So, you seeing Sarah this morning? Uh, I thought I'd go this afternoon. I mean, now she's out of intensive care, I don't feel I have to be there every minute of the day. Well, it's nice to be getting back to normal at last. If only. Well, it must think she's OK, otherwise you wouldn't be going to work. It wasn't Sarah I was thinking of. If you think I've forgotten what happened before the accident, you're very much mistaken. If you mean the holiday... Is there something else? Well, I, I can't be telling it everything I do in my work. This wasn't just work. It involved me. You told me it was their villa, that we only had the flights to find. Yes. Yes. And I apologised. How many more lies? There are no more lies. And there won't be any. There better not be. You be in school. You know you're more important than school. How are you feeling? A bit more with it than yesterday, but still pretty lousy. Right, these. I suppose you want to know what I've decided. You haven't told anyone, have you? I promised, didn't I? You can't keep it to yourself forever, though. I don't know what to do. I 
got a card from Aid this morning, hoping I was getting better. He was supposed to do last week. He's got a nerve. I don't see why. It shows he's thinking of me. Not serious. Why else would he send it? Because he's feeling guilty. That's why. And what's wrong with that? Shows he cares. You said last night he doesn't care and that I should just turn him in. It's not as easy as that now, though, is it? What are you doing here? Same as you. We well, can't come to school. Why not? Have you forgotten what I said yesterday? How could I? So what are you doing here, then? I might ask you the same question. You what? Well, you said you'd grasp if I didn't turn myself in. So you're rushing off to do it. Yeah, well, I will. Go on, then. You're not the sort. Nor is Sarah. Not in a million years. What page are we on? All right, settle down, everybody. Morning, sir. Have a nice holiday. If he cared, he'd have come in here to see you. Have people like you and my mum slagging him off? I don't believe this. The guy nearly kills you and you're going to let him off. It was an accident. Accidents are when it's no one's fault. He was driving like a maniac. Bethany nearly lost her mum because of him. That didn't happen, though, did it? But if it had, do you think he'd have cared if he'd left her an orphan? What about the card? Oh, that card? Have you read it? A little birdie tells me you're not feeling too chirpy. Hope you're soon back in the swing. Like, that's really caring, isn't it? Doesn't say love from. He doesn't say sorry. I'm amazed he even bothered to sign it. Have you seen the naff picture on the front? Look, if it was me driving that car, I would have stayed with you. I would have called the police. I would have been here day and night. I'd be absolutely good. Aidan Critchley swung him round Weatherfield saying he's done nothing wrong. All he cares about is getting away with it. What if I get in trouble as well? Police don't care about you. You're the victim. It's him they want. There's one person who can put him where he belongs. That's you. So you're going to spend all day outside Deb's shop again? We've got to build on what we achieved yesterday, Hayley. You don't think we've made our point? <laughs> we won the initial skirmish. Winning the war is a long way off. And how long are you going to keep this up? Well, as long as it takes. Why, well, you're not thinking of caving in now, are you? Not when we've got him on the back foot? No, but you can't camp outside his shop seven days a week. Well, you have a cafe to run. But you can't go up on her own. stop it. Well, she's got toys to help. But what do you suggest? But I don't know right this minute. We need to sit down and thrash out some ideas. In the meantime, we must keep the momentum up. <laughs> Curly, <laughs> you'll be helping me today, won't you? Oh, uh, what's that then, Roy? Outside Dev's shop. Well, I can't, mate. Not today. I've got Ben to look after. I didn't stop you yesterday. Yeah, well, I got into terrible trouble over that. Emma doesn't like him out in this weather. And anyway, I've got loads of council work to get on with. Emily, <laughs> you'll join my protest today, I hope. Oh, I'd love to, Roy, but I'm working at the cabin. I can't leave Norris on his own. Uh, I've just come in for two Eccles cakes, please. This is the real world, Roy. My world is also the real world, Hayley. And if everybody else is busy, I'll just have to keep the torch alight on my own. Uh, Keith, uh, Richard Hillman here. Hi. Um, we're due to have a meeting about my business plan this afternoon, and uh, unfortunately th there's been a bit of a family crisis over the last week or so. Uh, my stepdaughter uh, nearly died in a, in a car crash. Uh, thanks, yeah, it, it was quite hairy, yeah. Uh, obviously, I, I, I've been at the hospital around the clock for the last few days, and uh, I really haven't had time to prepare any figures, and uh, I wondered if we might just put it back a week or two. Yeah, yeah, I... I, I realise we did fix it up uh, over a month ago. It, it, it's just, you know, I don't want to waste your time. Well, I, I could give you a general idea, yeah. It's, it's just that... No, no, fine, 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 if you're happy with that, yeah. OK, yeah, see you later. Problem? Police rang me at work. Sarah's remembered what happened. Really? She's about to make a statement. Uh, they want me to be there. Came back from the coat. Well, what, would you like me to come along, then? Haven't you got more important things to be getting on with? Like saving the business? Girl, I, I, I know you're not happy with the Melton's holiday, but that investment could bury our problems once and for all. 
Got nothing to worry about then, have we? You see, the good thing about working here in a crisis is we have access to all the latest dog magazines. I'm still not sure this is a good idea. Well, you agreed with me yesterday. No, I merely said that if you found a replacement, it would have to be identical. Why I should fall in with this deceit when you're the guilty party... Oh, uh, I... and, and you think Rita will just let you off, do you? It wasn't me that fed him three boxes of assorted plain chocolate. Well, may, maybe not, no. But, but, but she will think you're remiss in not monitoring his feeds. Don't be absurd. It doesn't matter which way you look at it, Emily. You're tarred with the same brush. You're implicated whether you like it or not. Well, they're no use into dogs, Norris. You're thinking of getting one? Do you want something? Small boat like you could do with a pit bull these dark nights. Can I help you or not? I'm only trying to help. Yes, we'll try not to. I'll just have some chewy, then. Mm. You're only sick because my old fellow's a dog breeder. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I'll keep me gob shut in future. Uh, See ya. Uh, no, Kirk, Kirk, d does your dad know anything about shih tzus? So I got in the car with Aid. We drove to this um, bit of road where there were speed cameras. And he started going really fast so we'd be photographed. This was to get Mr Barlow into trouble? That was the whole point. And to have a laugh. He didn't force you into the car at all, did he? No. Not that I wanted to. That's what's so stupid. So why did you? I was scared. What of? I thought that if I didn't, he'd go off with Candice instead. Then what happened? I thought after the speed cameras that he'd slow down, but he didn't. I asked him to, but he just kept driving faster. <laughs> And then I remember waking up in hospital. What time did all of this happen? We got in the car about half six and we'd driving for about half an hour. <laughs> I'm really sorry. No, it's all right, love. It's OK. I should have done it. No one's blaming you, Sarah. Will he get into trouble? We need to go and talk to him now and see what he says. I've really dumped him in it, haven't I? Not half as much as he's dumped you in it. You've done the right thing telling us, Sarah. You just rest now and concentrate on getting better. We'll deal with this. <laughs> sir, if you can get on with that quietly, please. Do we have to, sir? I want no more back chat from you today. Oh, but Shakespeare, sir, is rubbish. <laughs> I mean, why can't he speak normal like the rest of us? Oh, so you think he should speak like you, do you, Critchley? Might help. Well, he'd have a problem there, wouldn't he? Apart from the language difference, he was trying to get at the truth. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think truth and honesty are important commodities in your book. You might get a few laughs in the classroom with your smart remarks, but I'm not sure certain of our absent colleagues will be quite so amused. And here ends the lesson, Meditations of a Trolley Pusher, chapter 6, verse 3. Sorry to interrupt, Mr Barlow. Could I take Aidan Critchley from you, please? Be my guest. Aidan. Bring your stuff with you. I'll come back with this. Detective Sergeant Mills, Weatherfield Police Station. This is PC King. We'd like you to come down to the station to answer a few questions. What about? We think you know what about. Come on, Aidan, let's go. She was in floods of tears afterwards, though. Oh, with the relief at getting it all out. She's still worried about dropping him in it. Oh, oh no, poor little knight. Oh, what happened there? Emma went back to the station. Ah, oh, any news? About Critchley. The police arrested him two hours ago. Oh. At school? Yep, they came into my classroom, took him out to the corridor and then bundled him up. Oh. Oh. So there is a god? Yes, and I'm happy it's good news for change. 
Well, I think this makes up for everything. Yeah, I take it Sarah finally remembered. This morning. Well, this calls for a celebration, I think. Uh, same again all round, please, Shelley, and a tomato juice for me. It must have caused quite a stir when they arrived. Yeah, it's a big thing, arresting a child in school like that. Well, they're not going to let him go in a hurry, huh? Emma says Sarah's statement will put him in a juvenile court, whether he's guilty or not. Brilliant. Oh, could I give you one of these? It's about an amusement arcade. The owner of this shop wants to open. Okay. Good afternoon, madam. I'm protesting about the amusement arcade. Mr. Hallahan wants to open on Victoria Street. No, but the whole point is for you to boycott the shop. Well, good afternoon, Eileen. Hello, Roy. Not going so well as yesterday. No, well, look, I'm in a bit of a rush myself today. Hey, hey. You're not going in there, are you? I've left the cab office empty and I've got no time to go anywhere else. You were handing out leaflets yesterday. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm sorry, I just, I can't stop. Good afternoon, Eileen. Listen. The sound of a ringing Tilroy, beautiful thing, wouldn't you agree? I never expected an easy ride. Where are your friends today? I'll get there in the end, don't you worry. I'm sure you will, Roy. I'm sure you will. Right, that's a steak pie, and I'm still waiting on three specials and a soup. I haven't got six pairs of hands, you know. Yeah, and I haven't got any more excuses to give them. Oh, damn Roy and his protests. He's worried about the effect that arcade lab on his business. Well, he won't have one if he don't get back here quick. Oh, hi, Chris. I'm Richard Hillman. I uh, wondered if you'd had a chance to put any feelers out on the bail hostel yet. Oh, the, uh, the clock's ticking on this one. <laughs> Right, well, 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 why don't we meet up this afternoon? You can bring me up to speed. Uh, Rob's return, 2.15. Right, see you then. Oh, well, you look frosted, Vera. Roll on retirement, that's all I can say. Have my investments come up trumps yet? They're maturing at a steady look. Hmm, I know the feeling. Oh, you're back then? I've just come to replenish my flask. Never mind your flaming flask. Yeah, we've rushed to my feet here, Roy. Well, you're not going out again, are you? Oh, so you're falling by the wayside too, Vera. Well, I mean, enough's enough. And you're quite happy for Jack to face the temptation of yet another gambling den in the street? Oh, I haven't thought about that. At least the bookies is closed most evenings. This place will be open till 11, 12 at night. Hey, you've got a point there. So you're quite happy for me to go back out again? Yes, of course I am. Get off. Give me, give me these. I can hand these out to customers when they come in. Excellent idea. Yeah, I knock off at three, don't forget. They'll be on their own then. Look, don't you worry about me. No, I mean it. I've got college work to do. Look, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> I, I do think enlisting Kirk's help is ill-advised. Well, I'm well aware of his pedigree. As they say. But if I can't find one and his dad can't... But I wouldn't trust Kirk Sutherland further than I could throw him. All this mutt has got to do is look right. Now, how can he cheat us on that? And if we can't spot the difference, I bet Rita won't. But I just think that this entire venture is folly. Well, look, anyway, I've got six replacement Mr Woos to look at this afternoon. We probably won't even need Kirk. I'll see you later. It was brilliant. You should have seen his face. I have never seen him that scared in my entire life. He was absolutely wrecking it. <laughs> Oh. Not you again, sir. Ah, uh, Miss Parker's off sick, I'm afraid. Yes. But she's given me some work to set you. Oh. Uh, you know you like it, really. She says you're very fond of maths. Not. I've told her before, Candy, it's grammatically correct complaints only. Will the police be coming back into school again, sir? I very much doubt it. Well, it's just that people have been saying that they might want to interview a couple of aides' mates. I should think they've got all the information they need now. Can we use calculators for this? What do you normally do? Well, we... <laughs> Sounds like a no to me. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Afternoon, sir. Well, what do you think you're doing? What's it look like? Why haven't we got Parker? Now, hang on a minute, Critchley. You can't just swan back in here after what happened this morning. That's exactly what I can do. Well, didn't the police charge you? Yeah, but I'm under 17. Can't keep me in jail or out, so they have to let me go. And you can come back into school? As long as I meet my bail conditions, I can do whatever I like. I brought you a mug of tea, Roy. You look frozen. My flask is adequate, thank you. Well, I'll leave it over here in case you change your mind. Oh, what are you reading? Bylaws of Weatherfield. Oh, don't tell me, Roy. You're trying to find a little loophole to trip me up. Hmm? 
they do aim to protect the moral good of the community, most of them. Oh, so they'll have something about vagrants hanging about on street corners, will they? Well, they'll certainly have something to say about the right to free speech. Oh, shut up, Roy. Your protest fizzled out, and why don't you go back to your cafe and warm yourself up? I'll stay here as long as I have to, thank you very much. Suit yourself. Listen, you haven't been getting any drinks, have you? Well, he looks so cold. Mm. Mm, certainly thought you did the right thing. Don't want him dying of pneumonia while he's out here. In fact, have some of those, Roy. Feed yourself up. Last thing I want on my doorstep is a martyr. Great. Thanks, my love. You deserve a medal, Richard. Oh, oh. Well, all them hours you've put in at the hospital lately. Oh, it's the least I could do. Uh, uh, uh. Things like that are very important. Tell you what's important, Sarah's getting better. Oh, yeah. And it's good to see you looking so well in spite of it all. Ah, uh, well, I've not had any more lapses lately. Well, not since that business at the salon. What was that? Oh, yeah, you were away, weren't you? Oh, well, I just left the tap on all weekend, and then I messed up half my appointments. No. Mm. Archie's had me on broccoli ever since then. Apparently, it's good for the memory. It seems to be working. I'll have to remember that. Yeah. Keep eating your broccoli, lest you forget. <laughs> oh, Chris, hi, what are you doing here? I've come to see this young man. How do you know each other? Well, I might ask you the same thing. Uh, Chris and I were on the council together. Of course. Oh, Audrey's girl's mother. Oh, I didn't know you were related. Mm -hmm. Small world. We've just got a little bit of business to do, Audrey. Right, right, I shall leave you to it. Lovely, Chris, see you. Uh, Bye, Richard. Bye, Audrey. Now then, let's sort you out and drink. We'll get down to it. Right, back the minute break's over, please, and no excuses. Just like old times, sir. You won't be here for much longer. I'd enjoy it while it lasts. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty confident. Only I had a chat with my brief this morning, and he seems to think different. I think it's called whistling in the dark. There's no proof I was driving. Sarah has told the police. Her word against mine. And your fingerprints will be all over it. Well, seeing as I worked on it in the garage, there would be, wouldn't there? There'll be other forensic evidence. Nothing to prove I was driving. He said there's no way they can pin it on me for sure. And he's been in the business 35 years. Thought you'd got rid of me. Think again. So... What news? Not the kind you wanted, I'm afraid. How do you mean? Spoke to my contacts in the planning department. It's been passed on to the government. What have they got to do with it? <laughs> the problem with bail hostels and asylum centres, Richard, is no one wants them in their backyard. If everybody got their way, there wouldn't be any. So the Home Office has to step in and lay down the law. What's all that? That's what's happening here? I'm afraid so. Well, if this goes on a lot like you say, well, that means that no one in planning can ever influence a thing like this. Well, it's about the measure of it, yeah. Well, you must have known that when I invited you to Spain. Well, thanks, Chris. I only stand to lose about 200 grand because of this. I could go bankrupt. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm seeing my bank manager in an hour's time. Is that what I'm going to tell him? Sorry. Sure there's nothing you can do? Yeah, but it's never cut and dry. Sometimes you can pull a few strings. What can you on this? And then again, not every application goes through. Stop being about the bush. Is this happening or is it not? There's no decision yet. But it's not looking good. Right, pens down now, please. Nothing like a hard afternoon's work with good old Mr Barlow. I'd leave it there if I were you, Aidan. You want to learn to take a compliment, sir? You know, I spend most of my time knocking you, but I have a good dream respect for you, really. I don't want to hear this, OK? Well, think about it. You don't like me or not, but that doesn't stop you trying to help me. That's cost you a child of the 60s, isn't it? It was your generation that made laws more lenient than that. That's helped me a lot, come to think of it. Oh, knock it off, will you, Aid? I mean, take this morning, for example. There could have been an outrageous miscarriage of justice there. But thanks to Liberals like you these past 40 years, changing the system to what they believe in, I walk free. Doesn't that give you a sense of achievement, sir? Don't push your luck, Aidan. And as for you getting me that work experience, hands-on experience, you might say, do I owe you one or what? 
I'm sitting pretty, nobody can touch me. And it's all down to good old Mr Barlow. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you all right? I'm going to get you for this. You all saw that, didn't you? Yes. No, we didn't. Sarah nearly died because of him, so we didn't see out, did we? No. no. What do you mean? Must have walked into a door, Aiden, because Mr. Barlow didn't do anything. But I did. Can one of you look after my class, please? And could you see that Aiden Critchley gets some medical attention? Come in. Ken, whatever's the matter? already without all those tubes sticking out yeah yeah I feel better now good by the way we thought you might like to see someone oh Bethany come here hey, hey. <laughs> yes oh and don't hug her too tightly because you know she's still not poorly oh you've been a good girl your grandma good girl. Huh. oh good well when I get out of here I am gonna buy you the coolest present I've missed you so much. We're going to spend so much time together, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful now. Come on. Go and sit with me. Let's give your mummy a rest, shall we? How are you feeling? Well, a bit tired from all the talking, you know. Yeah, well, it was worth it. Because the good news is, they've arrested him. And I'll tell you this, if I'd have known what he was up um, to... Why don't you take Beth into the sweetie machine, eh? Oh, OK. All right. Would you like a chocolate bar? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go get nice chocolate bar. You don't have to feel sorry for him, you know. Yeah, I know. You're right. Yeah. I'm just thinking about getting in that car. I didn't even think about Bethany. All the times that I've shouted at her and wished that I never even had her. I'm a terrible mum. No, you're not. Well, it's all going to change because I'm never going to take her for granted again. You know, that's exactly what I've been telling myself about you. And who bets this time next week we're shouting at each other? I can't wait. Here, hang on a minute. I'll, I'll wipe that table down for oh, you Oh, no, first. no, it's all right. Look, you don't catch up over your books. You're studying in here. Well, I wouldn't have to if it weren't Maria's day off. It's a bit hard to concentrate when she's playing Atomic Kitten full pal. Oh. Now, look, will you leave the lass alone? And while you're at it, have a look at one of them while you're having your tea. What is it? Well, it's against this arcade. You know, they're trying to set up next door. Hey, Richard, can I give you one? Uh, not just now, Vera. I'm off to a meeting. Oh, you know what he's like. He's like some off Wall Street, isn't he? Rushing round, sorting everybody's finances out. Is that where you're going now? Yeah, you, you could say that. <laughs> now, look, have you read that? Yes, I am, Vera. And if you think I'm going to boycott Dev's shop, you've got another thing coming. What's an arcade? Just somewhere you go when you've half hour to kill. Yes, exactly. You know what? Hit me was the worst thing you ever did. You're going to regret it. I already do, believe me. See, I don't know whether to believe you or not, because not so long ago you were telling me, what was it, the ability to be reasonable is the backbone of a civilised society. Call this reasonable, do you? I call it dead reasonable, yeah? Respect. I really don't see why this couldn't have waited, Keith. This deadline's not till the end of the year. So the trouble is, Richard, you don't seem to be making much effort to meet that deadline. Of course I am. 
Look, I've managed to do this update for you. It's, it's a bit rushed in the light of everything that's happened. But, yeah, so uh, I'm more interested in facts than predictions. I take it you're aware that your overdraft has exceeded its limits by over £1,000, and you've missed your last loan repayment. No, no, no I, I wasn't. Uh, as you can imagine, I've, I've been a, a bit preoccupied of late. I see, yes. Oh, and of course, you've, uh, you've been away. Spain, I believe. Let's see, £750 paid to Sunliners. £800 to the airline, various uh, restaurant bills, it, um, it all adds up to quite a tidy sum. So, you can understand my confusion. I asked you to tighten your belt, and the next thing I know, you're splashing out on yet another fancy holiday. It wasn't really a holiday. Yeah, for a man on death row, you seem to be taking things very much in your stride. Now, unless I see clear signs of a significant reduction in your outgoings, you can forget about the end of the year. You'll be looking at a much earlier deadline than that. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, love. And the penny stage. Thank you. Thank you. There you were. I was wondering where you were. Hey, yes, well, I was just buying some onions because I wasn't sure what time you're going to be back, so I thought I'd make a casserole and put it on a low light. Oh, ma'am, that's nice, but it's all right because Todd was arriving as I was leaving and David's going in after school, so Sarah will be fine. Is she still doing all right, then? Just says she's getting better and better. I'm so pleased. That's brilliant. Um, have you seen Richard? Yeah, I saw him earlier in the Rovers. He was with that councillor, uh, Chris Melton. Was he now? I'll tell you what. If Roy's still out there next week, we could hang a sign around his neck. Penny for the guy. See how much we make. Oh, don't be awful. He's not the only one against this arcade, you know. Uh, that's £5.10, please, love. Mm -hmm. So where all his supporters come? That's How right. comes this business as usual? Fine. He's a lone voice. And the sooner he realises that, the better. Hello, love. You're back early. Is everything all right? I need to talk to you. Why? What's happened? In private. Yeah, sure. Take as much time as you need. Hi. Oh, well, what's all this? Breaking your own picket lines now? No. I just popped out for some tea bags for work, which I'm getting from Fresh Goals before you ask. Um, no, I, I mean, I thought I'd call in on my way just to see, um, well, if you'd had time to think about things. Oh. So strain's getting to you, is it? Well, it can't be easy, Hayley, you coming home after a hard day's work, having to cover for Roy as well. It's not like that well, at no, all. Well, no, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Hayley, but no, I'm not about to lose out on a highly lucrative business venture just to put a smile back on your face. Oh, and Hayley, Hayley, you can tell that Roy that if he continues to harass my customers, I'll have him prosecuted. No, nothing's happened to Blanche or Tracy. Well, what is it then? I've just hit Aidan Critchley. What? And I mean, really hit him hard. His nose was bleeding. It was awful. But what happened? Yeah, I thought he'd been arrested. Yeah, well, they released him on bail. He came back to school bragging that he'd get off because his fingerprints were put down to having worked in the garage. He actually thanked me for providing him with a get-out clause. Cheeky little... But he just wouldn't let it drop. He went on and on and on, and then suddenly I hit him. But I didn't realize I'd done it till I saw him lying there on the floor. I just completely lost it, did I? Well, who can blame you? The little creep's had it coming for months. It's not your fault he's pushed you to the limit. How can you say that? Of course it's my fault. I'm his teacher. I should be beyond all that. Oh, Ken, you're only human. I mean, you've done well not to snap before now, given all the things he's done. I've gone against every belief I've ever held. What I've done is unforgivable. What you've done is perfectly understandable, given the circumstances, and I'm sure the head will see it like that as well. Have you told her? Yes. And? Oh, she said more or less the same as you. Well, there you are, then. I mean, it's not as if they're going to sack you or anything. Well, they won't have to. I've already resigned. <sighs> Anyway, his nose, it was this big. It was like a football. It's true. Hiya. What are you doing here? 
come to see Sarah. Didn't know you cared? Well, of course I do. That why you were us to tell cops what happened? I heard said that I'd get in trouble if I told. And that they'd do me for jaw riding with him and all. See? More interested in saving her own skin than yours. You coming in then, or what? I can't blame her for being scared. I was. You could have come sooner, though. I did, but they wouldn't let me in. And later, I thought you probably wouldn't want to talk to me anyway. I mean, if I hadn't been trying to get off with aid, I would have been winding up about being a wimp. You'd have probably never got in that flipping car. I've been a rotten mate, Sarah. Hey. What? <laughs> Thanks for this. <laughs> anyway, at least they didn't get off scot-free. You will never guess what happened at school today. Ken Bal only whacked him one in class. See, I told you. What, so it's true then? Yeah. He hit him because of me. Well, sort of, yeah. I mean, Ava just stood there bragging about how he was going to be let off for it. Mr Bal soon wiped that smirk off his face. What's up? You're not still sorry for him, are you? No. What about Mr Barlow? Caused enough trouble as it is. He might get the sack or something. Oh, he's not going to get the sack. He'll probably get promoted. Even Miss Johnson can't stand it anymore. So, uh, you've not put anything in writing yet, then? No, not yet. Well, I reckon Miss Johnson's right. You shouldn't rush into anything. You're too upset to think clearly. I'm thinking perfectly clearly. No, you're not. Why should you sacrifice your career for a waster like him? I mean, you love teaching, and you're good at it. Good teachers don't hit their pupils. Oh, no. It's not on his soapbox again, is he? Hey, it's a bit early for that, it did. Ken's just hit that Critchley boy. You what? After all you were saying the other day, what happened to it being immoral to use violence on a child? Your principles didn't last long, did they? I'm going for a walk. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm pleased you took my advice. It's just a pity you didn't do it months ago. Mother! What? So, it was aid then, hmm? Just as we thought. Yeah, well, shame you didn't think a bit sooner, eh? Sorry. Well, how long's this joyriding been going on and what else have these two been getting up to? I don't know. No. No. Just as I thought. Oh, come on, Martin. <laughs> you didn't know what was going on either. Yeah, well, I've not been living there, have I? <laughs> Since you've been there, they've been bunking off school and all sorts. And now this. <laughs> you know, you might have some money. But when it comes to looking after kids, you've got a lot to learn. You should have kept a closer eye on her. Nice one, Ken. Shame you beat me to it. There he is, the man himself. Oh, do you know you've made my day? You have, really. There's a cute about you pint in here, I tell you. Yeah, well, what are you having, Ken? Uh, no. no, I'm fine, thanks, Richard. What? And where's the clothes sign up? Because I've had enough. I've spent all afternoon having to sprint to and fro between the post office and the counter whilst fobbing off customers' questions about... Where is that dear little dog? Oh, my nerves are in shreds. Yes, well, so am I. I must have travelled 30 miles today. It's cost me a fortune in bus fares. I I'm going to have to add travelling expenses to the overall cost. But did you find anything? <sighs> no. No, they all had patches. Oh, and as for that one, they tried to fob me off within heckles. Well, <laughs> that was obviously of dubious ancestry. You wouldn't think it would be so mm. difficult. I mean, they all look the same from a distance. Yeah, well, maybe, but, I mean, we can't keep Rita ten feet from it for the rest of her life, can we? <laughs> oh, 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 there was one, you know, that was absolutely perfect. <laughs> but why didn't you get it? It was a Mrs Wu. Oh, I wondered where you were. I dropped Bethany at the crash and David at the hospital. Thought we could do with some time on our own. Good idea. Hey, I was just hearing all about You've Ken seen lady. Chris Melton again, haven't you? What? My mum told me. Oh, I see. I mean, she just happened to mention it. 
didn't know you wanted to keep it quiet. The only reason I didn't say anything, Gail, is because I know you don't approve. Too right I don't. It's common business practice. It's how these things work. And did it work? Did the holiday bribery pay itself? No. What are you doing here? I thought you were in the pub, celebrating. Yeah. Well, I don't happen to think there's much to celebrate. Well, I don't agree. Someone had to show that lad. He can't get away with things. Yeah, well, that's up to the police and the courts, not me. Ah, right. And a fine job they've made of that. Hmm? No sooner do they get him, they let him go again. Listen, he got what was coming to him. So stop being so hard on yourself. We're all behind you. You don't understand. OK, maybe if it had been you or Richard, there'd be some excuse. But I'm a teacher, Martin. I've abused my position. I've betrayed the trust of a pupil. The trust of a pupil? No, hang on a minute, Ken. You're making him sound like he's some innocent little kid. He's not. He's a scumbag. He nearly killed our Sarah, and he didn't give a damn about it. So, no, you haven't betrayed anyone's trust. All right, well, what about the rest of the pupils? Do you know what your David said to me when he found out? What? Respect. Well, that's not how I want to earn the respect of my pupils, and it's not the sort of example I want to set to them, either. Oh, come on. He wasn't cheering you because you'd hit someone. He was chuffed because it was Critchley, like we all were in the pub. And anyway, according to Audrey, he's been bragging about how he thinks he's got away with it, so no, all you've been doing is defending Sarah's honour. Yeah, well, you make it sound almost noble. Well, it isn't. I've just hit a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> And it doesn't matter how much provocation there was, there's no excuse for it. <sighs> Besides, I'm not altogether sure I did do it entirely for Sarah. He's made my life hell for months now. Maybe I did it to get back at him for what he's done to me. In which case, I've got even less respect for myself. You're telling me you've spent all money for nothing. It was worth a shot. So I'm how many desperate. more hair brain schemes have you got? I mean, why not fritter away the rest of them? We can lose our home as well. You're right. I've made a mess of everything. Everything I touch seems to... It's all falling apart. The flats. The family. What do you mean, the family? Martin was right. I should have kept a closer eye on Sarah. Martin had no right to... I mean, you saw it, didn't you? I mean, you never quite trusted Aid. But me? Oh, no. Oh, no, I let him... I let him turn me round. I even let him come to the wedding. Why didn't I you listen didn't to you instead of trying... Your fault. Useless father. <laughs> Useless husband. I was so... Stupid to think that I deserved you. <gasps> no wonder you regret marrying me. Richard. I, I don't regret marrying you. I love you. How can you? After I've let you all down. You haven't let us down. You're a good husband. And a good father. I shouldn't have shouted at you. <laughs> You're right, Gail. I've lied to you. Only because you were trying to save my feelings. I know that, really. I shouldn't have shouted. It's the strain of the last week. It's telling on us all. I don't want to lose you, Gail. I don't want to lose you. You won't. I never knew Ken had it in him. You always seem like such a gentle soul to me. Oh, I don't know. Him and Mike Baldwin have come to blows more than once. Really? Oh, yes. Be quite handy with his fists when he's Ralph and Ken. Deirdre, now, come on. You tell that man of yours we all think he's wonderful. Oh, right. I will, oh. when I see him. Take your words got out, then. Afraid so. I never thought that Ken paid any attention to what I said. But no sooner do I suggest giving that Critchley lad a clip round the ear than he does. Oh, surely not. 
can't imagine Ken hitting a pupil. Oh, he did. Mind you, uh, it was more than just a clout round the ear from what I hear. Uh, yes, all right, but remember what he did to our Sarah. I've never understood why they banned the cane myself. I mean, it's ridiculous. These days, you can't even give your own child a tap on the backside without the social services threatening to take them off you. Never did our Deirdre any harm. The old ways were the best. Well, I don't agree. And I'm surprised at Ken. I thought he was against all that. I must say, so am I. Well, you see, that's what comes of going back into such a stressful job so late on in life. He probably thought he could cope, but it all got too much for him. Excuse me, but it had nothing to do with Ken's age. And I think he coped remarkably well, considering what that little devil's put him through this last few months. Here, here. Yes, and just get your facts straight before you start shouting off. Did you know, for instance, that little so-and-so was bragging to Ken that he was going to get off? Oh, well, when you explain it like that, it, it's not surprising that Ken lost his temper. And don't think he's proud of what he's done, because he's not. He's only gone and resigned, hasn't he? It's never. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, it does seem rather unfair that he should lose his job in, in these circumstances. Well, why don't you go and tell Ken that, instead of gossiping about him behind his back? <laughs> Sounds like you got a nasty cold there, Roy. You should get home and wrap up in bed. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Anything I can get for you? Mm -hmm. Tissues? Hot lemon drink, lip salve. Oh, what is it? What's happened? I'm looking for Kenneth Barlow. Well, he, he's not here at the moment. He's gone to... Oh. Kenneth Barlow? Yes? DS Hayton. I'd like you to come down to the police station for questioning. What about? There's a complaint being made against you for assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. Well, that little toe rag. All right, love. Leave it. Well, what is it? What's going on? What a critchly lads. Only made a complaint against Ken. You'd like to come with us, sir? That's ridiculous. It's him that wants locking up, not Ken. Absolutely. And if you'd done your job properly in the first place and kept hold of that Aidan Critchley, none of this would have happened. I'm coming with you. No. I'd rather go on my own. You told the police how you were pushed into it. Well, I didn't go into detail. You should have done. They were concerned with what happened, not why. Maybe if they knew the full story, they wouldn't have been so quick to press charges. Just five minutes with this Aiden. That's all I'd need. I'd give him actual bodily harm. Wouldn't we all? No, the truth of it is you wouldn't. Civilised adults don't. Neither do they do what he did to Sarah Platt. I know, I know, technically he's still a child, but he's old enough to steal a car, and that makes him an adult in my book. Well, unfortunately, not in the eyes of the law. When I see that smug little face in that court, hold me back, or I'll do what his mother should have done years ago. Well, he won't be there, Blanche. Neither will you, for that matter. Nay, hey, of course I will. It's only an initial hearing. I just confirm my name and address and how I'm going to plead. Which is? I have to plead guilty. You can't. Ken. I'm pleading guilty because that's exactly what I am. Sounds to me as if you're giving up before you've even got going. Look, I'm about to be exposed as the man who hit a child. I won't be exposed as a liar as well. I might pop in on Audrey see if she wants a lift to the hospital. Oh, well, tell Sarah I'll be down later. Won't be long now, sweetheart. Mummy will be home for good. Mm, won't be so keen to share a room now, will you? Getting too much of a big girl for that. Well, <laughs> maybe when things are turned around, we can start thinking about that new house. I'm just sorry it won't be sooner rather than later. Richard, I'm not bothered about moving. And I don't want you to feel sorry or ashamed. It's that that stopped you telling me how much of a mess we were in. I know. And no more bribery. I'm sorry, I can't think what else to call it. Gail, I promise to be more upfront in future. It's all I'm asking for. Uh, 
a nip into town, pick up a catalogue, and we can sort something out. Never Sophie's birthday. <laughs> Campaign's already started. Don't say you haven't noticed how she's been with you. Oh, my little angel. Thanks, Kim. So you'll be in the Rovers at dinner. Yeah, if Peter works right through. I was going to ask if you fancied having your dinner with me. Looks like I'll be dining on my own some. Well, they could come and join us if you want. Oh, no, adopted by the married couple. I don't think so. That's why I won't go on holiday on me. <laughs> well, if you change your mind. See ya. See ya. Never thought Norris would stock those kind of magazines. Still, well, the cat's away, eh? Hey. You know, the ones that your brother keeps underneath his mattress. What are you on about? But what else would you be so desperately trying to hide from? Me? Hey. Oh, well, Sarah will be chuffed, won't she? Whatever. And what happened about school? Free period. Yeah, free to study, not run about after girls who've dumped you. What are you hoping for, Todd? She's had a bump on the head, not a personality transplant. Blanche, have you no recollection as to the petition you signed against Dev's plans for the arcade? There's nothing wrong with my memory. Well, then, why abandon principle for the sake of convenience? For the sake of convenience? Oh, this is astonishing. And not from where I'm stood. I suppose you've heard that Ken's in danger of being slung in jail? Well, I heard he'd been arrested, yes. Well, then, if you want to make a protest about something, go and chain yourself to the bars of Weatherfield Comp, never mind a few slot machines, and stop trying to do my daughter out of a job. We have to look beyond the concerns of the individual to the good of the community as a whole. That begins at home. So if you'll excuse me, I'm looking after my own. OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you there. Bye. Is that the solicitor? What's up? He's just spoken to Aidan's solicitor. My punch broke his nose. Oh, Ken. I don't know why I'm surprised. It's not as if I held back. Oh. I can't believe I'm saying this as his teacher. And a damn committed one. And his mentor, don't forget. What about the work experience she gave him and, and all the time she stayed behind? And what do you get in return? More provocation. Yes, but I should be above provocation. If not, I've no right to be in a school in the first place. Oh, I've got you a Cumberland ring from Elliot. Oh. He can't go to court on a slice of toast. I've told that Roy Cropper to get his priorities straight, parading in the street, when there's a real injustice going on under his nose. Well, that's an optimistic way of putting it, Blanche. Well, I'm an optimistic person, and I've reason to be. You're a good man. I can only hope the courts agree. It's for you to convince them. Come on, lovey. Right. Now, those are for posting. That's for the dry cleaners. I'm sorry I can't offer you anything, but um, I've got a job on for Archie. It's the mother of a former lady mayoress. Friend of Alfie's, actually. Well, I wish you'd said, Audrey, I'd have brought a flask. Oh. <laughs> now, listen, I only dropped by because I thought you might want to go to the hospital, you know? Uh, Sarah's starting a physio today. Oh, is she? Oh, bless her. No, it'll have to be later now. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. Well, I'll run you in if you like. Well, no, because that means you've got to double back on yourself. Well, let the shelf worry about that. <laughs> well, if you're sure. Quick, before you talk me out. Of oh, it. good, thank you. So, wait a minute, can I just, can I just give you one, please? It's your lucky day! I've got some ribs going off. I'll put them aside for your lassie. The dog, not Emily. Uh, thanks, but that won't be necessary. Why? What does it eat? Uh, very little at the moment. Thank you. Well, don't say I never do you a good turn. Hey, where do you think you're going? Talking to me? Yes, Norris. A sprightly step does not imbue you with invisibility. Oh, oh it, it, it's Emily. Do you hold your signature so cheaply that my petition meant nothing to you? Look, I'm no fan of Dev, but we're, we're out of tea bags, and Emily's like a bulldog chewing on a nettle if she shouldn't get a morning brew. Look, tell Vera I sent you. She'll give you all the tea bags you can wish for. No, she has to have a special brand. Substance dependent, they call it these days, but at her age, I don't say anything. Norris! One item. It always is. But it is on these single items that our campaign stands or falls. Oh, excuse me. So long, Ken. You give them hell. Close the door, Mother. 
Ken, just wanted to say all the best from Sarah as well as me and Richard. Well, nothing will be decided today. No, but anyway, it shouldn't be you that has to go up in front of court. Thanks, Gail. Fred's filled me in. You know, we should have had a minibus. Give those magistrates so much to bang the rammers about. Yeah, well, uh, it's a thought that counts. I'll see you later, Ken. I can hook you up with a good brief that's got me out of a few scrapes in the past. It's a bit late for that today. Yeah, but it might be a time when you're going to need the heavy artillery, so uh, give us a shout, eh? Thanks, Mike. Good luck. Look, I can manage fine. Get yourself back out there. You misunderstand me, Vera. The protest in its current incarnation has run its course. Oh, yeah? We've got any ice bonds, girls, are best room. Uh, uh, never mind that, Ailey. Do you mean you're giving up? What's happening, Roy? I'm afraid the weight of public apathy is one I can no longer shoulder. You've stopped the boycott? <laughs> well, that's been the privilege of my so-called loyal supporters, but, yes, as campaign organiser, I have to accept responsibility. Well, it's not just about you, you know. What about all these leaflets I've been giving out? No, come on, Vera. You gave people a chance to make their voices heard. Oh, the voices will be heard, all right. When the men folk round here start blowing the wages in on them one-armed bandits, only then it'll be too late. You're right. She's right. I can't just sit by and, and let a social evil take root unhindered. Roy, that's our opinion. If other people don't agree, then that's our problem. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's vegetarians coming here who don't like the idea of Elliot's butchers being next door. Look, forgive me, Hayley, but of a Tuesday evening at the community centre, people do not stand up and say, my name is such and such, I'm addicted to brisket. There's no need for that, Roy. I know you're upset. I'm disappointed, Hayley. OK. But you can't control everything that happens outside these four walls. We've learnt that much from experience. give up without a fight. It took two of them to arrest him. Big, burly fellas. Oh, I heard it was all very low-key. Who saw it with their own eyes? Yeah, well, good old Ken. He should get one of them OBEs for services to the community. Oh, I don't know. I mean, wiping the handles of trolleys when it's been raining, that's what I call community-spirited. What are you saying? That he should have let this lout taunt him? Frustration hands us the gun. It's down to our self-control whether or not we pulled the trigger. Ooh, where did you learn that? Post well, Office Academy? There are several ways of diffusing a tense situation, right? a reasoned argument, for one. Oh, it's tried and tested this. I mean, um, how many teenagers have you brought up? He's never done anything. Hiding behind his sweet counter, pontificating. <gasps> Excuse me, but I had a full and varied career long before I agreed to help Mrs Sullivan. Don't give over. You were born with a toffee hammer in your hand. That must be why your mother turned you out half-baked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johan, I reckon you'd be singing a different tune if it was one of your lads he'd come round and taken a swing at. Well, he'd come round mine any time. I'll hold his coat for him. Well, I can't wait to see Sarah at home. Give her my love, girl. We will. Bethany was relieved to be going to the crash today and not the hospital. I think yesterday upset her. Well, it's hardly surprising, is it, seeing a mum in that state? Did we have to do this? You've got to face people sooner or later. We'll just stay for the walk. Hiya, the usual. Yes, please, Shelley. Oh, no, 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 Kent. These are on me. Oh, thank you. How'd it go? Well, I'm back in court in the new year. By which time Aidan's bruises will have disappeared and Sarah will still be in physio. Where are the police up to with him, have you heard? Well, I'm not holding my breath, but um, he's been charged with reckless driving and goodness knows what else, but it's still not enough to keep him behind bars until the trial. 
And meanwhile, David has to see him every day at school. Hey, uh, listen, uh, when you finish that one, I'd like to buy you one, OK? Thanks, Andy. Well, well, we're not stopping. Well, um, half and steak kidney, please. I'll bring it over. He'll be back in school, won't you, soon? Well, the head's supported him all the way so far, but um, oh, we'll have to see. So is Kev on his way? Because it looks like I will be playing Gooseberry after all. How's things? Well, I can tell how they are with you. I mean, you don't get that rosy complexion from darning socks. And Kev even fixed the shower. <laughs> he has! <laughs> yeah, that's your story and you're sticking to it. I tell you what, I take my hat off to you. Virtually a married couple and there's uh, no shenanigans. Well, I thought marriage was supposed to kill all that mm -hmm. stone dead. Oh, the smell of a man in the morning. But then I can't pass a baker's without buying something. <laughs> Hiya. 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 Ah! The fugitive returns. What's this? Last drink of a condemned man? We're trying to have a quiet drink, if you don't mind. You do that, boss. I thought it was a vicious rumour. Till you went and pleaded guilty. Is that right? Well, it's no secret. Why? Well, why do you think? I'm going home. Ken. Uh, not, not the face, please, not the face. Oh, no. Yeah, Archie, now, can I make you a sandwich or something to keep you going? Oh, no, I'll not fade away. This'll be fine, oh, thanks. Would you believe it? You, I knew I got things to do in town. Uh -oh. <laughs> Too much on our plates, Audrey. That's my excuse. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Um, uh, just, I got a dress I was going to take to the dry cleaners and I could have sworn... Uh, no! I, I definitely left it on the sofa. Yeah, well, maybe you moved it. No, 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 it was here with the letters when I left this morning. <laughs> Where could it have gone? Well, uh, why don't you check upstairs? Oh, God, listen to me. Come on, finish your tea and get off. It'll turn up. <laughs> You've got no time for all this. Hey, I've plenty of time. Oh, uh, Ken? Look, I'm sorry. I appreciate your support, but uh, I've had enough back slapping for one day. Yeah, well, uh, I gathered that from the Rovers. Look, um, I'll come clean. It's uh, our Todd. He's getting ready for his Oxford interview, and he could really do with somebody showing him what's what. I mean, I know he's bright enough. It's just that you hear about these kids who have tutors and uh, coaches. Sorry, I, I don't think I can help. But I don't know what they charge, but I can pay you. It isn't the money. No, it's a principle. It usually is. Yeah, well, um... I don't care about what happens. It doesn't stop you knowing what you know, and the sooner you're back in that school, the better. Look, I'm in no position to advise anyone about their future. I'm sorry. Right. Was that wise, turning down work? What's your point? They may want to put your statue up in Rosamond Street, but it won't necessarily pay your bills. Yeah, well, I've had quite enough advice for one day, thank you. Hey, I taught you everything you know. And that was your first thought, was it? No, my first thought was Barlow's got some fire in his belly. About time, too. It, uh, it wasn't there. I've searched everywhere. Hey, that's not the order you did herself proud this morning. I swear, Archie, I put it on the sofa. I mean, I can see it now, as good as my witness. Look, let's go back now. You put it out. What happened next? Well, we came to yours. Richard came round and he drove me in. And you don't think you took it with you? No. Even though you meant to? Yeah, it was in a rush. So? Who's to say you didn't leave it in Richard's car? Eh? Well, at least ask. Oh. Hey, love. How is Sarah? All right. Yeah, she might be coming home soon. Look, Todd, I am not on about broken hearts anymore, because, frankly, you're old enough to sort yourself out. So? What's your problem? You know what my flaming problem is? If it was her getting all these chances, do you think she'd be spending all her days sat by your bedside? Hey? Do you? It's not all me days. Look, you get one chance at this. If it doesn't work out, fine. But if it doesn't work out because of her... Why are you getting so involved? Because I'm your mother, remember? I come home for a wash and a sani between double shifts that pay for you. Did he ask you to? Did he ask you to? <laughs> being unreasonable. You mean, is he a selfish little toe rag, yeah? I'm just trying to get through to him, but these things just won't keep falling in his lap. 
We'll talk about a short attention span. Yeah, it goes with the short memory. You what? Well, me athletics, you weren't working all hours to help me, were you? No. All oh, right, so he wants something, you work your butt off. I needed sponsorship. What did I get? Nothing, because I'm a useless and unfair mum. I did take to heart what you said this morning about us not having that much influence. Well, we do have some. I'm still proud of you for having a go. I, I take it you were speaking metaphorically. How do you mean? Our four walls. What, for instance, if we were to extend the boundaries of the world we do have influence over? How? Oh. Well, it's always been taken for granted that Deb will buy Sally's old shop, whereas it, it could just as well be us. Think about it. We knock down the dividing wall, we double the size of the cafe, and in the same stroke, we beat Alahan at his own game. I don't know what to say. Once again, you've been an inspiration. Ooh. I think I might have had a brainwave. Oh, yeah. Time one of us did. Won't solve all our problems, but it'll give us a bigger place to live. Go on. We've got a garage we hardly use. We could convert it into a bedroom. It'd be ideal for Sarah. Yeah, but she might want to move out on her own in a year or two. So? Well, it'd be an empty room. A granny flat? <laughs> Don't know how much it'd cost. Maybe a couple of thousand. Oh, well, then. So even that's out of the question? Well, for the time being, yeah. There's the insurance money from the car. Gail. We're managing with the one we've got. I'd rather see it go towards this. I've used it. What? Loan repayment on the conversion. I had to get it from somewhere. So, the money we were relying on? It's been and gone. Hey, Audrey. Ah. Hello. Ah, now, I'm not stopping. i just been to check <coughs> on the salon. Richard, um. When you gave me a lift this morning, did I leave anything in the car? Well, have you lost something? Uh, it's just a dress I was supposed to take to the cleaners. Uh, you saw me put it out this morning, do you remember? Not really. Uh, but I can't find it for the life of me, so I just wondered. Well, uh, hang on. Gail, uh, when did you last see it? Hi, ma'am. Everything all right? Uh, have you seen a missing dress? Sorry? Oh, nothing. Look, it doesn't matter. Well, it's not nothing, ma'am, or else you wouldn't have come knocking. You're getting yourself worked up again. No, no, I was just passing it. Well, it's what it looks like to me. Oh, honestly. Well, I'm going before I'm accused of all sorts. Well, well Audrey, look, I mean, if you find it, give us a ring. <laughs> all right. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. Is she all right? I don't know. So, I uh, suppose the Rovers is out of the question, then. Oh, look, love. I know it's torture, but people are on your side for a reason. Or well, maybe, but it's nothing to do with the reason that I hit Aidan Critchley. Unless they think lack of self-control is something to celebrate. Well, I think it's something to celebrate that people believe in you. And so would a jury if it came to it. Miss Johnson's backed you all the way. Yeah, well, not anymore. I've sent her my letter of resignation. What? Why? I had no choice. She keeps saying that. Of course you've got a choice. You can choose to fight for your job. You were right. I was wrong to go back in the first place. I should have stuck to Fresh Girl's car park. No, Ken. Look. I'll admit, in the beginning, I had my doubts. But when you went through with it, I... Well, I was proud. And I'll tell you something else. There's a part of me that admires you for just not standing there and taking it. You've never been a teacher. No, but I've lived with one. I've seen the frustration you've had to put up with, the humiliation. And you should be grateful that it's over. Just another failure. To cap a lifetime of failures. So all the times I've spent listening to you and supporting you, all that means nothing. I never said that. Everything you've worked for, and you don't even bother fighting for it. It's too late.
If you're talking about what I'll be remembered for, this is it. <laughs>